Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Please give a warm welcome to Nirvana.
ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ Yeah, 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 yeah
Serve the servants, oh no. Serve the servants, oh no. Anyway, sorry everyone, I'm drink. I'm uh, not drinking, I'm breaking in here. I'm breaking in here and uh, hello, hello. 
There's not many here tonight, but that's okay. This is a Friday night live stream. A lot of the people are probably watching these sewer streams, these these shit streams on YouTube, and that's what's going on, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's what people do. They gobble up. That's what people have a taste for these days. Um, drinking Coke Zero. Yes, I, I am drinking Coke Zero. Drinking Coke Zero and nothing is mixed in. There's no alcohol. There's no caffeine. I know Franny would like to come here with a little test kit and see if there's any uh, see if there's any caffeine or alcohol in my drink. He would probably like to test it, but I wouldn't trust him. He could probably put a roofie in it because the guy has a gay crush on me. Obviously, he's almost gay. He watches me like a hawk, as Callie said. She said, Franny really watches you. He watches you like a hawk, Stephen. Pays attention to everything you say. He really does. He tries to figure out everything about me, everything about my life. Uh, he's really obsessed with obsessed with me, that little creepy guy, Franny, uh, from Down Under. Down Under. He's really obsessed with me. What else was I going to show you here? Have you seen my new video? Well, it's it's a re-uploaded video. It's from one of my channels that was taken down. People have re requested that I upload some of these videos to the Sanity Machine, ones that were on El Diablo channel and Crimes of Beauty. And this is a classic. This is a real classic here. A lot of people enjoyed this one. This sweet little video is protected by fair use and free speech. It is not for profit. It is for free. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. It is for entertainment purposes only. It is parody. Okay, YouTube? Parody. friends i hope you find yourselves well i hope you're keeping well i just wanted to talk about some things today i look kind of creepy but i'm driving my van driving my van around right now my creepy van and my shifty eyes looking side to side so i look a little bit suspicious and creepy here i know but i know i have my tiny hat on and my glasses and my big nose, my big nose and my tiny hat, my tiny dirty hat. I've got my piercing right here on my, below my bottom lip there, you see that? My chin, my scruffy facial hair. I, I think I'm taking, I don't know if I should talk about this, but I, I take some hormones to grow that facial hair, that scruff, because I really can't grow a beard. So that's why, you know, it kind of looks so sparse that way, okay? But uh, you, you, you all know me here as a grifter, as a shekels lover, and uh, I'm just driving around, cruising around in my van today, looking creepy, looking out there, and you know, what, keeping an eye on stuff. I'm driving by some loud construction site here, so you'll have to excuse me. You'll have to excuse me. I'm not trying to dilly-dally around here. <laughs> I want to talk about NPCs. I want to talk about the NPCs, okay? Okay? They don't have any soul. I, I'm a parasite, but I don't mind calling the vast majority of humanity soulless. I'm willing to say the vast majority are fucking soulless, man. They're just soulless, okay? Okay, I'm going to park here for a minute and look out in a second. I'm going to take a look out there and uh, stop here for a second, people. This is all about NPCs. Most of humans don't have a soul. They don't, they don't beg for the shekels the way I do. I'm very soulful. I'm a very spiritual being. I have my Tibetan singing bowls, and I do used to do my meditations on video, but then I got hooked onto the another grift, <laughs> the Soul Trap community. 
So I finally hit my niche there with my Soul Trap community and my last timers club memberships and all that stuff. I can make some coin. I can bank some money. But uh, I'm going to call everybody soulless. They're a bunch of soul. They're soulless, but I'm. Uh, some say that I'm the parasite. And, uh, I'm a parasite shekels lover. I love those shekels. And uh, I'm, I'm calling humanity. They're just dead. They're just, they're just fucking mindless and soulless. That's all they are. And it's just obvious. I'm gonna look out here, cruise around in this van. Hold on. I want to show you. I want to show you folks the outside, my friends. I want to show you the outside of my, my beautiful, awesome van here. Okay. Yeah, I've been looking for my van and somebody snapped a picture of my van saying if you see this van anywhere it's a creepy van okay and uh, somebody caught the snapped a picture of my van and it, it made it into the media actually great candy and it has these blood it looks all it looks like blood it's just paint people that's not blood but the hand prints and stuff but uh that is my van okay that's mine. That's my forever con man. I'm going to end this video shortly, people. I'm going to end this video shortly. I don't know how much more I could talk about the, the NPCs, but um, let's cruise around. Oh, I'm going to look around and look out here. <laughs> yeah, look at, that, look at that. Look at that. Look at that guy go by passing me there. Yeah. I'm not creepy at all, though. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really creepy, guys. Guys, I'm not really creepy. I'm, I just sound like this. And I look like this. And look at look at the facial hair again. I call that my beard, my neck beard. But I, it's so sparse. Look at that. It just comes in in little patches, patchy beard here. I got the piercing here, but I'm. I swear, guys, I'm not Namas gay, like that asshole in the sanity machine abstract angel artist he calls me namas gay okay i'm gonna pause it here just for a second actually my video froze but there you go guys i gotta end this video here so thanks for watching and, and really i really appreciate your donations i just want you to donate no matter shit what shit content i produce just donate guys <laughs> just <laughs> just donate okay give me all those shekels give me all those shekels Hold on, everyone. I'm going to share something else with you. I'll share a little highlight with you here. While we're on here, let's check this out. Let's check out this shit stream earlier tonight. I call it a flow a flow of shit stream. That's what it is. Hey, look at the people in the chat room. I remember this creature. He watches a lot of these shit channels. Can you be racist against whites? Question mark. I don't think so. This person wrote. You can believe they're at that level, donating $2. Uh, they donate to this chitty channel, 88 watching. That's my age, 88. 88 people watching this garbage. Look at her face, leaning in. Look, look at the eyes. Just look at the eyes. I mean, can you not tell what these people are? Does somebody need to explain it? I know there's a core group of 30, 40 people, maybe 50 people or so. Maybe uh, upwards of 75, maybe even 100 uh, on my channel that understand what I'm talking uh, about. But some people need this explained. Uh, These types of people would fit in hanging out in front of a CD motel that you rent by the month. Okay? That's where they fit in. With their hoodies on, smoking away. Uh, just their looks. Just their eyeballs popping out of their heads. 
the sand paku crazy eyes everything about them just indicates low iq low iq you shouldn't need it explained should be obvious nobody should have to tell you it's right there cd motel vibes just comes right off of them it reeks in the air from these people They got the crackhead motel vibes, the meth head motel vibes. They're at the no-tell motel. Hating people. I know racist people against whites. I know people that don't like whites. Yeah, you can definitely be racist against white people. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. that, that, that statement that he made was pretty revealing. He said, I know we, it's shocking, right? Uh, it's revealing is what I said. Uh, we used to be the uh, we used to be the N words, meaning someone else is the N words now. Inherent in there, uh, you know, it tells something about uh, what you think. So this Barbie trash squatch, I'm gonna pull my mic closer. This Barbie trash squatch, she didn't show me her panties this time. She's done that before. She's pulled her pants down and pulled up her panties to show me what she was wearing on live stream. Okay, she didn't do that this time. She said that she doesn't want to call me King Stephen, but she's uh, she is so easy to troll. It's not even funny. She takes everything seriously. I could leave a big, I could tag fifty YouTube channels and she read it off. She doesn't get humor. You have to go. Psst, he's trolling you. He's playing a character. He's trying to rile you up. She's too dumb. You have to literally tell her. And it ruins the joke then, of course, if you tell her. But that's the way a lot of YouTubers are. They don't know anything. They don't understand anything. You have to tell them. You have to explain everything to them. Which I sucks. Wish you guys, I wish you guys hope you change sides right now. I've muted for quite a while. Hey, anyway, so does it, does Ken, like he says, can a black guy say to you, Joe, something racial that will offend you, against you? Can he say something that offend me? Yes, he could call me a, a, a million things that would offend me. If he called me the B word in my neighborhood, it's like prison, so that word is not allowed. No, I'd I mean, probably... can he say a racial something to you that would make you mad? Oh, sure. I don't think so. I don't. A black Uncle, dude? What about? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Uncle buddy. Tom. Uh, and no, uh, Uncle Tom. Uh, I don't think, and I'm really too thick for Uncle Tom. I'm trying to think How about of a regular supporter? black motherfucker might trigger. What the is yeah, I'm too thick for Uncle Tom phrasing, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just wonder if there's something they Bar Barbie did the I, I would say no. <laughs> watching you. I would say I would say no. I like her reactions, don't you? She's so classy. She covers her face. She's just amazing. I wonder if she's had a full time job in her life. I really do. I, I really do. I wonder if she's had a full time a full-time job in her whole life. She's got rings on every finger. Oh, man, she's just amazing. She'll pull her pants down to show her panties on camera for me. She'll pull her pants down to show her panties. Look at this. <laughs> Look at these people. You couldn't take them anywhere. If you called them classy, I would just burst out laughing. And I'd also think that you're a moron unless you said it completely in a sarcastic way and you were you did you know how to do sarcasm well, which is making it obvious that you're being sarcastic. Sarcasm isn't meant to try to trick people and be straight faced. It's meant to done well. Sarcasm is obvious that you're being sarcastic. People don't even know how to do that anymore these days. But if you call these people classy and you weren't you were serious about it i i would wonder what the fuck is wrong with you i really would so there you go how's that for honesty i'd wonder what's wrong with you and wonder who you hang out with smoke filled room here looks like a a druggie over here so does this here clue clueless in here <laughs> it's just what a quite a panel it is that people follow and they, from the audience, they get questions like, can you be racist against whites? I don't think so. And they donate money 
They also donate money to kick people off their panel. What a shit show. And this is the level that people are at. The average person is at this level. They love this garbage. They love this garbage. They love this garbage. They love it. Uh, yeah, it, I, I can't think of it happening, and and uh, I, I don't know. It's not something. I don't know. It's not something I see. I've had I've had a pretty good bit of experience with Joe, and I've heard him pretend to be offended by things just to get the conversation rolling. Yeah, I'm funny. not sure anything actually offends him. He but he finds it all interesting as a conversation. Yes. Smith, what yes. in 24 hours. Smith, Tommy, and uh, who else got 24 hours? Britt, uh -oh. see y'all in 24 hours. Keep fucking around. Oh, wow. He's getting upset. He says, keep fucking around. He just gave a whole bunch of people 24-hour timeouts. He's really dropping the hammer on them. <laughs> oh, man. This is funny. Funny. That sounds like Bill? when I went on that show the other night. All of a sudden, the host started like, all right, you're banned. All right, you're banned. I just go, what the hell's going on? He said, don't worry about it. I didn't look at it. All you guys, just give M the machine gun. She'll clean house. Well, that's how it went on. <laughs> yeah, but M shoots indiscriminately. <laughs> <laughs> I went to that Kings. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was, it was just kept saying, hey, he kept banning people. <laughs> that guy was so cool. Uh, let's go to something else. Let's talk about the Dodgers playing the Lakers yesterday. Watch this. Uh, our poll, 24 hours. <laughs> our poll. Why is everyone trying to do the letter tree? Ice Grills, 24 hours. And Slave, Slave by, by Crew, 24 hours. Wow, that bad. Mine, mine wasn't that bad. Well, they're doing uh, the word trees. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. yeah. About the royal what cancer. Of, what kind of fucking kids are they? I don't know. Kids in 24 hour timeout. That's what happened to kids. Listen to this laugh. <laughs> like, you can't make this up. It's like they're cartoon characters. It's like they're not even people. They're on drugs. They laugh like, they just laugh like creatures. It's like a creature's laugh. Is there actually a tw uh, thing you can do twenty four hours? Or yeah, you yeah, you can, you can, you can time someone out for for any any number of, but twenty four hours can, is the longest. Mm -hmm. Or you can hide them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can hide them entirely. That. Which is which is reserved for like people you really don't want to fuck with, or if Barbie has a wrench, <laughs> <laughs> or if you're Cynthia trying to get on to Tommy's. I'm straight. I'm banned from Streamyard and the chat at Tommy's. Uh, Damn. You banned me, Cynthia. <laughs> Been a bad girl. I banned Damn. you. Oh, I meant to unblock you too. You only got banned <laughs> because you Damn. kept coming up and taking space, and I was trying to have a space open. <laughs> And you would come back. Oh, and so you, did. you just you took up the, space, and that's what you yeah. Down. yeah. You, you knock, you knock the half white, half black guy off your channel. Yeah. Who are you? Does anyone yeah. on here? I was trying to save room for Paul. I was wanting Paul to come up, and he was trying to take up the space. So I think I, I did the right decision. I would, I, I think so, and I don't care. And I'm like, they think I'm a lol cow, what whatever the fuck that is. Yeah. But I'm still curious. You knock me Does anyone off know in mainstream yeah. what's going on? I got a friend in Tennessee. He was going to come out here, but he sat there and says he wants to drive because he's afraid to fly with the airplanes crashing. I don't know what he's mm -hmm. talking about. Is there something going on with the airplanes? As far as I know, they're way safer than uh, automobiles. <gasps> there was that um, airline executive that just got shot by yeah, the, the Boeing uh, whistleblower. What's been going on is Boeing is supposed to have maintained their fleet over the past 30 years, but it turns out that what they've been doing is repairing the necessary things and letting other things kind of slide. 
and the whistleblower came out and gave a list of everything that's been right. put on the don't replace until broken. Uh -huh. And we've got pieces falling off of airplanes, like out of the sky, just, just <laughs> dropping off. Yeah. Darko, the door. Yes, they yes, put, yes, they put a, yes. They put a door in where they, were, they put two seats in where there's supposed to be a, a door, but so they put the door on, but they forgot. So when they mentioned Donnie Darko, that's when I came on. I decided to hop on right when right after he said Donnie Darko. <laughs> I was backstage and that's when I entered. Okay. Right on cue. <laughs> Pieces falling off of airplanes like out of the sky, just just <laughs> dropping off. Yeah. Donnie Darko, <laughs> the door. Yes, they yes, put, yes, they put a, yes. They put a door in where there were, <laughs> they put two seats in where there's supposed to be a, a door, but so they put the door on, but they forgot to bolt it in, so it the door came off at low altitude. If it had but gone off at high altitude, they had all been dead. But, but that's not all of it, bro. I mean, there's so many yeah, little things. The that's guy that was the whistleblower, he got he he killed himself. Wow! wow. Did he really? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure yeah. he did. Like, yeah, that's Cynthia. That's like, that's I think you're talking about the guy. Yeah, the, I think you're the, talking about the from Clinton Airport in Arkansas. Yes. Turns out he was, he was selling fire. He was running guns. Yeah, he was running guns. The whistleblower was running guns. Mm -hmm. But he ain't killed him. You guys think him. he killed himself? My goodness. No, no, no. He was, was, the yeah, feds he was, killed him. Yeah, the feds killed him. Oh, okay. They were they were there. They had a shootout. Mm -hmm. How convenient. Let me but welcome even his brother. Even hold on. Let me welcome King Stephen. King Stephen, I'm surprised to see you here since I'm blocked on your channel and your stream yard. Who the hell is King Stephen? <laughs> yeah. I'm not. We're, I'm not calling. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not calling. In the chat room, I noticed. I'm on here. I'm blocked. You oh, it's Pope creepy. Creepy right? Pope. Well. You can stay on panel, Stephen, but I want you to acknowledge that the you king only rules at room. the blessings of the church. Is this the smoke? Me. Oh, what, what the fuck? Oh. Son of a bitch. Oh. What the what? fuck? Oh. No, that's that absolutely expected. I was over here. Oh. 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 Here he goes again. <laughs> Look at this guy, this hillbilly over here with the long beard and the long hair. <laughs> the video game, video game background. <laughs> like a cartoon character. Is that his actual laugh? This guy puts a stupid pedo pope hat on. Look at this creep. Look at this. Fuck, man. And look at her with her head down, covering her face. Look at this. <laughs> I rock that panel. Okay, I rock that panel. Fed killed him. Yeah, the feds killed him. Oh, the feds killed him. This guy, this Chuck. The feds killed him. The feds killed him. Holy shit. What a bunch of geniuses. Is this the low IQers club? Is this the toothpaste eaters club? Is this the toothpaste eaters club? Creepy creatures over here. Creepy creatures over here. Creepy creatures. And I just went on there to disrupt the system. Just like this creep did. Came onto my channel. Here's a little bit of payback for you. Flow state, bitch. Bitch boy. Okay. They were they were there. They had a shootout. Mm -hmm. mm, how convenient. Let me but welcome even his brother. Stephen, hold on. Let me welcome King Stephen. King Stephen, I'm surprised to see you here since I'm blocked on your channel and your stream yard. 
Who the hell is King Steven? <laughs> yeah. I'm not. We're, I'm not calling him. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm blocked not calling him. Chat room. I noticed. I'm <laughs> on here. I'm blocked. You oh, it's Pope Creepy. Creepy right? Pope. Well, you can stay on panel, <laughs> Stephen, but I want you to acknowledge that the you king only rules the at room. the blessings of the church. Is this the Smoky Meat Club? <gasps> Oh, oh what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Son of a bitch. What the fuck? Oh, oh, no, that was absolutely all expected. I was over here. Oh, oh, <laughs> <you got more. laughs> I heard that one. <laughs> well, I've never heard him. I've never heard him pull that one, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It is interesting to no end to me. Motherfuckers are so fascinated that they'll come up here, expose themselves, chop their throat because it's titillating. It's so fucking fascinating to me that my- this guy drunk because it's titillating. Titillating is titillating because it's titillating. Is he drunk or is he on crack? She's got her face covered. She's hanging her head and covering her her face with her hands. Satan's little princess. Look at this. Oh, I really upset them so much. Boo hoo hoo. Boo hoo hoo. Fuckers feel like I gotta touch it. It's fire to some motherfuckers. It's, it's interesting, man. I don't even get it. Grills trillions, the in 24 hours. I mean, it's so <laughs> what is going on? We're having we're cleaning. Up up there. No, yeah. there was a spring cleaning. Is there a full moon or something yeah. going on? No, there's not a full moon. You're in the toothpaste eaters club. What's up, Cynthia? What a weirdo. They're all weirdos here. This Caucasian Sasquatch hillbilly guy with the video game shit background. It's just just a bunch of freaking weirdos. This guy always have his, has his stupid Chevrolet banner up behind him in the hood. He's in the hood. Satan's little princess here. The Oompa Loompa. On this cause and no, there's a black man on the panel. Any chance? Oh, that's it. There's a black man on the panel. That's why there's a black man on the panel. I was trying to rub my three IQ points together and come up with something. There's a black man on the panel. That's what I came up with. Is that white motherfuckers are more racist than y'all thought? I mean, don't they oh, represent? Yeah. Tuesdays. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Now they now they go to the racism thing. They think that's racist. That's the level they're at. Can you imagine being at that level? I'm so glad I'm not at that level. None of the people on this panel are getting out of here. They don't stand a chance. They don't stand a snowball's chance inside of an active volcano in hell. And the volcano is spewing fucking hot lava they don't stand a chance what happened to these people do they eat toothpaste by the tube by the case every week every day and every week do they the toothpaste eaters club right on the screen this is cd motel vibes right here look at this creepy pope hat look at this look at this garbage they go through just cases of toothpaste Eating it, eating it. This is the toothpaste eaters club. Look at them. Look at them. It's mug shots from Chernobyl. That's what it looks like. God damn, horrible. I don't know. You got to think these were assholes before they were racist. I believe. I don't. I don't think it necessarily. They go right by the racist. They go. They, they. If you say anything, they label you a racist. They're qu so quick to label complete strangers. Can you imagine being at that level? What fools! They barely have enough IQ points to light a cigarette. That's what love they're at. They get trolled and they label somebody a racist. What morons! What fucking idiots! What a bunch of fucking idiots quick to jump to conclusions, quick to judge complete strangers. What fucking fools. Pathetic. They are pathetic.
pathetic, man. See you in 24 hours. I mean, it's so <laughs> What is going on? Yeah, I'm just cleaning the house. No, yeah. there was a spring cleaning. Is there a full moon or something yeah. going on that's causing it's people? No, to there's a black man on the panel. Any chance that white motherfuckers are more racist than y'all thought? Mm. I mean, don't they yeah. represent? Yeah. Tuesdays. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I don't know. You got to think. These were assholes before they were racist. I believe. I don't. I don't think it necessarily. Right. Is equitable or not? Uh, it, it was not equitable. It was not meant to be. It was meant to have a stare up on it. Don't even prejudice. talk about him anymore. It's not worth it. Prejudice. Uh, I, prejudice. Personally, I think prejudice. that I think that there is a double standard in how words are treated that is real. And I think that white people overcorrect. I think that what we're seeing here is white people who are frustrated because they can't sing rap lyrics or whatever. Yeah. Because, because there's a double treatment with the word, and so they're overcorrecting without realizing, like, you know, some things are what they are. You don't have to change everything in the world. Sometimes you just interact with people. Similar to trans people that are completely obsessed with being trans and gay people that are completely obsessed with being gay and completely obsessed with gender and gay sex and uh, homosexual sex and kinks and deviant sex that's their whole life that's all they have and these people it's very similar very similar here a bunch of lefties on their panel a bunch of lefties well in a way not to piss them off not every hill is worth dying on that and the, uh, world, clumsiness the world's is... not fair and that's just the way it is it's not a fair world so this gets no, 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 no. hello to marcella shout out to marcella I'm not sure what airport, but I might have been to that airport before. I'm not going to mention it. I won't mention it on here, but I think I know where you are. Um, anyway, shout out to Marcella, my beautiful harem wife, Marcella. And I hope that you have a great time. I really do. It's good to see you. And I've been having some fun tonight going around on these panel channels, these I've been going on these sewer panel channels and disrupting the system, <laughs> disrupting the system and having fun. And I, I like uh, I like disrupting the system and having a good time. No, 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 I think, no, no, no. I think you guys are I think you guys are off at least a little bit. Uh, you're missing the fascination, titillation part. Uh, there are words that you guy loves to say titillation. He loves to say titillation. But does he talk about the titties? Does he talk about the big old titties and the great shakening going on? Come on, baby, we got chicken in the barn. Whole lot of shaking going on. Anyway, I got to shake things up on YouTube. I, it's, it's gotten so stale and so stupid on YouTube. It's gotten to be such a level of trash that I got to take out the trash, fill up garbage trucks, and just shake them up. Shake them up. I don't think I can wake them up. I'm not even trying to wake these fools up. I'll just shake them up. Shake them up. Fuck them. Right? Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> and I am the king, King Stephen. And they should be addressing me as King Stephen when I show up on their panels. Let's see what we have here on this channel. Let's see if this if this guy he's not a real doctor, but Dr. Longo. Let's see if he praises former president actor Donald Trump. Korea doesn't go too well. What if they want to rap about, you know, meaningful things like family or whatever, like in the 90s, Nas and different rappers used to have a different tone. Certain careers didn't go too well and certain other ones went really well, you know, and it's just raises the question of uh, the beliefs and um, feelings of some of the record label owners, you know, so we 
So this Jimmy Stingray, I think he's kind of got a mullet here. He kind of has like the short on top up front and long in the back, party in the back. This guy's kind of got a mullet, this Jimmy guy. But I think this is his sidekick. I think this is his Robin. So this guy almost looks like a 60s hippie wearing this shirt here. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I, I like these guys. I don't hate these guys. I like these guys. I just got to be honest about what I see. Jimmy Stingray kind of comes across. I don't know. He's like Robin from Batman and Robin. We can move on from that. Uh, I was just going to pull up some pictures, but yeah, it's nothing much to see here. We covered the beat. I think we covered one of these shootings last time anyway. So it's just uh, lots popping up. And uh, speaking of um, people being elected to uh, places of, of power and stuff like that, um, Letitia James, which is the uh, New York Attorney General, is taking steps to try and seize some of Donald Trump's assets. Uh, at the moment, it... So this guy owns a bookstore, I guess, in Florida. I think it's a used bookstore. I'm not sure, but my books? Got my books? Got my books? My books? So that's uh, Jason... It's an impression of Jason Brashears from Archaics. Got my books, my books. It's the Westchester, New York uh, club, golf club, I think. And, uh, but next on her, on her, yeah, next on her um, shopping block is Mar-a-Lago, she says. She's coming for Mar-a-Lago. No, hell no. <laughs> Over our dead bodies. Jimmy, the we, King's we Castle. Be, we might be manning machine guns up in the. I was trying to get on there, especially when this this guy smiling away said the King's Castle, the King's Castle, the King's Castle. I wanted to go on there then, because I'm the king. I'm the king. I have the crown, not some fraud that you idiots believe in. It's on TV. Up in the the yep. tower, in the uh, coming months. Say? Defending, defending the king's castle from the <laughs> goblin hordes. <laughs> yeah. From what? So, West. Where is it? Well, the Westchester. Let's share a screen. Yeah. A lot of tabs. She's she's drawing up initial plans to basically seize the Westchester Golf Club because uh, with the lawfare that trump's been involved with lately been a victim of um you know he's he just won the florida primary which you know it's barely it's barely news even though it's big news but it's barely news because obviously he's winning everything he's his approval rating is skyrocketing so they're doing this lawfare um in order to bankrupt him he has to pay half of a billion dollars did you know? Damn. I mean, maybe maybe I just found that out. I I didn't know it was that much. They're trying to get him to pay half a billion for what? Because he uh, someone said that he slept with her or something. So, not politically motivated at all. She's coming for the jugular, basically, because I mean, all of his wealth is tied up in these businesses. And so, well, uh, of course, it is. That's what they say. So this guy believes everything. They're coming for his juggala, juggala, juggala. The way this guy speaks is just very, very strange. Very strange. Winning everything. His, his approval rating is skyrocketing. So they're doing this lawfare um, in order to bankrupt him. He has to pay half of a billion dollars. Did you know? Damn. I mean, maybe, maybe I just found that out. I, I didn't know it was that much. They're trying to get him to pay half a billion for what? Because he, uh, someone said that he slept with her or something. So not politically motivated at all. She's coming for the jugular, basically. Because, I mean, all of his wealth is tied up in these businesses. And um, the deadline is Monday, I believe. So he's, he's holding some, like, fundraisers and stuff like that. But she's, you know, she's on a real, um, she's having fun with it, it seems. She's making some 
sassy. Yeah, he's Australian, but he's also uh, a weirdo. I don't think every Australian's like Jimmy. Jimmy the mullet stingray. Juggala, juggala, juggala. Juggala, Jimmy, juggala. Down under, down under. Comments, and she's saying she's coming from Mar-a-Lago. And the judgments were already filed with the Westchester County Clerk's Office on March 6th. Uh, public records show to come for um, a property which is beautiful up there. I'd never seen it before. It looks like, um, you know, the English countryside or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's terrible. Of- God bless Trump. God bless our king, Florida. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just like king weird of that. They're so they're calling him the king of America. Compare and contrast this guy's channel, Old World Florida, with my channel. Okay? This guy believes politics is real and that Trump's a leader and the king of America. And people watch this channel thinking they're big truthers and awake. 52,000 subscribers, over 5,000 views. It streamed yesterday. Okay, I tried to get on here. I wanted to get on there as a guest again. And th- this is the level they're at, praising Trump. So for the people that say, Stephen, you're too harsh with these other channels, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know what they're pushing. You don't pay attention. It's so hard to screw with him. Right? Love that guy. They're never, gonna, they're never gonna stop going after him because he fought the good fight. No matter what any of you Trump haters say, no, he's not pro-V. No, he's not pro-Israel. It's all a bit more complex yeah. than that. But he plays ball here and there, but it's, he plays it's the ball. only way to... If, he, if you want any political power, you have to do that. you know, And then you can get in and change things, but whatever. And he's it's, not uh, a vegan holistic health practitioner i don't want him to be i don't need him. he didn't change anything not anything nothing 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 at all and somebody that's critical of trump doesn't make them a quote trump hater again this is what baby truthers do this guy's a trump supporter after all these years he can't even do this basic shit and people hype this dr longo guy is a genius you got to be kidding me. You're in trouble. The people that follow these channels on YouTube, you don't have a clue the way this realm works. Him to be. You know what I mean? The president yeah. isn't also the neighborhood shaman and the healer and the conspiracy theorist in their mom's basement. You know, how many lives can he live? If you know, but don't throw out America's best option. At a true, strong, powerful. America's best option? <laughs> Where do you think, what banks do you think Trump borrows money from and has his whole lifetime as a businessman? Where do you think he gets loans and gets bailed out of bankruptcy? Who do you think bails him out? Obviously, he's controlled. They're all puppets. Every politician is. And channels like this are just either, they're one or the other. I don't have the time to research every single YouTube channel, obviously in depth to see, oh, are they paid off? Are they puppets? Or are they just that dumb and ignorant and such a baby truther level? Either way, they're not putting the truth out there. They're putting out mainstream garbage that any Trump follower, you know, with a, with a sign holding up Trump, Trump, Trump. It's just a joke, man. You can't even see through politics. You can't even see through politics. Holy fuck. Honorable leader at the very least he is tall strong and that is what america needs that's why people don't like him honestly but whatever god bless donald trump guys everyone right now we're gonna bow our heads lord look at him get a little bit in the and praying to lord jesus christ i didn't know this guy's a christian but there you go he believes in god he's praying to lord jesus christ and Trump, and there's people that swear that this guy's channel 
is high level or about the truth you got to be kidding me you're praying to lord jesus christ for donald trump and this is the stuff that people insist to me this just is a good channel to say this is a channel that's high level i, I mean what are you people smoking to come to my channel and talk about this stuff because i do check out the channels that people tell me about i really do sometimes i hop on their live streams and i have a good time when i do wherever i go i'm gonna have a good time doing it i make my own fun but that doesn't mean that i support these channels if i hop on somewhere and make some jokes it doesn't mean i endorse these channels some people have to have that driven into their heads i don't endorse any youtube channel except my own that's the channel I speak for because I run this channel. I don't put out lies here. Christ, please defend Donald Trump from all these goblin attacks, all these financial vampires, seekers of attention. Yeah, let him be defended. I don't want Trump's money. Look at this guy sitting, smiling there, showing his teeth the whole time. I don't know if this guy, Jimmy, I don't know if his mouth even closes. His teeth are always showing. This is like the perfect sidekick yes man for this Dr. Longo guy, which I guess is an anagram for his name. It's not a real doctor, obviously, but, you know, anyway, uh, he's not a real doctor, but I did have them calling me King Stephen when I was on there. So anyway, anyway, I am the real king. It's not Donald Trump. I'm the real king. I'm the one that's starting a prison break out of this place, and Donald Trump only keeps you sealed in this place as do other politicians forever he doesn't need our prayers he's defended but amen for real dude yeah i mean he, look, he stuck his neck out for all of us yeah, oh, yeah. regardless I mean, of what you think, um, yeah like it, it you have to say that he's on the same team he didn't stick his neck out at all left and right red and blue both wings of the same bird, the same Freemasonic bird, ruled ruled and run by the Freemasons, the Jesuits, the Vatican, uh, the Club of 300, and it's all one system. Washington, D.C., London, U.K., and the Vatican City. It's all one system. It's all rigged. It's all controlled. It's a world stage, dummy. You're not at that level yet? You can't see through politics? Or are you just doing this? Are you? It's one or the other. Either you're dummy and you're blind, or you're paid to lie. It's one or the other. Time and time again, they've thrown some big old boulders at him. You know, they've they've dropped some heavy anvils down on his plans. And they've, they've really, like from from the moment he won and even before that, you know, they didn't think he could and then he did. And ever since it's been hell, you know, and he's, he's a fighter. Like even if you hate him, you have to agree that he's, he fights. He doesn't just give in. So it's really what a country needs. They always go back to feelings. Even if you hate him, I'm not a lefty. I don't hate him. I'm not feelings driven. I'm evidence driven. You guys are the ones that love him because of your feelings. You're the ones feelings driven. Yelling in the crowds, Trump, 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 Trump. It's all feelings. He's done nothing for anyone. Nothing. Especially when it's in the state, the dire state that many countries are in right now. Uh, they need each country. I'm a nationalist. I think every country should have a fighter in, in the at the helm. And wherever you live, you should want that for your country to keep you safe and to make your country as good as it can be yeah this whole thing with the v's guys i i have these debates with people all the time why have you all forgotten why have you all forgotten who robbed your memory why have you all forgotten that donald trump was anti-v going into the oval office openly openly critiqued criticized V's mm. injections aut called them autism causing, called them autism, told the public that he had a personal, you know, friend who had an injury. No funny business. He called it out. What world leader has done that yet? 
I don't even think Rand Paul has ever blown the the whistle on you know fees up until now, recently. Mm. But Trump was doing it way before it was cool. Do not forget that people. You all are so quick to criticize, and you think you're all so perfect, and you could just waltz into the Oval Office and, and fix all of our issues. Give me a break. Okay. He was mm -hmm. anti-V decades before going in to the Oval Office. He went into the Oval Office, anti-V, had RFK, meetings with RFK to iron out how to defend against, you know, V legislature, how to protect people, how to protect mothers. He wanted to protect the mothers. Is he a holistic health practitioner? No. The guy eats McDonald's all day. I don't think he's why would I go to him for health advice? He might even genuinely think that vaccines are good for the public when done right. In fact, I can prove that to you because when all this was popping off, he promoted the J&J &J and AstraZeneca. He warned against, what's it called, Pfizer. Pfizer. And I'm going to read some comments from people in their chat room right now this person these people are more aware than, than the guys on the channel this person curtis with a k said politics is not real on any level i agree except maybe the lowest level of local there might be some tiny tiny politics that is real or has real elections there could be on a very local small level but other than that yeah it's all rigged it's all theater it's all for show um and I'm not nitpicking. I'm just trying to be as accurate as I can be. $24 cheeseburger with fries and soda at five guys. Huh, and fries. This person says Trump bet the, bent the knee to Fauci. CJ Trickster. Trickstar, sorry. Hinterlander said he's all about the thing, still, still pushing it. Thanks for warp speed, Trump. The fastest no one rolls out vaccines like that. Okay. This person said they worked at Whole Foods since 2000. They learned about V's 25 years ago. Well, the new ones are even worse than the old ones in my in my view, but um they're not the same. They're DNA altering, at least they claim to be. So anyway, um, not saying the old ones are good either. Not at all. I just can't go into it on YouTube. And it was the worst one. Um, Moderna. Moderna. Worst, worst by far, Moderna. Guaranteed Fauci bot, you know, DNA unraveling. He warned against Pfizer. Got a Mark Devil in was the same shit about Trump. Really, I didn't know that. I haven't followed really. I haven't followed Mark Devil in. Um, Devil in. <laughs> but uh, he's been invited on my show. He's been tagged. I've left comments over there on his channel. Other people have. I still haven't heard from him. Still haven't heard from Mark Devil in or Eric Dubay. Haven't heard from them at all. So you might want to find that a bit interesting after all these days and posts and tagging and not a word, not a word. You would think they'd want to talk about it on the cream of the crop channel and live streams with guests out of there. There are no other channels in the soul trap doing what I do that have people on. They don't do this over at forever con man. All right. They don't do this over at Dan, the yes man overwatch uh, Wayne Bush has not had a video with that chick that he is on with, Elvira, whatever her name is, 
Uh, Wayne's World with Elvira has not made a video in months and months. I think four, five, six months, something like that. They disappeared after I made a couple memes and made some videos laughing it up because I thought it was funny. And I guess they're so sensitive, they just quit making videos. So in terms of Soul Trap topic, nobody does what I do. I will have people on to talk to me as live guests. Whether they're famous or not, I will hear people out and have them on my show if they have the guts to come on. But you got to put on your, your big boy boxers, your big boy underwear, all right? Take the panties off, Eric's. Erica. Erica, take the panties off and Mark Devlin. Take the little grimace off, the little frown off your face. He always has that frown on his face, that grimace look. And come on here and talk to me on El Diablo Radio International, the cream of the crop channel on YouTube. Yeah, they changed the definition. They, they can do whatever they want and people follow it. That's the problem. And that won't change. Not because I say so, not because I don't want it to. It won't change because most people don't change at all in this realm. It's so rare for people to change anything about themselves, much less views of major things. It's very, very rare. If you look at it, if you take a broad spectrum, big picture view, beyond your families, big picture, if you can do it. Some people can't do it. And that's what my YouTube channel has taught me more than anything. So a lot of people that come to my channel, the furthest they could see is their father, mother, their sibling. They can't see bigger. That's about as far as their bubble extends is to their immediate family and themselves. In general, most people don't change at all on anything. Most people, if they're a Democrat, they're a Democrat for life. They're left for life. If they're right, they're right for life on the right. If they support the V, they support it for life. If they believe doctors, they believe them for life. Most people don't change much of anything. They don't change themselves. Most people, if they have an addiction, they don't work on it and to change themselves to get better. They don't change very much. If you really look at it and you're real honest with yourself, again, most people aren't honest with themselves. Most people have hopium and they'll, they'll, argue, they'll argue and say, people can change, Stephen. People can change. People can change. Well, how many do change? How many fucking do change? How many drop the programming and say, you know what? I was wrong about all that. And they come on my channel and say, hey, you know what? I was wrong. I attacked you for years, Stephen. I was wrong. And I attacked you for years. And now I'm seeing that I was wrong. And you do have proof for what you're saying. All I had to do was really pay attention and watch your videos. And the proof's right there. How many people change? How many leopards change their spots? How many leopards change their spots? Can anyone ans answer that? In a lifetime, how many leopards end up changing their spots? How many times have you witnessed that on something major where somebody completely changed on something that's meaningful in this life and they didn't just change something uh, that doesn't matter very much or doesn't matter at all, something trivial, like their favorite beer or their fa favorite brand of cigarettes or their favorite TV show or movie changed, big deal, doesn't affect anything. You almost never see it in this realm. You think about it. Leopards rarely change their spots. It almost never happens. It's almost like a miracle if somebody breaks free of a major addiction, like heroin or something. Very rare. It takes tremendous willpower for someone to change something. To change one thing, but to change their whole view of the realm, it almost never happens. It's very rare for adults to get rid of a religion that they're indoctrinated in follow doesn't matter what the religion is 
doesn't have to be Christianity. It can be any of the others too. It's very rare for an adult to even try to learn a new thing without changing, to try to learn how to play piano or learn a, new, a second language. Very rare. Do people even attempt to learn something in adulthood? And I don't just mean learn a few words. I mean really learn it. A whole language when they're, say, 45, 50 years old. He warned against uh, whatever you just said. Whatever you just Moderna. said. Moderna. Yeah. So most people defend, 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 and hang on to what they currently believe with a death grip. And I he never got one. You guys, right? I guess you guys weren't paying. And he says, and he never got one. He never got one. Yeah, Trump did say he got one or multiple, from what I remember. So Jimmy, when you chiming in, he never got one. He never got one. Why don't you do know what you're talking about before you spew this shit? You know, that's another thing that irritates me about all these, quote, truther channels. They spew shit. It's not even true. Just constantly. It's they don't they don't give a shit what's true. So, like, why call yourselves that? Or why? Like, it's just so annoying to me. There's so many channels like that on YouTube. People say, well, this is a truther channel. Well, they don't tell any fucking truth. They just make up shit as they go along. Well, he never got one. How the fuck would you know, Jimmy? Now it's he claims to have gotten one since then. Okay, he claims mm -hmm. to have gotten one. Basically, the media never would have let off about. I that. mean, Tucker he Carl claims to have gotten one, but he's playing five D chess. Why don't you defend it that way? He's playing. Trump's still playing five D chess after all these years. You know, it's just incredible what people will hang on to. It really is. It's really sad in a way. It's laughable in another way. I do laugh at people. I never deny that. I absolutely do. I find some of this like such a clown show. I can't help but laugh. But I know that I can't help most people. That's not me being negative. It's it's me being honest and realistic. I can't help most people. Because most people, their pre-existing beliefs, they're going to cling to those until their deathbed. That's the way most people are. They'll say, they'll, they'll pro there's people that will tell you all the time, oh, I'm so open-minded. They're not open-minded at all. They just call themselves things that they are not. Carlson claimed to, get, claimed to have got one when he was working for Fox. Then when he got mm -hmm. off, he goes, ah, I never got one. <laughs> never got one. I was lying. So if that's the pressure you feel know. in Fox News, what do you think the pressure is like in the White House? And granted, yeah. he's not a holistic health practitioner. He's not. So I'm not surprised if he makes dumb decisions. That being said, I don't think it makes him evil. And by the way, I'm sticking my neck out to defend. You have to be a health practitioner to make good decisions like that. Really? That's your argument? I mean, somebody has to work in that fucked up industry to make good decisions for their health? What are you talking about, man? What the fuck are you talking about? And what I think is perhaps the, you know, Thing that matters least about whether he's good or bad is he okay with the dumbest most naive most gullible willingly led to the slaughter group of our population is he okay with them willingly sterilizing themselves if not worse well he might be kind of cutthroat like that and we're not mature enough to know what the world stage is like like that. The world is run by killers. I hate to break it to you. Is he okay with letting the dumbest people run headfirst into their own slaughter? <laughs> he might have been. Did he arrange it? No. Is he for it? No. But is he going to throw everything away and you know, go all out to defend the dumbest and the weakest? No, he may be cutthroat like that. I will give you that. And I don't think that's anything to be, you know, moralist, like, uh, you know, how could he ever please? Please. Everyone and it was a choice. Knows. Yeah. yeah, he gave you the choice. The whole warp speed, he jokes. He's a troll, okay? I have... <laughs> Read some books about people and people. Now he's a troll, and this guy kind of chuckles nervously. Yeah, yeah, this little Jimmy, this little Jimmy guy.
I'm sorry, Jimmy. I, I don't have any hatred for you, but you're just, I don't know what you are. You're just kind of like this little sidekick. It's just, it's odd. It just is. This is the odd couple here, everyone. This is the odd couple. I got to be honest here. It's the odd couple. You know, oh, hated by the whole media, labeled everything he does, labeled wrong, immoral. Oh, who does that remind me of? A couple of people in world history. A couple of men who ruffled feathers, okay? Alistair Crowley being one. Another one led a, you know, certain, uh, certain German, you know, state <laughs> <laughs> into a world conflict. But people get labeled bad and, you know, is it more complex than that? I think so. Yeah. So I've seen the tactics. Trump is under fire via the same tactics. I, I, would you be surprised if Jimmy chimed in suddenly and said, said get your boasters. Get your boasters. Get your boasters. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about his accent that just sounds feminine. And I think that mullet cut really suits him. He kind of looks feminine there. He does. He calls himself the father of the V. Yeah, that is hilarious to me. <laughs> Why? Because he entered the White House anti-V. He was anti-V decades ago. And then what happened? When COVID happened, he was anti-V for almost two years. Okay? For a full year, he was anti-V, anti-V. What is he saying, guys? Hydroxychloroquine. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Shit, what's the other thing? Ivermectin. Ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine. He went, when he first went to hospital, he had Zithromax. Yes. And he was like, this great thing, Zithromax. So he, he, he was, yeah, he was always yeah, uh, advocating please, these controversial things. Guys, you cannot just forget, all of you with this selected memory, you cannot just forget that he was on network news, major network news, international TV going, yeah, you know, get your, get your citrus and your local holistic protocols, literally. Yeah, I mean, how wow. could you guys forget this? That for months and months and months he was going ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine. Why deworm yourself? The president of the United States, like Jesus, is telling people to deworm themselves to get mm -hmm. to combat COVID. I mean, that is holistic health advice that I would take. Mm. Okay, guys, he's saying use all these alternative medicines for months and months and months, telling you subtly, how do you not see? He was adamantly anti-V, anti-V. He said, we're gonna get it out, we're gonna get it out, we're gonna make sure it's a safe one, we're gonna make sure it's a safe one, for months and months and months and months. Delaying and delaying, all the while saying, I'm gonna get it to you first. Not the FDA, the FDA is not gonna get in there. This isn't gonna be dem Democrat legislature where they push it in and then when it's FDA approved, nobody gets to opt out. When it's uh, FDA approved, they can guarantee that it's going door to door, mandatory, and you're on a list. What did Trump yeah, do? Like other countries. What did Trump do? You say, you say, oh, he gave us the vaccine. I said V, whatever. I don't even think they care anymore. Oh. You know, he's the father of the V. He's taking, you know, that he's, you know, all this. I can't believe people complain like this. They'll never be happy with anyone. But he goes anti-V for months. Then what happens? He goes, okay, we got the V ready. Now we're going to get it, not door to door, in your neighborhood, in your city. We're going to drop it off. The military is going to be there. Not your Democrat activists, not your liberal Antifa activists going door to door, injecting people against their will. That was the alternative. Trump did not bring the pandemic. He was the cause of the pandemic because they wanted to stop America in its tracks. They wanted to stop the world in its tracks. We had a strong leader in charge of the greatest nation on earth. Economy was booming. Everything's mm -hmm. going great. And then what? They hit him with this, just like they hit us with a couple of world wars. 
when certain countries start clean, cleaning up their act. Yeah, that's what they did. Orange man, good people. If you or have you've been critical this whole time, give him a chance. What do you have to lose? You're gonna wait for what? The perfect candidate who doesn't exist. And who no else? Doubt. What it what uh, is the candidate? I mean, like they they're trying to get rid of Biden now because he tried yeah. to say he tried to critique Netanyahu once. Um, but you know, like I thought by now they would have a Democrat, uh, you know, opposition person ready to go, like Pete Buttigieg or something. But yeah, they're just sort of say, like, what's happening? You know, Operation Warp Speed. Um, to me, not the end of the world, guys. What it was a choice in America. He got consensual. Yeah. Oh yeah, you want a V? Oh yeah, it'll be in your neighborhood. You have to get in your own car. You have to go drive there. You have to roll down your own sleeve, roll down your own window, mm -hmm. and ask for one. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case in every country. Why is everyone forgetting that? Nobody was forced. Your job might have forced you because you have a terrible job because you've been mm -hmm. sucking off someone you shouldn't have been sucking off for years until it came down to it. Oh yeah, I'm okay pretending I don't have ideological differences with these people and taking money from them until it actually matters. That's yeah. all the people who are angry at Trump because they got fired from their jobs. Trump didn't fire you from your jobs. Trump gave every state the choice to operate freely. Okay. Florida, I know that. I was here. We stayed open the entire time. Okay. I'm very critical of DeSantis. Very, very critical of DeSantis. I'll be critical of Trump if I need to. But again, guys, what's the worst thing we have against him? The worst thing you can say is he's okay with the blue haired freak baristas running head on into sterilization. <laughs> we all we all know dang well, and he knows dang well, any Trumper was not getting that fee. And if they were, yeah. they probably would have switched sides if the water got too hot to begin with anyway, because those are suggestible, you know, chakras turned off. Trump's not going to stick his neck out that far to save the dumbest of a population. So that being said, I still think he gave everyone the option. He was anti-V. He recommended every holistic health thing he could rattle off for months until he ever actually endorsed the V. And again, this is, you got to play ball a little bit and he did everything he could. I'm satisfied. I'm happy with everything he did for the American people to convince those smart enough to understand not to get the V. Mm. Yeah, okay. the information was out there for those that looked. Yeah, yeah. he made and sure he of it. it. Anyone who's who's saying, mm -hmm. oh, he's the he's the sole cause of the Vs. No, you're you just haven't looked into it deep enough. You are just too triggered. And I don't know what to tell you. You know, you're gonna let a great thing fly right by and not seize it. So and when yeah. you were him, like I've been I've been frustrated about oh why can't he just admit like when Candace interviewed him, he you know, yeah. she tried to get him to admit, yeah, you know, lots of people had adverse effects, la la died. Um, but and I I've, I've been frustrated at that point where I was like, Can you just say it like yes, there were side effects? When you're him, every everything that not only comes out of your mouth but comes, you know, out of your Twitter or whatever, every every letter of every word is looked at as a legal avenue of attack, basically, as a, everything that is said could potentially mean a lawsuit, could potentially be um, something that could financially affect him. And that's why, you know, sometimes people think he's coded with different things, he tweets or whatever. But uh, if, if he admits fault, if you go, you know what, yeah, uh, they killed a lot of people, I didn't know, whatever. Then, boom, the people that are waiting on your every word, finding the weak, looking for weakness, smelling, trying to find that point, they've found it, you know, and then they can, uh, 100%. Give them an 100%. So and then you, it's not like us talking right now, it's the 100%. Then you've got Israel, people don't like his positions on Israel. Well, 
believe it or not, he's actually way less pro-Israel than Ben Shapiro. Way, yeah. way far off. He's not Ben Shapiro level pro-Israel. Of course he's not. not. He's not pro boots on the ground. Not at all. He's not pro boots on the ground in any... Ah, uh, yes, the boomers. A lot of the boomers still can't see through the 1960s psyops. All these decades later, it's just they'll never see through anything. They think they're the best generation. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's really pathetic, this realm. It just is. Few people see through anything at all. And it's just pathetic. Armed conflict that may involve America. So what was he in favor of? They changed the uh, capital city to where it probably should have should have been already. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, I've heard some people say that he is in the fold because he's actually planning to claim authority over Israel as the king of Israel and the new <laughs> kingdom of Israel. I swear, my buddy told me that. My oh good God, friend really? told me that. Because people yeah, think he, he's the returned um, something. Kind of. Some prophecy but he, or whatever. Yes. So I don't know so much about that, but I know that he is not a Zionist. He's never claimed to be a Zionist. Okay. He has business dealings with Israel. He's a business type, you know, respectful type relationship he has with every country. Which is, hey, these are this is a world power. They probably bought out a ton of my friends, and these are people who you need to deal with carefully. You know, it's not American just like, politics. It's not just like I'm running the show and I get to tell them, you know, they're wrong about everything. They just flip the script. You get in there and it's a dick. It's a dense, thick swamp, like he said. So, yeah. hey, I, I wish he could be as critical as as possible on Israel. I wish he would drop all support of Israel, but. It's not that simple, you know. He's got Jews in his family. Yeah. Um, I've got it, Jews it, in my American family. Policy. You know, it's it's not a bad thing, but it's stick. Hey, please get those likes up. I noticed there's not very many likes on this live stream. I appreciate the ones that have have that have liked the video, given it a thumbs up. Get those likes up, everyone. If you're enjoying some of this live stream, get those likes up. Make America grape soda again. Make America grape drink. Sticky. You get in these sticky situations. You've got feelings you're protecting. You've got, you know, your the self you're looking out for legally. It's tough. You know, it's tough being a leader of anything, guys. It's tough having a big following. It's tough representing all these different people. So I don't like his position on Israel. I don't like his position on the mm -hmm. V's, but with the V's, I see through it all. I'm not triggered. I'm not offended. I don't think he's doing anything wrong with the V's. He was anti-V for over a year. Then like, oh, yeah, I'm the king of the V's. I got them out first. Yeah, I take all. It's not hilarious taking credit for your enemies. Like for take it credit, taking credit for your enemies tactics, which you foiled, you know, yeah. He's a master troll. Everyone he likes knows he's a troll. He, he, I like RF. Sorry? Wh what were you going to say? I was going to say I like RFK. You know, I think he's cool. Oh, I get a little bit of a good vibe from him. But I don't think he should be America's president. You know? No way. The job is talking. Yeah, he's got to talk. You know, it, Dr. Morris said that he could probably take a look at that. Yeah. If he could get down to Dr. Morrison's in Florida. All right, okay, if you're listening, voice. Robert but, the White, Dr. Morris himself, over dude, on the it's, West Coast. He'll fix your voice. Because he so, can't you know, go and, on talking like that. It's it's a joke. Yeah. So, hey, guys. Also uh, being really pro-Israel. That's not one of these. I'm not one of these people who thinks Trump can do no wrong, but I don't think his, I think he de dealt with the whole sticky V situation in the pandemic very gracefully, tr truthfully. I think I feel like he stuck out for us enough. I feel like I'm smart enough to offend it for myself on top of having looked out for us 
I don't need Trump to type out the exact script, the survival script for the pandemic, the holistic health protocols that you're going to follow that are impeccable, that have, you know, what do you guys want? What do these people want from Trump? Him to like go to a Siesta Key beach, like a drum circle and just like switch like. Type out the exact script, the survival script for the pandemic, the holistic health protocols that you're going to follow that are impact. So there's the double six, six, six thrown up here. His hand signs. See that? Just thought I'd point that out. All right. And then the diamond sign, that's a Freemasonic hand sign, a mudra right there, where he's holding his hands with his thumbs up. It's a diamond, and diamond is 33 in numerology. All right? Diamond equals 33, the word diamond. So there you go. I have, you know, what do you guys want? What do these people want from Trump? I don't want anything from Trump, to be honest. I don't want anything. I don't want anything from Trump. I'm going to show you something here. Just a second, people. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Does this hand sign look familiar to you? You want to be a big channel on YouTube. You got to push Trump. You got to push something. You got to push some bullshit. And that's why these channels grow to that size. That's what happens. And that's why so many attack my channel. Because I'm speaking real truth here. That's obvious. It's obvious. So that's Angela, Angela Merkel. Angela or Angela Merkel. Merkel with the super glue hands. Diamond sign. Okay. And how does the Donald do it? He does it a different way, but... Uh... Loves doing that with the hands. <laughs> What's this?
That's a free Masonic handshake right there with Putin. Putin. Puya, Putin. Puya. Hit him with the Puya. Another free Masonic sign pointing that way, right at the camera. The truth doesn't matter to most truthers, though. It's their feelings that matter. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. He won't touch food with his hands. What the hell? Feelings, nothing more than feelings. Hi, Callie, missed you as well. It's good to see you. Oh my goodness, what a surprise this is. I was just looking at something and just came back here and there's Callie. Oh, what a beautiful surprise. I'll put the link up if Callie wants to come on here that would be wonderful that would be more than wonderful that would be glorious that would be glorious feelings Nothing more than feelings. <laughs> I don't know how I got singing that song, but uh, it's been a it's been a hell of a day today. It's been a hell of a day. Oh, and I have started to get sleepy. I hope you're doing well, Callie. We have missed you. My heart skipped a beat when I saw you in the chat room. I know Team Evil will probably clip that and try to use it, but they try to use everything that I say. They can't get to me no matter what they do. No matter what they do, they can't get to me. <laughs> they just can't get to me. They can't get to me no matter what they try to do. Mushroom Coyote's probably watching this right now, drooling beside Trash Luna and Orphan Annie and, and all of them. <laughs> they're so envious. These creatures, they're so envious. Hello, Callie. Hello. 
That was a very quick, instant invitation. It was like perfect timing. Yeah, it, you had perfect timing. I just happened to check my screen and you were here. I was looking at something else on another window. I was looking at this article with Trump doesn't eat with his hands or something. He, Mm -hmm. The knife and fork. With Those everything. fat fingers, his sausage fingers. Because <laughs> at that yeah. moment, I was just typing the mess uh, chat. Because I just noticed Trump all over the screen. Yeah. And he, yeah. So just when you ended it, but then before I got, I heard you were tired and you were yawning. So. <laughs> oh, you heard me yawning. The yeah, I you said you might, you're getting tired. That's what you said. Oh, Ask people in the chat phone. if they want to. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't do you give any bear yawns. Did you guys think that I would do like a, a like a no call? You know, like how people just leave and you never hear from them and you're wondering, like, you're scratching your head and you're like, what, what did I do? They just like ghosted you, you know? I was it, I was talking about that in another group. We'll say about that happening re, uh, even a year ago with my channel. There's been people that I haven't seen in almost a year that I felt like I was very close with that emailed with me and and they always loved the channel. Some even bought my artwork and they just they made videos showing their artwork, my artwork in their in their place, stuff like that. And I've never heard from them again. So that does happen. I didn't think that would happen with you, but I would have been sad if it did happen. I would have, I would have been like, I just want to hear. You guys wouldn't Callie be like, oh, she's turned on Team Evil, and like I, I you wouldn't suspect because would. it's yeah. it is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> turned. To it's pretty evil. wild, like a psychologically, like you, kind of like wonder, like, you know, because you've trusted people, and then they've turned on you, like from just your experience and you know oh yeah there's there's some on demon slayers channel there's a bunch of them that have turned yeah. on me that the, were they used to be your friends yeah yeah and there's one that there that used to be my friend through email and i sent her and her daughter some artwork in other words i know her name her address everything i know her i've seen shared pictures with her by email didn't she ghosted me for months um she claimed to be have a terminal illness so i thought she probably passed away because i hadn't heard from her for like six months no email responses mm -hmm. and then she shows up on team evil channels bashing me out of same nowhere. under her same username yeah i didn't know that was she i i used to wonder if she was okay i was worried about her i didn't know if she was alive anymore so maybe she lied about the terminal illness i don't know i don't know she didn't give you any reason just no, like there's no reason that she just disappeared, stopped responding to my emails. There was no falling out, no argument, nothing. I guess she just got deceived by Team Evil Channel. Yeah. Not what they're saying about Stephen must be true or whatever. Oh, some people are just not. Maybe you. she got butthurt by something you said, but then she didn't want to tell you. But then she just like, she's that kind of not. Confront not I wouldn't even say confrontational, but she's just a weak person. Yeah. So could, could be, be that too. I don't know. But. Could be a liar. Like maybe maybe she doesn't have a terminal illness. Maybe she made it all up. You never know for there's sure. There's a lot of things that. in the internet. That's what I'm saying in the internet. There's a lot of things. And um I mean hopefully I'll always come back. <laughs> I'll come back. Always. I hope they'll so. they'll I stir up more shit tonight because today's the freaky night. So oh God, she's here. She's the most evil one of all of them. Let's she's not forget about Kali. <laughs> then she's a homie. <laughs> sorry, I think I read. Sorry, she's... what? Um, yes, I think I read it. <laughs> one of the comments. A hoe? Was that mushroom? Coyote? No, it was somebody else. I don't know. I think I have a lot of people who hate me. Really? And there's, nice. I, I feel like there's a lot just like, I think it's not even just because of what I said about Kai. Maybe it's also maybe from the past, I think. It's, it's so weird. I don't know. 
and I'm not very like I just you know I just don't I just don't have any energy I have a lot going on in my to deal with that kind of stuff you know yeah. I just felt like what you allow when I come on is like to give me the freedom to speak what I want to say you know freedom of speech and mm -hmm. what I was talking about Kai was just just being like just being honest like I have just not grown up with those kinds of uh, people who change and their gender and stuff and for me it's just like it's so it's just such so disturbing and it's it's almost like you're mutilating your own body you know but that's just me it's my so I don't understand why you can get so like upset and just so dramatic about it but it's just a fact mm -hmm. and then they call me evil and like all kinds of bullshit you know for the rest i really wish values. i could say like fuck you fuck you guys <laughs> like you know yeah i, I like I, do, I don't have to like prove myself to anyone you know so i guess i mean i'm it's just, let them say stuff, right? If I'm getting a, a angry about it, that means uh, I'm getting triggered too, right, Stephen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't sound angry to me, though. I don't. <laughs> I just feel like, yeah, I just want to be like, I want to tell them off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that Callie is a lot more sweet. I'm the evil one. So if Team Evil is listening in right now, if they're lurking, I'm the evil one. I take full responsibility. Oh, for they'll just stir up even oh, more yeah. shit. They'll just like, they're probably just I'm watching. The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm the evil one. The team. I should evil. wear the devil horns, you know. <laughs> I've turned evil. You guys have turned me evil. We, tur we turned you evil. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll be wearing that really red ro robe, you know, like a cloak. <laughs> and I'd have almost like cat eyes, like demon. <laughs> And I would be a vampire and I would get them. <laughs> that, that's kind of kinky in a way. I like that. Tell me again, what, what will you be wearing? <laughs> Literally a superhero, cat suit. <laughs> oh my goodness. With spiky heels. <laughs> to crush them. <laughs> crush those little midgets. <laughs> Tiny little... <laughs> 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 Shit, I'm gonna I get in it. trouble. <laughs> I love it. I think the demon slayer is probably a little midget riding around a little. They're gonna be shaking them. those little soy boys. Mm -hmm. Gonna whoop their asses. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is why we missed you, Callie. This is part of why we missed you. But it's good to I have. I work you. in the heart of the city in Portland, or I work with I I work with like straight men wearing skirts. Uh, showing their hairy fucking yeah i like hairy men but i do not want to see your hairy fucking uh legs that haven't been great <laughs> men wearing skirts yes i i work in a, like a conservative place but it's also very diverse fashion so there's like straight i'm serious steven i'm not even joking that's I I really want to like write a book or something and talk about my, I I've been I've been working I was like in a, some kind of cult, yeah. Wow. I made good that money, but like, it's it's insane, yeah. Like what you're dealing with is nothing compared to what I deal with, yeah. So I already deal with this bullshit in real life, you know. But yeah, I just don't, I don't want to just talk about myself, but I understand, you know, the hatred in like people, you know, even in my workplace, I don't share anything uh, personal, you know, and I try to do that also in this online community, but I think I've said some things and then people can stir up stuff, but you know, what, I feel like I shouldn't care. Like you, you said, you don't give a shit, right? No. No, if they can hate me all they want, it just shows me that they envy me, and uh, I can't blame them. If you if you know what yeah. I'm saying, I mean, I just I can't blame yeah. them in a sense for envying me because they're incels, a lot of them. Yeah, they're these four, five foot two little guys like that Tom S guy, and yeah. I, I don't think he's the only one. I think he's admitted to it, but I bet there's a bunch of them that are these short, J 
just tiny. Uh, what's his yeah. name? That Snafu. He seems Snafu really short and tiny. Mm -hmm. He's a real short, angry little guy. They 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 have. What's angry. his name? Um, the white guy. Oh, he looks like guy? a redneck. He always wears the Pope's um hat. Oh, Flow State. I was just Flo on there. He's like a. He lives in Kansas, I think. Oh yeah, I got kicked yes. off his, uh, tonight. I got kicked off their live stream. He's like the like the king right now, the badass of like the truth of community, just oh, like sucking a, his he's dick. Not a badass. He, he's he's, for, he he's me, trying to be. He I know. I'm just saying. He, me off. He's, he put the pope hat on. I called him a creepy pope, and then I. He probably has his agents right now listening on for him. He, oh, he probably taking does. notes. <laughs> he's so weak. He had his finger on the kick button. As soon as I asked a question, he kicked me off. So I was live there on their panel, and he, I kicked, he kicked me off in seconds. You but didn't give a chance for a dickhead. I was the highlight. Well, I said something that he, they all went in a frenzy, and I recorded it, but uh, they, all, they all got in an uproar over what I said. I, I upset. I triggered the whole panel. I triggered everyone over there. Oh, I had fun, but you're brave. You, know, you give me guts to be like that. Sometimes you have to with these characters. Even yeah. in my workplace, you know, it's just like, just to do, you know, because we're not like them. So, no. Well, these are the only. These are kilts. These aren't skirts. But <laughs> Scotland, this is the only place. Would I've you wear? Seen. Would you wear a kilt? If I was Scottish, I would. I would probably do that. <laughs> part of the hair. You'd show your thick calves. <laughs> yeah, show them. I think, <laughs> and in the Highland Games, they they wear these. Um, I think they wear those at the Highland Games, kilts. Yeah, they do. And they're, they're actually happy. very uh, masculine men. They're not like sissy men, you know. Oh yeah, they're, they're a lot of these are guys are like thicker. Guys. They look like they've like worked hard, like in the fields, you know, and um, yeah, not like a gym. Like on fucking steroids and whatever shit they take these men these days. <laughs> More like this. This guy, some guys like this have a build like I had when I was like maybe 25, 30 pounds heavier than what I am right now. Something like that. They lift, they do log lifts, throws, tug of yeah. war, all this kind of, it's physical um, competition. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, it's not the shave your legs type of uh shave their chest steroids go to the gym this is these not are like natural bros, men yeah yeah these are real men these are not gym bros no not at all these are these are big guys and they wear they're they not do yeah. in these mm -hmm. games but those are the only straight men but I i'm saying the that. ones that are wearing right now the fashion trend is these like sissy like may like straight men who wear that I work with somebody and he's straight. He's even getting engaged as like beautiful it, it Latina hurts. girl. Oh, and God. and she she's really? so beautiful and he wears freaking skirts, Steven. And he wears like a huge pin like on his uh, forehead. You know like those baby pins? Like those triangular? Uh not sure baby pins baby pins yeah like a pin on your head it looks like a little like these are these like he up? puts he pits that big pin on his like head like with a doomy cap like a skull cap it's a total gen z look you know like that depressed wearing oversized clothing they all look like apocalypse and he just like and hates the world he's to he's a total meme and he's marrying wow. this like beautiful girl and and he has that that voice you know that gay voice that uh, he doesn't okay. have like that masculine voice like yours it's more like a it's like that it's vacuum like a like a little squeaky voice it's so gay Stephen. i just <laughs> you have no idea this character and he's getting married oh to this gosh. beautiful girl and i was like what the fuck yeah why is she attracted to him? Like, is she? I have no girl? idea. I have no freaking idea. Wow, that's weird. Really strange. Yeah, very strange. And they're getting married. Yeah. Wow. And he's a total dickhead, cocky head, wearing his fucking skull. Like he wears a lot of jewelry, and they're all skulls. And and his favorite. Uh, he's only like five foot six, also. 
which is even oh, crazy. Yeah, wow. it is. It's crazy. <laughs> and is he white or what? what um, race half is? Mexican. Yeah. Oh, he's half Mexican. Mm -hmm. But like, um, I would say third generation, maybe. He's Gen Z, so in his uh, 20s. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that that was a thing. Skirts wearing or mm -hmm. great. If you Google like skirts. in a fashion, uh, high fashion right now, it's a lot of um, men, straight men wearing skirts over pants or just, and wearing it like a satchel. A lot of like, even like basketball players will wear like a, like a satchel. It's almost like a handbag. It's weird. You don't wear a handbag, do you? <laughs> I don't think no. you do. <laughs> no, no, I don't. No, no, I don't. I just have a wallet. That's it. And uh, wow, what the but hell? If you work in the city and you observe, there's there's a lot of dads who are wearing that, like couples, like wearing a fucking handbag. Like I'm like like a six foot like four guy, just like literally wearing a handbag. I was like, you're just not even a man. Like I'm thinking to myself, like. <laughs> Wow, this is crazy. It's crazy. I'm oh. revealing a lot, so I don't mean to talk about <laughs> No, no. I want to actually me. just make a uh, talk about this experience. You know, it actually helps me want to have other people have this awareness, you know, because I feel like a lot of people don't have an awareness, just like how you're talking about all these team evil. They really don't see the big picture. And that's how it is, and to be honest, in real life. That's, I guess, human beings, it's just how they are, you know, whether on the internet or even real life. Don't you agree? There's very few people that you can really stay connected and even talk about these subjects that we talk about. I agree. It isn't, it isn't a lot of people that, are, that you can really have these conversations with and a lot of the times, like when we were on Bex's show, they just try to silence you with give, like, labeling. They just use, oh, well, you're a misogynist or you're sexist or transphobe. They just use these labels like these guys look like sissies to me. This is what they would have been called when I was growing up. Yeah. And but if I was in a you panel know. and there would be some woman, she, she probably maybe has a son that age and she's like, maybe it triggers her, you know just because her son, so it just validates her, so she'll put it out on me, you know? This is how people are when they get triggered with their emotions. So, like right now I'm talking about this men in skirts, there might be another woman who might disagree with me. And then another woman will join in, and then some wimp fucking man will fucking join in who's simping with her, you know? Some, some wimp will chime in and say that he's yeah. sitting down. Because he, he probably wants to like fuck her, or saying sending her DMs, some fucking flirtational shit going on. There's a lot that kind of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess some of them are trying to do that. They change who they are just to get women interested. They, I, it's a fuck, It's like Tinder. Like it is a little bit like Tinder. Like even showing yourself on camera. It's like you're flexing. Yeah. It's actually comical when you see them on the panel, all their little heads bobbing. <laughs> 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 like Muppets, oh, like shit. Muppet heads bobbing. They're going to hate. Some... They're going to throw some evil spells at me. Steven, I'm talking too much it's... right now. I can't help it. No, no, it's it's okay, Callie. It's okay. We can we can talk about these screen lickers. They're licking their cameras as they're as they're on these panel channels and they they have to be on webcam and they have to be smoking and they have to be drinking and they have to be using a bong. They have to be doing all their stuff and bugging their eyes out and looking at themselves like that Barbie trash squats earlier on Flow State's channel. It's, it's just, I, I call them the, uh, they are uh, Chernobyl mugshot. It looks like they're Chernobyl mugshot. Chernobyl. That little mushroom just, like a uh, like cloud. They, oh, they like just, that little. Yeah. Yeah. They just look like they're mutant beings that they they got radiation mm -hmm. radiation you know they're, they're just mutants. <laughs> the frequency they're, just, they're this yeah, stuck they're in that you they're know? just freaks yeah. you know 
everything. You know, like how pigeons are just stuck in their little area. They don't even know. They think that's it. And that's the most amazing. And that's, they did them really wrong, you know, and the birds, you know that, right? With yeah. pigeons. So yeah. that's what they are. Yeah. It's almost like they're stuck in an echo chamber, right? They call it. Yes, uh, they just echo each other. They stick around their same kind. Bounce the same kind of. Uh, just it's fucking boring. I can't. I, I don't know how I could same, sit and do that. They have the same uh, drug motel vibes. The the mm. seedy, no no tell motel. It's vibes. kind of like a like a gas like a like a tacky like a casino because then it has the cash thing going on too. You know, like on the chat. Yeah. So like, give the member. Like he has members. So what are these special members? Are they getting like s special? What were they getting? Treats? Are they getting <laughs> special? <laughs> <laughs> they get little treats. I want to know get little emojis. what they I'm get getting in this package emojis. to be a five dollars a month. What the <laughs> shit you fucking people are giving? And they give eighty dollars a month at Forever Con Man's for his uh, Last Timers Club membership. It's literally like a. It's almost like a freaking bad like casino like when i first went to a casino in america i think i told you and you know in, because i didn't see that in zambia and when i went i just the atmosphere and then i saw old people and, and they look like zombies like literally like wrinkled up just <laughs> dead skin and just all glued to the machine and i was like what the fuck do people like what are they doing i was like <laughs> disgusted and and that carpet because when oh. i first came you know they could smoke but you could yeah. still have that even if you go to a casino now they haven't really cleaned up the the carpet so the energy it's not, it hasn't been like aired out mm -hmm. and it smells like fucking piss and old <laughs> vomit and oh. fucking just disgust. Probably people have got sick. Just like it's just disgusting. I hate there's, there's places probably, like that. Yeah, I would never go to fucking Vegas and get on those nasty ass pools that people go to and take fucking oh. Instagram pictures. They get on those nasty fucking pool and it's, oh oh shit. Oh gross. Yeah, those pools would be like be like a cum bath pool or something. <laughs> It'd <laughs> just be like bodily fluids, probably all over oh, the carpets disgusting. and the rooms in those in the casinos and the yeah, hotels. It's just disgusting. People probably masturbating in their pool. People are just disgusting. I oh, hate they've people. Done like, this they've disgusting been disgusting done everything. They've done everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've done everything in there. You know, I feel sorry now for Kath or for Seth because he was probably crawling around. On those carpets and those casinos, and he's crawling over all that poor stuff. thing. <laughs> I, I feel like he's just like tortured, but he's a very good human being. Yeah, I like Seth. He's one he's of the a, few Genjis that I like. He really is. But you know, I feel sorry for him because if you're listening, stopped. Seth, we love you. Yeah, we love you, Seth. <laughs> he was here the other night. He what? He's not here that often, but yeah, I, I miss talking to him. Yeah, he's fun to We talk. had some good conversations together. You guys had a carrot conversation when I had to go on the phone or something one time and and then bunch a bunch of things happened on another channel that was live streaming about me, I think. Yeah. And you Yeah, guys he's come in the middle of a lot of things when we've had into <laughs> just bad like what would you say? Bad guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's been on. Um, I think Seth might have been on my first live stream as well. Way mm -hmm. back. He's been with you for a long time. Probably longer than you and I've been, maybe. We came later. Can't remember. Uh, now. I'm not sure who came first, but. Hmm. My, he might have I been just, before. I'm not I sure. I just hope now. he's not traumatized by those casino. Uh, where he grew up, basically, where his mm, parents were. I feel like he's forgot. I mean, I hope I'm not bringing up stuff from for him. You know, just saying. I think he's strong. You know, he just. I'm just such an intense person. Sometimes I just think of those attention to detail that sometimes some people just don't have, and they don't need to. Like, why would they want to? Because sometimes I think so much that I feel like 
I shouldn't be thinking this, you know? It's unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? Yeah, that happens to me sometimes as well. Um, I don't know if they'll ever get the smell out of those casino carpets. I don't think they could steam clean the smoke and all the fluids out. But the thing is, I it's got me an awareness. I don't enjoy being in that environment. I want to be in a clean, fresh, freaking tropical with um, like um, the stream, like the natural stream with the creatures. I, and, and I just want to be like in a freaking rainforest. That's the environment oh, yeah. I like. I'd love to stay in a, a Airbnb or some rental place in a rainforest. It's like a tree, tree, uh, tree house Same. type place, you know, with a deck and shower. And I want to live in a place like that, Stephen. I don't want to just rent it. You want to live in a place like that with me? Just run off, <laughs> live, live in a tree house in the rainforest, forget civilization. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Put it all. Oh, this is gonna this is a drama right now. This is part what part is it for <laughs> Team Evil? Some of some of the Team Evil wives are are either locking themselves in the bathroom right now and they're listening in and their husbands <laughs> are angrily outside the door banging, Hey, what are you doing in there? What are you listening to? What you listening to that guy again and with that who is that? Kali, Kali and uh, Stephen are getting freaky on Friday night. <laughs> and they're listening and they're turning the volume down. They're just, shh, gotta be quiet. You know, they, they're sneaking, listening to, <laughs> to help you have I hope we're not making our chat uh, uncomfortable. I don't want to neglect them, you know. <laughs> oh, no. I think, I, think, I think the people here, I think we have a good group here right now in the chat. They, uh, we got they Inga. She's group. always your biggest supporter. Always here, Manny. Inga's a big supporter. Weird, Weird Wednesday. Wednesday Weird Wednesday is also a good supporter of yours. For someone that's new, yeah, she's pretty good, I think. Weird we Wednesday is sassy. Yeah, she's a little bit sassy. She mentioned spiky heels. Just uh, I scrolled up a little bit. <laughs> the spiky heels. It better be sharp. <laughs> Red bottom too, blood, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, she's evil. Kali's the real Kali. She's gonna destroy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fucking destroy your shit and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's Do I so sound funny. serious? Do I sound dangerous? I think they probably will think you're dangerous. Are they gonna put put a report on me? I don't know. Maybe Trash Luna and Mushroom will will be watching this and shivering, and then holding each other, <laughs> making out. I don't know what they're doing, but I mean that. I think both of them might have a little bit of confusion going on with them, with <laughs> with who they are. Uh, I don't. I don't know if Trash Luna Tracy understands what she is, but um, Kai Mushroom is is quite a character. Quite a little character. <laughs> quite, quite a little character. I don't know how Kai yeah. gets away with showing their bare chest on these videos on yeah, their nobody, channel. Nobody needs to see that. No, nobody needs cover to see it, that. Cover it, Kai. Please you know, cover if a real it. woman does that, they, they <laughs> would be kicked off of YouTube. YouTube would Definitely. say nudity, pornography. They, yeah. But how does she, how does Kai get away with that then? Like they must have different rules, you know. So Umi, Un, Uni said that uh, she would also want to live like that. Oh, I, I'm definitely with you. We should all just live in this like paradise, like rainforest. Yeah. In this I lifetime, it would be really nice, you know. Mm-hmm. It would be. I've seen some places in rainforest that you can. At least rental places. I don't know how many are for sale, but you could have one built place built. Yeah, you could do is things with like sustainable. Like I have been looking into that. Like live sustainable, or even. I mean, there is. Have you heard about like you can buy like those uh, mini houses, like these sustainable. Yeah, those like, little tiny. But houses. those, I don't know. I mean, that just seems a little bit depressing. 
mm, like living yeah. like this little but it'd be nice to even just have like a little like a rainforest i mean even living in the the rainforest if you wanted to live we're not built because we're now so programmed living uh in like the city and just even if you're living like they say off grid you're still using your phone and you're still living in like a like a home and you know you're not just living there with the animals and because it's brutal out there animals and if you're living literally in the woods right there's bugs there's all kinds of things you know so mm -hmm. and that's how these people the imaginary they're like oh we need to go and just uh live in the woods and like and they have no idea right exactly how it is mm -hmm. for survival yeah even people like here. meat puppet and stuff they can't do it they has to live off his car he yeah. cannot survive if he was thrown in the woods on his own he can't even survive living in his truck with people doing like a real man who would use that, his you know? instinct and logical skills to navigate his way out even at his like worst you know when he's falling down and he yeah. picks himself up that's a like a real masculine man you know like even in like boxing they this like he just gets that one big, they just they give it their all. Like men have that, women don't. Men don't give up. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I mean, I gave him some great advice I shouldn't have because he's just a complete crybaby, spoiled, narcissistic bum that's entitled. But I mean, he should be working to get himself out of that. Do you know how much money he could save without paying rent? And if he had a job? And all of the money was, uh, except for gas for his truck, all of the money would just be spent saving up on uh, spending on food, but also saving up and get like a little Coleman camper stove, which is what people do when they're camping or if they living out of a vehicle. So he doesn't spend tons of money on fast food and buy his food to cook and just freaking don't be lazy. Cook your food, work at a job for so many months. He could save up tons of money. Even if he was only making, he, he snuffs at it like it's nothing, but scoffs at it. If it was $20 an hour at Home Depot or something, he, he just doesn't want to work a job where he has to stand up. So does he get money for like disability, kind of like that? Because his. I don't think he's get this. I don't think he's on disability. I think he just gets money from uh, his don't his uh, people donating on his channel. Does he even get much. that much? I feel like he, he barely has any people watch her i didn't know uh i don't know how much he gets exactly but one person did donate a thousand dollars so i don't know if he's getting regular donations or how much is coming in but he was as far as i know he wasn't getting any money from the government he just you're talking about meat puppet right yeah meat puppet yeah, yeah. he just lost his job mm -hmm. and he, he never looked for any jobs other than super high paying jobs that's why he didn't get another job and then he let himself get kicked out of his apartment because he didn't pay his rent. That's the story I heard. But he's been homeless multiple times now. He was homeless like a year ago for two years. So he's homeless again, not for the first time. He was homeless before this in Florida in 2022, I think, in 2023, something like that. It was around a little, uh, maybe a year and a half ago. So he's been homeless before. So he's done this before. He should be a pro at it, but he's just bitching and complaining and he feels entitled to getting a job 50 to $75 an hour. That's just crazy. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of men out there like that. He's just one of them, you know. He follows like that crazy I that uh, Indian woman <laughs> that... Um, isn't she like a oh, psychiatrist? Yeah. yeah She's yeah. scary. She looks like a zombie. Yeah, she is scary. Dr. Romani, I think her name yeah, is. Yeah, she was like, a, you know, I don't that. have, I pay for YouTube, so I hate ads. Mm -hmm. And when I, so this was before COVID when I, you know, I was like, I'm just done with uh, these ads because she would be one of them uh. just coming on. I don't. So I was she's like, buying ads. That's how like, she's growing her channel. Mm -hmm. She's like on those ads, like, yeah. Oh. So it's really good to pay, annoying. you know, not to have those ads because they're so annoying. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah, I've got YouTube Premium as well. I pay so I don't Same. Get ads, I've had it for I years and I love it. I just didn't realize she paid for ads. That's how she's gotten so many people joining her. And there's this other truth. There are a lot of, uh, I think you even talked about him, but uh, maybe somebody in the chat can remember if they, this is years ago, but this wimpy ass guy, like truth of community, that his ads would come also a lot. Very like positivity, happy, you know, just that. There was like that big, you know, during pandemic, that big hit and, you know, with this kind of crazy, this community, how it's gone, you know? Yeah. And you yeah. said you've, you've known about it since probably like nineties maybe. So, but like during that time, do you think there was like a big, like how it was now, the craziness that this is like a vast number of comparison, if you had to say, what would you say? Oh, it's changed a lot over the years, even in the last four or five, seven years, it's changed a tremendous amount. Dr. Romani has 1.63 million subscribers. It's showing. Fuck, she's banking. Oh, yeah. What the she fuck? Like, make, people like her support. make money. It's just, I hate this fucking world. Like, it's unfair. Like, how did that, this bitch get so much? <laughs> I'm going to look yeah. like, oh, she's jealous. This jealous Indian woman, jealous of another, you know. That's what Meat Puppet would say. I don't yeah, give a he, shit. He probably would she's, say that. She's um, haunting looking. She is. Uh, she also has on her channel that you can't use her videos. So I can't record from her. She'll just report saying they're all copyrighted and that there's no, you're not allowed in her description. She blocked you? No, she just says in her description, you, you're not allowed to share her content or record. Oh, she has it. So um, if I tried it right now, if I tried it, it my would put like would a flag yeah. down mm. temporarily, you know, they, they, she has it copyrighted. So. She doesn't want anybody analyzing her, basically, using her content to do an analysis of her. She can't take it, any criticism. So you can't take a clip of her video or anything like that? No, and I couldn't just go over there right now on her channel and start recording, or which I do sometimes on certain channels. Um, she is, is the favorite... Uh, psychiatrist or psychologist with narcissism of let's see now Tracy or uh, Trash Luna Mushroom Kai Keith Creepy Keith uh, Charles who else it, it's Derek uh, Little D there's a whole list of them that they, that's their favorite and a lot of them have eyes like hers like Charles has those bugged out San Paku eyes Pretty crazy. It is because there's a lot of channels that cover narcissism, and I see all of these Team Evil channels. They always use her videos, and she makes and us always... Indians look bad. Because for me, even though when I don't know, you you're familiar with Deepak Chopra, right? Yes, yes. And he came out. I think he was big, like early two thousands, maybe nineties, late nineties. And you know, I'm Indian, and my dad, he just loved. He loved reading stuff, finding men, you know. But then he, he was skeptical about Deepak Chopra. He was like, he's a scammer. I don't trust this dude, my dad would say, you know. And he was right, you know. Yeah. Like, he's yeah, just he like a, right. all these freaking Indians who come, like, have so many, like, like they make me, they're just all, like, a very lefty, soy, just, they make Indians basically look bad, you know. Yeah, I always thought he was a scammer, and I, I noticed years ago that he was kind of connected with Oprah and that whole group of the billionaires and the ones with TV shows, Deepak Chopra, and uh, what, what's what's that other little guy, um, Eckhart Tolle? Oh, Eckhart Tolle, shit, the little, the little submissive little man. Yeah, <laughs> feminine little guy that just seems, he's so weird, so soft. Such a weird little man. He was on Oprah, I remember, many years ago, a long time ago. He was big. I mean, he hit it big. It, it was weird, his story, even with his voice, like the show on, on television. 
you know, his story, how deep it was. And they put like this music, like he was in this room and he, he was wanting to like kill himself. Yeah. But he got like an awakening. He started hearing the birds. He started. <laughs> <laughs> he, he even said, I think he said at one point he was sleeping on a uh, park bench or a bench outdoors and he was homeless and he was mm. just sleeping on a bench. Just spending he, hours and hours just like zoning just with his eyes. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck was he doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's out of it. He's really And then Oprah got creature. him on the show. That has to be Oprah. <laughs> she got him on the show. Big the Oprah tears. made him, yeah. you know. Oprah's another fucking puppet. She's a clown. Will it turn yeah. down your thing if I said that? What? Uh, About Oprah. No, we can call Oprah a clown. She sold out for clown. getting those billions mm -hmm. of dollars. Uh, and owning, how much of that one Hawaiian island does she own? It's like a so mm -hmm. many thousands of acres, I think. It's just a huge amount of land yeah. she has. And she, you know, she also, I, I don't know if I told you, but she also had an all-girls school in South Africa. I think it was during oh, the 90s yeah, or 2000s. Yeah, I remember that. And there and was she, abuse. And yeah, there was a lot of cases where those girls were, I would say, 90%. I mean, you can Google it, but it was a big case. Oh, and they kind of just, like, brushed it off under the table, you know. But there was a lot of abuse. And uh, that school was probably just for, like, a maybe a pedophile like ring or something like that you know did sorry she if name I said it that after word. herself i'm sorry did oprah name it after herself their school mm, i should google it forgot you do, do you want to check i'm curious but if you're not i mean i'm wondering yeah. what she called that school I, I did google it one she has is oprah winfrey leadership academy in south africa uh what is it again Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy in South Africa. And South when did Africa. it um, created? When was it? Uh, just a sec. Oprah's Leadership Academy for Girls Academy. For girls. Let's see when it was created. Founded January in 2007. Oh, 2007. Yeah. Okay. And I guess they started off with 322 students, boarding school. It was a boarding school. Mm, yeah. So the girls stayed there. Yeah. It wasn't just school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, boarding school. So that's why they had access to them day and night. It mm -hmm. wouldn't just be access in a classroom. And Great. they call it like a leadership. So it's like they're helping all like these poor girls in Africa, you know, who come from these and give uh, girls a chance, you know, boys, we don't need to give them, but let's give girls leadership, you know. Oprah would probably Go get say, them well, in an education. It's the girls that are oppressed only. It was like a big deal in, in Africa when she was doing that and just how they kind of like glamorized it and then, you know. And she's still are fucking around. Like, why are people still even like watching this, this bitch? Like, it's just going crazy. Oh, this badass this society bitch. is. I know. <laughs> Cause she's, you know, she's African American. She follows all this fucking. She's, you know, she's the forerunner. She's like licking their asses. Yes, I just want more. This. She's so greedy, you know. Mm -hmm. They're probably so unhappy and just so miserable. Nothing inside. would make her happy at this point because she has billions of dollars and she's a miserable witch. So nothing, what, what nothing will make her move? happy. Yeah. You know, it just, it, that's the way I look at it. It's showing faculty 33. Like, I mean, come on, what are the odds of that? 33 for the faculty. A yeah. Free Masonic and number. the thing I is mean, to live uh, you, like you're li like lavish and stuff after just knowing that you did this to like little girls and like, you allowed other people, which to me is just like the most, I, I don't even know how you could like live with yourself like that, you know, if she really did, if the, the story does say it's true, I mean, I believe it, you know. Yeah. 
and all the celebrities being obsessed with Africa, you know, even adopting these kids like um, Madonna, she's a freak. And she adopted these kids like from Malawi. And um, Malawi is such a like a very like a humble, very, it's almost it's like primitive. Have you ever heard about it? Uh, not too much, no. So that's the thing. A lot of people don't know about it, which is actually a good thing in this this world or whatever this planet we whatever we whatever we live in like it's just a place it's kind of like a little island very it's like a little paradise green and the people live like there are people who still live like in huts very primitive and they there's no like gay people and stuff very pe humble people you know and they have really rich farming and stuff where they all do make it from se several of their own generations, African generations, you know. It's actually a very beautiful place, I think. But Madonna went there and just took, adopted a kid. And now I think the kid is probably like, probably like Kai. Probably change gender oh, and all this no. stuff. Yeah, that's what these celebrities do. That's what um, Even Charlize the Charlize Theron, Theron like. her kid is also like that. I think she has, she had two, I think she adopted a couple of boys from African countries and now they're both dressed, They she's dressing yeah. them like girls. And this is not African cult, like culture, like for them to be around, like being around, it's very unusual. Even for like Charlize Theron, she said she grew up in South Africa. When she was growing up, she probably didn't even, if she did grow up, if the story is true, she probably even South Africa was a bit more modern back in the 80s and 90s. There were many gay people in South Africa during that time. Or even if they were, they had to stay quiet. So you she know. has two, two adopted black boys from Africa. And what are the odds that they both turn out where they are supposedly both um, confused about their gender? We'll put it that way. I mean, this is just incredible. It's It's so obvious to me that it's, the These are the Nepo, the Nepo kids, the the Alpha, are the Alpha generation below what, uh, what's Gen, the Z. Alpha? Gen yeah, Z. Yeah, but that's below Gen Z, because Gen Z are even getting older now. So now the Alpha are coming. <laughs> They're the going to be the monsters. These don't I mean, look the Gen Zs are already. They look, they look more. They look more beta soy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel sorry for these kids. I'm not mocking them because their mother. Yeah, I know. I, sh I don't mean to be laughing, but I'm laughing. I'm just like this. This yeah. this place is crazy. Steve. This is well, a we wild can, ride. We, we can laugh at this place. I I, I just, we're living I just in just clarify. crazy existence. If you think about it, this ride of just this madness and just like it's just this it's cringe. It's just comic. <laughs> it's, I don't even know what to think about it. <laughs> It, you know, <laughs> it's, the, it's like a warp twisted nightmare that doesn't, it's just all over the place. This place mm -hmm. that we're in. I mean, look, at, I, I never would have thought when I was growing up that somebody from Hollywood, like 30, 40 years, whatever years ago, is somebody would like this would be adopting two black kids and then dressing them as boys in these little skirts or dresses like this. Me too. I, I never thought like we would live like in that. Like, like men would actually be wearing skirts and just, that's just freaking weird, you know. She has her son in a pink ballerina outfit and people think this is okay. Yeah. They don't question her. They don't say what's wrong with her. Is she mental? Yeah. I mean, what the hell? Is there any chance, does anyone look at this and say that they would have been doing this if they would have been left in Africa and not adopted by her? Is there anybody that thinks that these kids would do this on their own? Like to me, it's no, so obvious. That's that it, putting a man in a skirt is de like demeaning his his masculinity. You're making him like a small, like a like a, a woman. You know, basically. Yeah. Forcing. Even it. though it's Forcing. just a dress code, it just he also feels. I just don't even know how a man could even just. Unless he's wearing a kilt, but if it's if he could pull it off, there's very few straight men who can. But you but can't yeah. be a little soy boy to wear a kilt like a Scottish kilt. You can't be a scrawny little 
soy boy. You have to be a But most of these man. soy boys uh, are wearing it. They yeah. they have this illusion in their head. I, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but they also have like these serious like body dysmorphia and like um, also, you know, they constantly uh, face tuning their faces on things on Instagram and stuff. So they just constantly just staring at themselves, you know. That's why they just love showing themselves on camera too. It's just that narcissistic, you know. Wow. They stare at themselves on Instagram. <laughs> Pretty narcissistic. Wow, that's Those, weird. I mean, I know they're going to freaking hate me for saying, but the, most of them are. They're very yeah. shallow narcissistic. They say that I am no. I don't show myself on camera and then show my fucking like cleavage and shit like that. <laughs> yeah they're they're always looking at themselves That's none so of the strange. harem wives do any of that behavior or any men too i mean but yet they'll call us the freaky the freaky ones yeah they're the freaks uh i remember when i was growing up one of my sisters had a narcissistic friend well each of them had at least one out of their friend group that was a narcissistic girl like a, in their teenage years and i could tell that yeah they're probably somebody like a girl that stares at themselves in the mirror all the time but it wasn't guys doing that back then i didn't know any guys that were really like that that were just the way that so many are these days it's gotten more extreme with lots of girls and then and then the guys are doing it too it's it's really yeah, weird it's very very weird so this um, alpha generation would be just the way they even look. They, they, they look like a total meme, like their hairstyle. They have that broccoli cut. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, alpha, alpha broccoli cut. Yeah, just put alpha. broccoli. It's like a meme. They all dress like that. So if you see a bunch of like, like I pay attention to like age groups and how oh they dress and gosh. stuff. No, I see. So a lot of these like, 15, 16, 17 year olds, they have like a broccoli cut hair. It's, and they're having perms done, these these boys, because they want that that look almost like it's like a chia seed. You know the chia? <laughs> 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 there's a, oh, I'm telling you, there's awful. like, stupid. <laughs> there's a bunch of them like that. You can't even, it's weird. It's oh weird. Oh my gosh. Broccoli haircut styles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, Look so at how weird. much Google pulled up. People are going to think I'm crazy, but this is a thing. <laughs> wow. This is crazy. Broccoli haircut. They I'm glad I educated some that. people today about our crazy fucking clown reality. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Wow. They think that looks good. And they do they think that's masculine to have this broccoli? They go pop? have perms for this. Is can you go they sit in a salon? Oh god. Yeah. Perm is so feminine. Like what 13, 14 year old and some mom is letting her kid do that to their hair. I would never let my kid do that, you know. I if I were a father, I would say, you know what, that's feminine. You don't want a perm. You don't want a perm. That's what girls do. I would tell them when I was growing up, only girls would go and get a perm. And usually they got a perm if they had fucked up hair and they had to do something yeah. with it. Actually, my dad did tell me some things like, this is what men do and women do this. And there was nothing wrong for my dad to say that, you know? No, it was very odd. So honest. I grew up like that. Like even when we went to like religious events and stuff, the women ate together and they're more mothers. So they're taking care of each other's families, the kids and everything while the men are just like left alone and to talk about business and money, you know, they leave them alone, mm -hmm. which I feel yeah. like there's nothing wrong with that. You know? No. What, like what, why do people see something wrong? And with then that? if there the was problem? a woman was trying to join in with those guys, it would be super weird. Like, my dad will be even like, what are you doing here? Like, you know, so. Yeah. 
Well, it would be weird to me if, if, if my sister or women, some women or girlfriend were having some baby shower, some women's thing where it's all women, I wouldn't want to join in. I wouldn't say, hey, can I join in with your all women thing? I wouldn't want to do that. It would be weird. Like I wouldn't want to be, I'd want to be somewhere else doing something else away from there. I wouldn't want to be surrounded by that estrogen and, and, in a, and an all girls or all women type of thing. I mean, they Hello just don't, Wendy. it's less than, hey, Wendy, how are I you? I didn't realize that she joined. Uh, Wendy's here. John O'Keefe is here. Hi to Marcella. John. Marcella. Hi to Marcella. Uh, Inga's here. Uni, hi to Uni. Uni says that that's sexy. The broccoli that's sexy. Cut? Is that what she means? <laughs> is she it is kind of cute. I think, I mean, I could see they are I mean, kids are cute, you know. I just feel like they're innocent and they're just trying to be, you know. I've talked to a lot of kids and they do, they like how you mean you're talking. I could have like a conversation about after, like they do think some of them, you know. I feel like sometimes the older generations are the ones who are not very in tune, you know. Some of the younger boys, though, might get a crush on you, might want to talk to you because you're. You're oh yeah, I know a lot. One wants to design like a, like a t like a tie dye like cam camino for me. <laughs> He's oh. cute though. Oh. But I mean, I love kids, and that's what this world is. That their, their energy is so pure and um, innocent, but it's also very real. Even like kids when they're babies and stuff, you know, they don't want a picture, and they're even making faces because. They don't, they know it's bullshit. Like, why make this face, you know, like for what, you know, I want to mm -hmm. go play and that free, you know, just that free spirit. I don't, you know, but then the parents start molding them. No, you got to take a picture. I, I need to remember it on your, your senior day. Like you, you got, I want to remember this when that portrait is probably going to be probably like under the shelf with dust or lost somewhere on the internet. Lost in space. Yeah. I, I, I recall family members saying to their children, no, that's not a real smile. Smile a real smile. You're making a face. You, and they make them sit there for pictures, like not even at a, like just a. So there's no even smile or anything. Like I have family members in Indians. They don't smile. So no. I think they just, it's a serious dead, like face, just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you look at pictures in from people from the eights, I would say eighties, nineties, even it's like that dead, it's like that glass, what would you say? Unfazed kind of face. But nowadays oh, people don't have that face anymore. A face that's like a, in stone maybe? Mm-hmm. But oh. not like a depressed way. But now I think they do make those serious faces, which is the haunting face, which is a look for like models. <laughs> so they're not smiling. They're making they that look. Are in their cheeks or something? Mm -hmm. and then, like, the jaws are face. just like, yeah, that's like an in thing, you know, like a look to get a lot of like likes. Like they're socials. giving that Vogue look, that Vogue model, mm -hmm. fashion model something. <laughs> Wendy said, wonderful to hear you, Callie, wife number one love with steven or king steven with the crown thanks for having me i didn't just disappear completely i did miss everyone we did miss you as well every we there were quite a few times people said that they missed they said oh i miss callie to me there was a few people and i said yes i miss her too i i miss hearing her say king steven or steven and time chatting with <laughs> me on the on the show and just hearing from you, um, I, I was confused about what Uni found sexy. She said that it's the men and women can be at a party and men talk business. That's sexy. She finds that is sexy. She finds that sexy. It wasn't the the chia haircut, the chia. Because pack. a lot of men, when they can do good business with each, like I, I lived in that and for where my dad knew people that he uh, did business with and worked with. So it was just quite casual to um, socialize. It's kind of like a bonding. Like we even have a, like it's it's called a cricket club. The Indian guys hang out, 
and um, there's like a cook there. He's a he's a big head cook, very masculine Indian guy, and he's cooking like chicken and everything, the barbecue, and it's just men out there drinking beer. You know, no women there, and it's like a little oh, bar for them. Really, no. And they hang out. They hang out there after work. You know, so. Sometimes men can get let their guard down. It's not that they're bashing women, but they don't have to worry about saying certain language where a woman might say, hey, you can't say that anymore. That's whatever, like guarding. You don't have to guard yourself kind of thing. But yeah, I think it's also masculine. I love to grill food, grilled chicken, grilled meat, steaks, yeah. uh, burgers, chicken, uh, ribs, even side vegetables like wrapped up potato. and Yeah. Yeah, wrap it up and stuff like that or even like fish um you could put like a whole fish on the grill and wrap it up and and make it that way and um there's something about grilling like cooking with fire Gr grilling food mm -hmm. me too. i love that kind of food yeah yeah me too i love it so yeah that's making me hungry i mean yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have like a place like i was saying like the club in in zambia where there are these indian men who do hang out mm -hmm. and I feel like they do. I think it's a good thing. Like if men had more of that, you know, well, and now I think I it's on the internet that. during the panels, people, men. So you don't even really, to me, it's just very disconnected and women the, too. The I'm not just saying men, just like but also feminine. women. I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You say, uh, I was just saying the, the panels of men, it's very feminine. It's like gossipy. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not like men hanging out grilling food and having I mean they also them. it can be with men I mean it depends because men can be dogs so they maybe somebody's cheating and stuff this drama with that I mean there was I grew up with that too you know so are the men talking about cheating at these events like at these clubs or? some of them like cheating or doing some kind of stuff that was like yeah I'm not a cheater I would look down on a man like that I would like I I would say men. But I'm just saying like the that. society is very dysfunctional, no matter from my experience where you go, maybe the afterlife, but in my experience in this, this plane, wherever we live, exists, it just, I mean, I grew up with it and I re do respect men. I love men, you know. I wish more men would just be more, people would talk about men more because now everyone just, it's progressed where everything's about woman, woman's body, woman's this, you know, Women's like a real masculine body, just dashing. drawing, like drawing yeah. more images of masculine men, talking more about masculinity, strong masculinity, just keep talking about that. Everything is just so sissy, even men. It's just, it's just so like, I'm just sick and tired of it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm I'm tired of it being about ass, Kardashian ass, all this. Yeah, they, they, they should be talking about masculine men, what they have done, what they've provided, and how much they're needed, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Not I men wearing, getting gay or trying to, like really putting their foot down. Stuff. And also at women, like, no, they're the ones who play the, the rules. They're going to make the rules and the women will have to follow. Yeah, it's time for men to put their put the foot. But down. I don't think it's too late. With I hope you think the Gen Alpha is gonna save humanity. They're gonna uh, have. <laughs> I wouldn't count on the broccoli hair haircut. The bro <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't care. They, count on the, the way they dress too. Are they like the cartoon characters because they dress in very oversized um, pants and like t-shirts. So it's almost like it's rolling off the floor, like they're clothes, but, <laughs> but they kind of look cute. You know, like those dogs who have like the wrinkles. Yeah. But they're so cute. Oh, they're it's all kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. They almost look like a wrinkle. Cause they have like the something. broccoli cut and they're Ruffled like little, up. and they, the way their character, you know, the way they're walking little, the kids, you know, <laughs> kids are cute. They yeah, really are. They are. But, you know, all the masculine spaces, the clubs, um, like you said about the cricket club and the men, we used to have that. Like my parents would have had that, that their generation. But it was mm -hmm. all going away by the, I would say the 80s Same and 90s. my parents, yeah. It was all going away here because girls and women were 
feminists were filing lawsuits saying it can't be men only. You can't have a men only school. You can't have a men only gentleman's club, a smoking club, a cigar club, a this or that. You have to let women in to play golf. You have to let them in to play hockey, soccer, football. They had to let girls on every boy's team. Yeah. Starting in the 80s, I think, in Canada. It goes far back. It didn't Same. just start. So, I mean, I think it's a good thing, stuff. like uh, bonding with men and just talking about things that they some things you just cannot talk with a woman about what you'll be able to talk to a man, you know, that's just the it, way it is. Exactly. And that's why I say when, when these people these days, like mushroom say, Oh, that men shouldn't be in women's spaces. Well, women and girls and women already took all the men's spaces in this country over the decades. They're gone. There is nowhere like they can have female reporters in men's teams, uh, in any sport, not just professional, but they can come into the locker room with men. A man can't just walk into a women's locker room with naked women getting changed uh, for a team. I mean, it's it's that's the way it is. There's nowhere yeah. left. It just There's should be reversed now. It should be the other way around. If you really did want to change, putting more masculine people on the forefront, putting them, you know. But I well, don't even know if that would they would do that. This place, this a, or whatever, it's a feminine. It's a she's a beast, you know. She's just she's just always gonna be unhappy. This place is just always gonna be like that. That's how I look at it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's excited in the chat, by the way. Marcella said, wonderful Callie and King Stephen <laughs> arts. Uh when hopefully said, I'm giving what? them a good they're listening and I don't want to be talking and they're bored with it. No, you know? no, no, they're not bored. Not at all. Wendy said, wife number three in the chat, wife number one live equals heavenly. Um, everybody's enjoying this. Manny said, it's the Callie and Steven show. Manny's here right now. Uh, Wendy said, yum, fire cooked meat. I think you would, you, you and Callie would enjoy my yummy, juicy fire cooked meat. That sounds amazing. I love to grill meat. Um, I grew up, I knew, I've known how to do that since I was a boy. I knew how to build fire. I love to like grill campfire. meat and stuff with friends and people that, you know, outside on a barbecue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's the best. You get a good mm -hmm. appetite, fresh air, and it just tastes delicious that way. Fire, fire yeah. grilled meat is, still, is so good. But I remember as a kid, I would build bonfires, campfires. We'd have campfires. Mm -hmm at night at our cottage and at our grandparents' cottage. Yeah. We had an outdoor fireplace at our cottage. Once we, we bought our cottage, I think my parents bought a cottage when I was around age six or seven. Before then, okay. we were at our grandparents, so. But yeah, they had an outdoor Yeah, back then, kids, too. you would do a lot of things, you know. I used to play oh, yeah. badminton with my friends. Badminton? Mm-hmm. And then I also played carom. Oh, what's It's like carom? a board game. It's a board game. Carom. A board game? Mm -hmm. How do you spell it's it? I think it's C-A-R-E-M, if I'm not. Okay. Carom board. If you just put carom board. Board, okay. Oh, that it's looks like a lot little like circles. Crocono. That looks a lot like crocono. Similar. Oh, it's, what is that? Croco How do you say it again? Crocono. Crocono. Yeah, it's uh, it's also a board game with these discs. It, you have to flick them, but it sinks in at the center, mm -hmm. and it has posts around it. I'll I'll show it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, just a second. I'll, I'll put. But I played a lot of games. I played like um, um, you know, when you're going around the chairs. Musical chairs. Musical chairs. Yeah, I did that a lot. Yeah, I just did a lot of things with the neighbor kids, you know. Yeah, me too. We played. I'm not with their parents. We even ate at eat. their house. There were mm -hmm. a lot of, because uh, I'm from Gujarat, so my uh, neighbors they were from, um, they were Bengali. You know, Bengali people eat different food than us. So, I just had a different experience with all these different Indians. Yeah. Oh, and I'm wow. sure you did too with going to your neighbors. Mine was just different. But yeah. Oh, we, we I played carom at their houses. I was that freaking nerd in 
Indian freaking kid and going to their house. <laughs> so I didn't want to deal with my parents. So I'll just like go to them, you know, and sit and play with them, you know. So interesting. I am showing the carom board and then I'm going to show the crokinole board. Yeah, show me the crokinole. Crokinole board. Did you, uh, you know about it? Is it like a Canadian or? Uh, I'm not sure what country it's from, but my grandma had one. Yeah, it looks exactly it's the same thing. Huh? And it's got like, you shoot these discs. These little like discs, and they have nets suckers. on the corners. So this is how it works. And my grandmother mm -hmm. had one of these. I'd go over there and we'd play it, even when she same. was older. So, interesting. Yeah. And there's like a little indent in the center, and that's where you, it drops yeah. down and you get 20. And, uh, the coins or something like that? Yeah. Or yeah, like I I don't know if they call them discs, but they're like they almost look like checkers. And they're mm, wooden. Yeah. And um the last time I played it with my grandmother, I shot like three in a row that went right dropped into the 20, took it out, shot another one right into the 20, three in a row, and she just said, You have the magic touch. <laughs> and everything I was doing was just scoring big time. And, That's funny. And That's good used, memories. Yeah, and then uh, family came over and they said, "Oh, did you play Grandma with Crokinole?" And they said, "She's the Crokinole champion." And my grandma looked over at them and said, "He beat me." <laughs> they couldn't believe it because my grandma had played that for decades and she had a finger. Yeah, it was almost made for the it boards were point. really, really old, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and she said to them, "She beat me." <laughs> they That's funny. Believe. It was funny to me because nobody beat her. I think I might have been the first person to be here in her life. That's cute. Yeah. And she said he got three in a row, three twenties in a row. <laughs> Shot them right in. Oh my gosh. I had I was on fire that day, but uh yeah, we did have fun playing that. It was fun. Yeah, it's fun too. We played more. I feel like now the kids it's different. Maybe I feel like a lot of kids now. I grow up too quickly, maybe. Maybe that broccoli stage goes quick, you know, and then there. And they probably have a lot of uh, problems just being a kid in this insane insanity, you know. If they're trying to look like broccoli, I mean, they probably do. And, and their parents, I mean, <laughs> their parents, they might be having a lesbian couple. Oh, like, they're yeah. generally, like, for some lesbian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She just, the kid may be made, I'm sorry, the broccoli kid, but you may be made in a lab <laughs> by some freaking They want to look like dyke and some these... freaking weird ass, I, I don't even know. like Weirdo, vegan, lesbian moms or something, know. two mothers, exactly. or I don't know. And then the kid's like, well, I want, a, I want a haircut like broccoli or something. I don't know. It's crazy. Did, uh, did you hear like lesbian women? There's a lot like, a lot of them are like divorced or been through like a long uh, relationship with a man, maybe had a family and stuff. And then they completely turn and then turn lesbians. Yeah. Have you heard of those? Yeah, they flip. They, 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 they flip. flip huh? Yeah. And then they find somebody like a, because she's always had that female role, right? She's been the wife and the mother, if she, you know, but when she's in a lesbian relationship, she's the female role, and then she finds a dyke, right? Yeah. That's like her yeah. type. Then they go, they, they go scissors action. To just scissor <laughs> each other. Or they freaking get the, I mean... Strap on dildo or something. Strap on. Or do you think they even have surgery to put some kind of like transplant? <laughs> <laughs> they might. Shit. I don't, oh I don't know. I mean, how do these they people are freaks? Sex? I would not be surprised if they put like a like a penis, maybe even from. I know this is morbid, but maybe from a dead body. Oh my gosh! And they that's stitched crazy. it up. Crazy. Oh or maybe God, a that's horn. Morbid. Why am they I even, even have, saying this? Steven? They might even have. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I don't know, but you know how they like to do these body mods and they have like the horns, some of these creatures mm -hmm. that their whole bodies tattooed, they tattooed their eyeballs. Well, maybe some of these lesbians get like a horn implanted between mm -hmm. like maybe above their vagina or something and they can ram their at any time. Maybe they have, I don't know, maybe they have some weird thing where they can. I don't know what they do, but they, 
I mean, w would they just be satisfied just with oral sex with each other, these these dykes? Or would they I don't mean... know. They just look scary and hard to me. The, the energy is always like, like don't, don't mess with I just, dark. yeah, lesbians scare me. I would prefer actually a gay dude over a lesbian. If I had to choose, they're both very crazy, but yeah. I could deal with a than a lesbian woman. Who do you think is more? For the lesbian one with me would be because I'm. I guess I'm feminine and they don't like it, you know, so they're haters. So would would what? But some lesbians would. Um, I bet some lesbians want to like try to convert you into. Oh, oh, yeah, there's those two, yeah. The ones that, you know, they, they think they can get a straight woman. Yeah, I've had fans. Be <laughs> They'd be like, oh, I want to uh, wax you or something or mm -hmm. convert yeah. you to, uh, to yeah. the cult. Oh, yeah, there's that too. The dykes, actually, they like me. Oh. Weird Wednesday said, I think both are dangerous. You think both the, are dangerous, yeah. The uh, the sissy males and the Leslie Beans are both dangerous. So if uh, somebody transitioned, if they were born um, female and then they transitioned to male, um, can they get a vasectomy? They were born female. Well, they yeah, they'd and have then a they uterus, got they'd have you know they'd have a uterus, they'd have vagina, they'd have fallopian tubes and the ovaries. So um, they they cannot have a vasectomy, right? Because they no, don't have it. No, no, they couldn't have a vasectomy because they don't have the uh, they don't have the balls. They don't have the testicles. But some of them do say that. I don't know they why. Say they get a vas vasectomy. Yeah. Really. It's well, weird, huh? weird. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking when when Kai Mushroom Kai was on that show, Bex's show, and I was like, well, like, how can how am I supposed to call someone male when I know that I saw a video of Mushroom Coyote saying, oh, somebody called. There was a video that on their channel saying, oh, this person called me a pussy for crying and on video, and then they Mushroom said. And I guess they're right because I, I am crying or I do cry and I do have a pussy. So I am a pussy. I remember there was a video like that with Mushroom saying something almost exactly like that. It might not be word for word, but close enough. And they kind of nitpick if I get one little detail wrong. But I don't have every video on YouTube memorized, obviously. But how am I supposed to look at someone as male when I know that they have a pussy, which means they haven't had any surgery bottom surgery between their legs they still have a uterus then they still have ovaries they still have periods like they're not a man like how how can i call someone a man that has periods or you know what i'm saying that if and if they don't take uh they're like in an imaginary doctors, world it's like how am i supposed they, to think that's really, a man yeah. I, you mm -hmm. know same how? i can't yeah just i can't do it i just can't do it because it's it's it goes against all that I know. I mean, he's, even as a little boy, if somebody said, oh, uh, Stephen, what do you think this person, they're not like you, they're born a girl, but uh, they, they say that they're a boy and and they, they have all the same things as, as a girl between their legs, I'd be like, well, then they're still a girl. I mean, I would have said that as a four-year-old. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just I'm just like, forget even now. about that. When I look at them, they look like a girl. Yeah, pretend you look to like be a, a girl. Guy, Stop pretending. Stop you know, it. Just with the little sparse little hair above the upper lip and a little bit on the chin, like a few little, few little hairs, like peach fuzz, is what I'm saying. It's like, it's like a 13 year old boy that just started to go through puberty. That's what it looks like. But it looks more. They look more feminine than even the 13 year old boy, even a quote pretty. Let's a pretty boy that isn't uh, the most masculine looking boy let's say a boy that's more unisex looking still looks more masculine and is more masculine than mushroom the shoulders are wider the skull's bigger i mean there's there's nothing about them that comes across as masculine or manly nothing the voice doesn't 
I mean, I'm not fooled by the voice. You can just tell it's created by um, injections or hormones or whatever they're taking. I mean, it's just, it seems fake. It's just, it's weird. It, it's, it's, it's not natural. So uh, Weird Wednesday said, do you mean a hysterectomy? Yeah, a hysterectomy would be if they had everything removed inside the womb, the ovaries, fallopian, all that taken out, basically pulled out of them would be a hysterectomy of a woman that would be transitioned. So do they do that? I think they do. Some do. Kai, a mushroom has not done that, but some of them do get that done. They have everything taken out from inside. That seems insane, man, to just everything. have yeah. all of your guts taken out That's like that. That's major like... surgery. That's major surgery. I would never be able, I would, I would just be traumatized from that. And that's I can't even inside. imagine. You know, then they would have surgery on the outside, the genitals, the vagina, torn to pieces, basically, to form that into a fake penis that doesn't even work, that they have to pump up. Because you can't just attach a penis to them. Like, like they're, what I'm saying is their genitals, after their, quote, surgery, or their, uh, what do they call it, transition bottom surgery, they don't work. Like uh, a woman, but how can you even feel like sensation? I mean, it all comes from the inside, like there's nerves and all kinds. Like, yeah. How can it's like you're patching up some kind of like weird? It just seems just freaking just it's mutilation. Crazy. It, it, mm -hmm. it, 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 that's what it is. It's like, um, and I think they're doing all these tests and stuff for like decades, and it just they've been doing a lot of like botched and just but then the doctors just say, Oh, it's they really are doing crazy shit to these people not knowing even the doctors probably don't even know what's they're doing they're just used as guinea pigs basically you know pumping them hormones Lit just taking out their freaking sexual like guts can you imagine like no that's just freaking like i can't imagine having like the, i can't even imagine like why, why how do you prepare yourself like how do you sit in the hospital man and they're gonna take that fuck it's like i would i was just like fuck no they sign paperwork they agree to it i mean they should be doing massive research before they decide to do something so drastic that you can't get back you can and never the thing is because back. of their choice they want me to worry about their issues and stuff i was like i don't have time to worry about your shit i'm worried about my shit mm -hmm. yours is like like i'm just like what the fuck like i don't have time for this just like when <laughs> um when beck said something about mushroom and i remember you said they need much more help therapy than we can ever help they, they need way yeah, more in this online can. community you cannot come here and and be so um what do you call like a victim and then try to have other people like you and also what you went through you shouldn't be saying that to the online you've been saying that to the online community you know yeah i mean they put it out there for mm -hmm. one thing they put all that out there it would it would be it's actually worse it's more extreme than if a woman went on youtube on a youtube channel of their own made videos saying you know i cheated on my husband i did this i was horrible i was scandalous i was a cheating hoe i was this that slept with the half the neighborhood put it all out there and that says, well, nobody can say anything about what I just told you. And they made like 10 videos about what a cheating horror wife they are and, and how they ruin their family. You can't, you, you can't put that shit on the internet and then hold up your hand and say, wait a second, nobody can comment on this. Nobody can say what they think or to be disgusted. That's what Kai's trying to do. Like she put that out there on her channel, all these videos. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to stop people from even having a reaction. And saying, well, you said you have a pussy in your pants. You're obviously not a guy. Why are you getting, why is Kai angry at me for saying yeah. you're misgendering? Like, what are you? I don't know what they are. I don't know what am I supposed, what am I supposed to say? They have the female parts between their legs inside and out of a woman. And very wishy-washy. Oh, I said it, I didn't. And then just, I mean, I just don't have time like, for they, that. They like, can, even yeah, listing. Like, even oh, I, with Bex, I was just like, she She was kind of like, I felt like she wasn't really listening to me. Like, she was just like, oh, she's trying to stay neutral. I mean, nothing against her. I just thought that she was just staying kind of. Yeah. 
on like, the fence. Oh, mushroom, you have strength. She said something <laughs> like that. And I was like, no, like we, that's the way you shouldn't be talking to him like this because that's just making high, uh, which what I'm saying is uh, resonating. Then he's putting like, oh, yeah, I am right. Like you can't do that. Yeah, you I know? agree. I agree. You can't pat someone but on the, the back. The thing was, Bex was not even listening. I guess I, uh, I did watch. I feel like a lot of people didn't really listen to what I said. Maybe it, and it's interesting to listen to it again. I was going to comment on your video because I was watching it. I was. I. I also like watched it twice before I comment on your. Oh, you saw that I did cover it. I did record mm -hmm. it, and I gave a bit of commentary. Where when so you re-listen to it, you can uh, see what like I said and how other people were reacting with that, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me laughing when Bex said that, oh, I think, Kai, you have strength. I started laughing. In yeah, the you did, yeah, yeah. I was making dinner, but I was away from my mic, but I started laughing when I heard that because it's like, what strength? What What is strong about what Kai was saying or doing? Like, or, what? where's the strength? Like, I would say strength is owning. If, if, if I fucked up or if I... Me, not even just fucked up. If I released information about myself and my personal life and this and that in videos, I would expect people to comment. I wouldn't be trying to control them from laughing, from reacting, from commenting, from commenting about it, from saying whatever. Because that, if you put it out there on the internet, if I made videos, if I made half hour long videos talking about embarrassing things or something, then you can't take it back. You're putting it out there. I'm not saying that everybody should be mocking the shit out of them, but I mean, it's, um, Wendy said they're obsessed with private parts. Yeah. That whole group is, it's not just mushroom. I agree. It, they all are. It seems like they're just obsessed with their genitals. And then Inga made a good, uh, comment here too saying Kai always goes on about how she has the right to be happy as if, uh, if as if it's other people's responsibility to make her happy. That's right. Cause it isn't our responsibility to make mushroom coyote happy how are we we're just people on the internet that live yeah far we're just away. people on the internet like why put so much of that emotion on us like it's so like we all struggling as it is each one of us why put that bullshit on us you know you made that choice we didn't for you so don't make us pay for your suffering it's not my response i'm sorry you're an adult and you made that choice and I've made choices in my life, which I'm also struggling, but I don't go out there and have burden other people, you know? Mm -hmm. And Kai's even like maturity is like calling me a demon and stuff, but I have never called uh, Kai demon or evil. Have you heard me say that? No, not at all. Not even close. So, I think you were very fair towards Mushroom and Bex. You were very fair and polite and... Yeah, even with Bex, I have, I mean, nothing, I enjoy some conversations, but just some things. And even like when, you know, she, I think there was something about your hairy chest. Um, there was this topic, I think some, uh, during that, it was in that video of yours. And then I think I, I think my phone died. And then Bex made a comment. She's like, oh, I don't know what it is. Maybe she... The harem wife left because of uh, Stephen's hairy, hairy chest because of, of their roles in their harem. Like, like she says stupid shit like that. That just makes me like. Yeah, she's trying to. Stir, I'm sorry, like trying to stir Bex it up. is. I know she this made me feel like totally just says random weird shit. Like even with that conversation, like stuff like that. That's like, why did she say that? You know. Trying to stir the pot, or she wants in the harem, maybe, or something. I don't know. I don't know. But she didn't have to say that, obviously. But then like we're not immature said, like that to like for me to just leave just because oh Steven's chest and now Kali's probably like I'm not dramatic like that. <laughs> no, not at not at all. I didn't. Think My phone died. That. Yeah, and it's just like oh maybe saying, she's gone now. She's died. playing. She's going back and forth. Oh and oh maybe she's like oh for phone died because that's what you said. She's like oh yeah you know I'm just like I don't. It's like it's like games, Steven. What the fuck. Yeah. You know, you know what? That's a good point. I think Sorry, that, I'm on one, and they're gonna like if Bex is listening. I mean, I do no, enjoy no, conversations. I, yeah, yeah, right just some things you, that she says. I'm just like she can even tell me she feels something that I said. You know, I just like to talk to straightforward people. You know, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I, I was going to say when you said it's it's like it's game it's a game. It is games. I think they I think there's a lot of people in this realm that treat not just the internet, YouTube, but life is like a game to them. They play games on people all the time. So I think it's like a natural, it's um, not natural, but for them, it's like And automatic. also to cause drama even. It is, yeah. it causes drama, that kind of energy, in my opinion, you know. They want drama. Mm -hmm. I, I said that to Beck. She, want, she wants to be a bleeding heart, but she does want drama. She likes having those yelling match shows. She likes the drama panels. She likes watching them. But her show was like that. Right after we left, it was um, Bullet Bowl and The Machine Lies and uh, just the, all yelling at each other. Whoever was there at the end of whatever that live stream, it was just yelling, just yelling once we were gone. I think you were off and then I was off and then it was just all yelling. Um, that's what goes on. Like uh, People that don't like that don't have a channel and accept it. People that do like it, they have a channel with that. It's that simple. If she didn't like it, she wouldn't have a channel with that. So obviously, obviously she likes it. It's the if it's it's akin to somebody that has all the money in the world. You can't blame money then if their driveway has three BMWs. They can't say, "Oh, I hate BMWs," because it's like, dude, you could buy any car you wanted. You keep buying BMWs. You obviously like them. You can't complain. So she can't complain about drama on her channel because she she loves starting the drama she loves having people on toilet bowl and and people like that and, and snafu i mean i know she's staying a break i don't want to bring more but i just like those two things kind of got me on off a, a little bit like what and i didn't want to say anything or just you know i thought you'll just but then i'm just like tonight i was just like why not i don't know it just came out i was yeah. like that just like was bugging me a bit like why when I was I because I did watch your video it. and I was gonna watch it the third time before I comment so didn't so I don't make the wrong you know because sometimes when you listen again sometimes you can even hear things wrong or like I don't know yeah. what do you think I I do think she was kind of taking a shot at you right when you left when your phone died mm -hmm. you couldn't help but leave and then she took that opportunity once you couldn't even respond because you were no longer on the panel connected to take that shot at you like and at marcella which i kind of think yeah and at marcella. thing between you and marcella yeah she mentioned and i was just like yeah this is weird and and then also mushroom said something about the hairy chest of me said oh i don't want to picture that or ooh, gross or something it's like <laughs> yeah you can get away with that right but you're yeah like what if i said what i truly think about your chest mushroom it, like if i said what i think of that it, it it doesn't have a manly chest it has tits that are cut off and it has a bird's chest and it has to take hormones to even grow one or two little hairs around its nipples mm -hmm. that are female i mean that's the reality it has hairy a little few hairs around its female nipples and it has a little bird's caved in chest with the breasts removed that like you that thing is saying ooh about a, a man with natural body hair of like a men have hair you know men are not smooth shaven chest arms legs like women we're not like that so that thing's saying ooh, i don't want to visualize that and then saying i really don't it's like oh yeah well you're not a freak like what 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 are they talking about you know it's like it didn't get to me it's just it's me thinking that this world it's beyond mushroom it's the fact that this culture is so warped and there's such a double standard where they can get away with saying ooh to what's natural and butchering themselves. We're supposed to be like, oh, you're so strong and brave and applaud them and go, oh, my gosh, you're such a strong, brave, you know, independent creature for chopping, like getting your tits, your breasts surgically removed is an extreme thing unless it's a woman that, uh, you know, is going to perish from cancer has breast yeah, cancer. Yeah, I mean, that's different. I'm, I'm saying it's, that this that is... That is different, yeah. totally different, because it's it's like... A yeah, it's a life to, and death situation. Yeah, it's life and so. death. This is elective that where they're just making the choice, I want to get rid of these. I mean, that's... And that's, she will still uh, heal faster because she still has the feminine inside of her, her other organs and nerve. It's, it's different, you know, even though the breasts are removed, she still has the other, that... 
you know every yeah everything else is there so they had the breasts removed and they're on mm -hmm. hormones to change their voice and to grow a bit of body hair which is barely any so i don't know if they're still taking the hormones or if they it's just the result the after effects of taking the hormones because some can grow full beards after years like it a full a beard time, like a fairly a fairly close beard to a man but their shoulders will always be narrow like a woman's mm -hmm. they can work out they can try to build the what they call in bodybuilding the bolder shoulders they can take testosterone they can take steroids they can go above and beyond what the doctors give them they still won't look like a regular man's it's, frame. Yeah, they built. have like the sloped shoulders, not the... Sloped and, and too narrow. Yeah. The frame itself is not as wide as the man their height. The grandma. Whatever. You know when a grandma gets fat and all, she has like those sloped shoulders? Yeah, yeah. Granny shoulders. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, like, the back does like a lot of back fat, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Kai Mushroom is so skinny, very skinny, that they look... They don't even look like a little skinny boy. I mean, the, I did think they looked younger, but I think Bex was also treating Mushroom as though they were young. And it's like, well, they're over 30. I think they're close to 35. What age do you say that it's not a young person anymore and they have to own their decisions as an adult? Like, that's kind of what I was getting but, at. Too, uh, that. Kai's mental state is not like a 35-year-old. No, and the way they speak isn't, but their age like i mean to sign any legal documents it's not like they what i'm getting at it's not like they chose to do this as some of these trans kids that they're giving their parents are giving hormones when the kid's seven or ten or eleven or something mm -hmm. they were an adult when they started this shit they were over 21 i believe when they started anything doing this i think yeah but i, I what i'm I getting mean, yeah at i can like, say that uh, they're lured into it and you know yeah, but, but I mean, they say they could say that, but I mean, how many kids see the same types of advertisements and the same trans shit in schools? And there's millions of kids that don't do that. So they decided to do something. I'm, I'm not for these, the propaganda that's out there pushing this trans shit agenda. I'm not for it, but I don't give Kai Mushroom a pass, whatever her name is, uh, real name. She says it's Kai. I kind of, I don't know if I believe yeah. that. I just feel like there's other communities and coming on this kind of, and just, you know, coming and just attacking us for, you know, it's just, uh, it's just mind boggling to me. And then they say, well, he's old. He's from an older generation. He's this, he's that. <laughs> he doesn't understand. Yeah, I'm 88 years old. But I mean, when I grew up and it wasn't ancient times, there was no such thing as cisgender as a term ever being used. Mm -hmm. First time I heard that term used was probably like, I would say maybe only 10 years ago. Me too. Just a couple. I mean, I told you I wasn't right. around gape. Even when I'm going to zombie, it's going to be very rare to see a uh, gay. I mean, I'll let you guys know, but I'm not there yet. But I'll, I just didn't grow up with that. So it's very unusual for me, you know. Yeah. But I have worked with a lot of them since coming into America. So, and they're a lot like Kai. I'm just sorry. They're very emotional and they get triggered. I don't have like those kinds of gay friends. There's other really like amazing gay. They, they can make amazing friends, you know, through females, you know. I have some good gay friends. And who would totally have this conversation we're having right now. And, and like nod their heads at somebody like Kai. Like, they're also done with that bullshit. There are grown-up oh, really? gays out there who are, like, done with this, like, little boy, little girl bullshit. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I'll say this. Um, wait a second. Inga said about Kai, calling Kai strong. Calling Mushroom Kai Odi strong is like calling those female NATO soldiers strong for putting on a military uniform on International Women's Day. Where is the strength, the accomplishment? Yeah, exactly. I just posted the cis, the definition for um, cisgender in the chat Cist room. Cis is what to see, like it's, can you remind me? Uh, cisgender, it says, J 
gender denoting or relating to a person whose gender identity corresponds with the sex registered for them at birth, not transgender. So it's really a thing that transgender call people that aren't trans. We're supposedly cisgender. So sometimes. we're called cis? Yeah, we're called CIS. That sounds gender. nasty. Yeah, cis. It's weird, why would we call us cis? Why would, yeah, why would they call us cisgender? It's also and that's what sissy. Pilot's trying to do. That's and so I, crazy. And I think I brought it up in that chat at Bex's saying, I never even heard of that term most of my life. I never heard anybody say that ever about straight people being cisgender or people that are not trans. I said that. Yeah, Kai mentioned the cisgender part. And um, I want to say I don't have any gay friends, to my knowledge, unless they're in the closet. I don't <laughs> have any gay friends currently. Uh, I did know. I'm sure you'd get along with the, you know, the mature ones. Well, you could I, talk I, with anyone. Yeah, I can talk with just about anybody. I had a lesbian friend many years ago, like 20 plus, maybe 25 years ago, over 20 mm -hmm. years ago. And then at one point she said that, oh, Stephen, you're the only man that I, out of nowhere, she basically let on that she had a crush on me saying that she's not straight. But if she was going to sleep with a man, she said, y it would be you to me. <laughs> like and I was just like, oh, uh oh, you know what I mean? Like, is is she gonna try to switch teams, going from lesbian to yeah. trying to pursue me, or you know what's going on here? I thought she wasn't attracted to men. I thought she was just, you know, just a friend or whatever. Yeah. And I did have a girlfriend at the time that she said that too. Not my current girlfriend of long term, but this was twenty something years ago. I had a different. I was in. I was in another relationship with another woman. Mm -hmm. so. And she said that, and I was just like, uh-oh. You <laughs> know, that sounds like trouble. But And then there was a guy that was uh, somewhere that I worked, and was I didn't know he was gay at first, but then he was hanging around me all the time, and then I kind of, my gaydar went off, and I realized, oh, I think this guy's gay. He doesn't just want to be a friend. Like, he he has some attraction to me or something. <laughs> yeah, some kind of, yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, uh-oh. And then I started almost, not paranoid, but... It, I started to wonder if my best friend back then from high school was gay and he sat down too close to me one time. And I, really? I, I mean, you never the know. Couch and I was like, uh-oh. My girlfriend back then was like, oh, maybe your friend's gay. And I was starting to wonder how many gay people were <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? Has the whole world gone gay? What is I mean, this? back at, if even the music and stuff, like, there's a lot of things that you thought that they were straight, but then now they're gay. I mean... This place is full of illusionary. It could be true or it couldn't, but it, it is crazy. I know what you mean. Yeah, it is. Um, I have just know so many just being here, I guess. And like you should, you guys, I don't even know how I survived here. Like it's crazy with these people. Can you imagine like me being on a bunch of Kais and just like... <laughs> I'm knocking them over. I'm literally the Kali. I'm, I'm just like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine me working somewhere? Where I, like, as blunt as I, I would have to hold my tongue all the time or I'd get fired. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. I wouldn't be able to work somewhere like that or a city like that. Oh, you night. wouldn't. They I would wouldn't. be telling on you, the snitching. Be like, the, did you hear the joke that he made over lunch? And he yeah. said something about... I mean, just be, They'll be, be gossiping behind, like, just, you know, and playing victim, crying tears. I've seen them all fucking cry over, like, he's such a bully. Most, I know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wendy Actually, said, am I, oh, sorry, uh, go ahead. Oh, I just, uh, Wendy said, sis in Afrikaans, Afrikaans means yuck. So. I oh, yeah, sis is not like a good word, you know. It's like they so, put you in a corner and stuff, you know. Yeah, what were you going to say? Oh, yeah, so I was saying, like, my uh, co-worker, you know, her, she brought um, kimchi, you know, like, in the the lunchroom for the employees. Mm -hmm. And it has that strong smell, you know. So there's an older, like, boomer lady who works there. She entered the, the lunch break. She's like, oh, my God, what is that smell? <laughs> but she meant it like a, a good smell maybe but the Korean girl freaked out and started crying and got emotional about it 
and what? went to human resources. Oh no! Oh my god! And <laughs> and that woman, that boomer, got like a, a a written up, like a warning. Like if she ever says anything like that again, she's gonna be out. And she's worked at this place for like thirty years. Yeah. Oh wow! Can you, you imagine? Can comment on the smell in a in a break. And this room. Korean bitch has been. She's moved up to like management. She can barely speak English, but she she tries to act cute, you know, and just she doesn't even know what she's doing. She's a joke. Wow. It's just crazy. I need to like write a book or like just talk about I can't talk a lot, I guess, but I would love to. Everyone, Kai, everyone shit. <laughs> You could write a series. I don't know if Hollywood like is because it's so controlled, but like The Office, but it's not an office. It would be just the dynamics, the relationships, and what goes on with the gossiping and and the backstabbing and all the kind of things that go on. Um, oh, I was thinking of doing like parodies because you know I can, I like my coworkers. I just the body language, the way they dress, they. Like I have such an intentive, like I watch everything about them and it just makes me feel like I could do like a little parodies of them and reenact, almost like your, like your puppets, what you do, you know? Yeah. But have just like mimic them. That's the thing. Team evil doesn't get it, but that's art to me, you know? It you make art. art of your life to me. That is what, what you is the gift here you know that gives me it's not even about money it is for me like that it's kind of like justice you know because you go into sometimes things like this without knowing like what you getting into you know so Cali justice <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good though it really does i mean it's uh what i was i mean we really need too. to give people more love and just be more caring and loving with each other. That's all, like, really, I always thought when I was young, like, are we ever going to be just going to get along and just, uh, instead of just being against each other, you know? You and I, or who do you mean? Who do you mean no, just we? in general, in society, oh, in general how people, society is, yeah. Joke. We get along, yeah. but I mean, I don't yeah, think, no, in society, I'm just totally saying blunt. we're I so like I divide these you know. people. I don't. Um, the re I, I don't think I can because they don't accept me or, or me having a view of my own. So how can I embrace them pretending to be certain things when they won't al allow quote allow us to accept or allow us to have our own views, our different views? They can't accept it. They want to control what we say and think in our language. I don't think we can get along with people that want to control you that way. Yeah. You it's, know, it's like they cannot change, I guess. I don't think they will change. I think it's kind of like a marriage where one partner is very, like, not partner, whether it's a man or a woman, husband or wife, is super controlling. It's like you can pretend to get along to try to keep the peace, but do you really respect the person that's trying to control your life? When you said that you're very observant, I was thinking of um, how you said that Franny watches, really watches me like a hawk. And can you imagine? I could just I see him. Camp? Like <laughs> <laughs> he would, he would be watching me take every. I feel like he has a Coke big, girl. like nose, like a little parrot nose. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would be watching me like a hawk every sip of Coke Zero, and probably counting my sips and. How many sips is he taking of this live? You should, uh, you should just break a can on. Give him <laughs> you have a Coke Zero right now. Yeah, I got I actually have to get a refill just a second. That sounds so good. I wish I had some right now. I would totally take a sip right now of a cold, ice cold Coke Zero. It, it is I actually like those baby cans. Has anyone they're so cute and they're like perfect amount. I like ice cold cans sometimes. I think the baby cans came out with the broccoli heads, kids. What was that? 
I think maybe the baby cans of Coke, like the baby soda cans, might be for the broccoli haircut kids. Because they're so small. That generation just seems so small that maybe they needed needed this they needed the smaller cans. Yeah. Because they're so Probably. tiny. Kids kid size? Midget size? Yeah, it's like kid size, but I think that generation might be one of the smallest generations of um smaller girls and boys. Like by the time they're fully grown, they they just seem so small. It's weird. Or they're really tall and skinny. Some of their some of them are tall and super skinny and just like uh, a like weird skinny. looking, awkward yeah, posture. Awkward. Awkward. And not really good social skills. They're not just, athletic. They're kind they of they like look very like fat. homey. Homey. Yeah. Like they've just been sitting at home playing video games, you know. And then yeah. the mom just dragged them to go for a shopping addiction and stuff, you know. I see a lot of like people like that, you know. Yeah. It's it's crazy. They don't have muscle tone. They don't have mm -hmm. like they don't. Flabby. They just, yeah, they're not like what we what I remember being when I was that age as a kid. We were outdoors playing road hockey all year round, whether it was in the winter, summer, spring, fall. Uh, and the playoffs for hockey would be on TV, and sometimes we'd still be playing up until oh, it's game time. But we would be out there, and somebody would yell out, "The game started," because it would be already close to summertime. But we, we would be playing, like doing activities, active things in my neighborhood. We'd be playing backyard football. We'd be playing uh, baseball and, th and catch with hardball and, and baseball gloves and, and swimming and just doing stuff uh, all year round outdoors. Uh, riding bikes, BMX bikes. We, my friend and I would be building these BMX tracks with jumps and and wooden ramps to jump off our bikes and ride our bikes and jump. And we would be doing wrestling and, and, and martial arts. And, and he was into gymnastics. So we would be doing flips and stuff like that off of things and just doing physical stuff all the time. Yeah. Now I don't think, I mean, now a lot of them also go to like dramas. Theater school is the most weird at schools right now, especially if they go to like public school and, they're in areas like liberal, like Portland, and they're just immersed with this freaking furry shit, gay shit. The, the kid just tr transitions into, it's it's pretty sad what they're doing, the whole agenda, whatever it is, you know. They're changing yeah. just basically our, the human race. We have changed. I mean, that's why they group us as generations. I think we've talked about this in like, why do they call us like Generation X this? Why do they say, you know, boomer generation? There's a reason. Alpha. There's a, there is alpha a reason. Alpha sounds to me, alpha sounds to me powerful, doesn't it? Alpha it's supposed is like to be dominant. Alpha male is masculine. Why would they call like this? I mean, if it is the final last generation of humanity, you think I th it will still go on. The, these kids are made in the lab and they got lesbian fucking moms and like the this next will be backgrounds. generation broccoli. probably somebody like Kai is even like they're just a one they this they're all kind of the same you know in, in some ways they think they're they're different and like they're no they're not you know yeah they're very well, they, predictable they're not as special as they think they are I'm sorry they're not yeah, they want to be special. That's I think that's part of it. They really want to be special. Yeah. And they want me to give them that validation, and I'm not going to do that. So. Mushroom wants us to call her special, I think. For what? Nobody's special. Yeah, but they, they feel special for... For that you reason, know, stand out. Yeah, for like, that reason, they'd like, say, well, I'm not one of those stupid cisgender people. I'm not a normal, you know, they think that they're Yeah, special. I'm special. Pay attention to me, you know. Yeah. Kai has <laughs> kind of has the broccoli, the broccoli cut a bit. Really? That little firm. firm, soft firm in the, it's almost like a shaved on the side a bit, you know. They they should they should call the next generation instead of instead of following Alpha, uh, Jen Broccoli. <laughs> Jen Broccoli, Jen Broccoli. Head. Yeah. Me... 
I mean, even the shoes that they wear are like cartoonish. It's very like big with big soles, you know. Oh so yeah. They, I feel like they've made this alpha generation just like a joke. Like it's supposed to be be like a strong, but it's actually not. They're just basically mockery, like this a mockery. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because alpha is strong, like an alpha mm -hmm. male. And yeah. At least in um, wolves, it's the leader of the pack. That's the leader of the whole pack of wolves is the alpha. Yeah. So, so why they, would this generation be called that? It's interesting. I don't understand why, you know. Mind I, fuck reversal, right? It's like, Yeah. Because like, everything here is a freaking mind fuck. Every fucking thing here is like, yeah. It's a rabbit hole. There's Kai. They kind of have the broccoli. If they if they got the perm on top, they have the shape of the hair. I don't think he, Kai has enough hair to get to that. Yeah, it might be a bit too thin. Not enough hair, even though yeah. they're supposedly female. Female like didn't a woman. Beavis hair and Butthead certain or didn't they have like a high head? Uh yeah, I think so. I'll show them. Maybe it's kind of a mockery of their their character just to that how you know aren't they like obnoxious characters cartoon characters yeah yeah they were this that, that was um i'll show them uh just gotta switch the screen to that kai has a little mop head or something i don't know what to call that yeah a bowl cut you a know if you put cut. a bowl <laughs> <laughs> cut around it <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny it's pretty funny but i think kai <laughs> might even if, if they had more hair they could have the perm but i don't know if they have the uh enough uh oh shit i i hit the wrong uh the wrong one i got i could use a topper topper could use a what topper it's like a half wig like fringe on you just clip it on the front. oh okay it, yeah those women with the big foreheads you know with the big um huge foreheads they Same. could actually get those little toppers trash luna clip it on one. trash luna sammy there's a bunch of them here's beavis and butthead you they, can I get them from get amazon them. for like eight and eight i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah they should try one of those clip-ons um what do you think beavis and butthead had the kind of right <laughs> Yeah, he's kind of got the the broccoli, the broccoli perm. Pretty high. Just kind of awkward and kind of depressed, aren't they? Like, they yeah, can't. they were. Uh... It'd be fun to do even cartoon characters of people. I love like animations, you know. Yeah, Wendy was saying in the chat, she said um, that what you were talking about would make a great cartoon strip, Callie. She said, write down your observations. I know a cartoonist who would draw for free. Oh, That's really? Oh, I yeah. would love that. I would pay even a little. Wendy said that in the chat room. So you should con you should talk to her about Wendy's it I think Wendy's good with tech and stuff. She knows all the software things. You got smart, very smart women in the harem. Yes, I, I do try to choose the women more than just the pretty face. I try. They have to bring some skills to the table, some uh, just like Charlie's. Wendy, angels. Wendy's very intelligent. I do like I intelligent. Sure she has women. like a master's degree or something. I I don't like dummies when it comes to women. I tend to like intelligent women around me. You know what I'm saying? Intelligence like is sexy. Yeah, I like I like to have intelligent, capable women that are not um, airheaded. I don't like I, I've never liked women that were just not didn't know how to do anything, didn't know how to have a conversation. I, I've never wanted those types that were just the pretty or the bimbo type, the the uh, you know the airbag fake boobs and the fake whatever. I never found that appealing. Sometimes those women would kind of chase after me a bit, but I never really was into those. You just cut off? Hello? 
I'm still here. Could you? You didn't. Could no, you, you cut I'm off doing? a bit. Oh, damn! It really? like broke. I don't know if anyone in the chat or was it just me. I don't know. Can everyone in the chat room hear me right now? No, I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. I wonder if they hear me because I, I was saying that I've always liked intelligent women and I never really found the bimbo types appealing, the fake boobs, fake face, the ones that don't have a brain or intelligence that are just airheaded. I was never really attracted to those. But sometimes some of those women that were the ones that are just kind of the bubbly, airheaded, big boobs types would kind of be attracted to me. I mean, there, there were, there was, there were a bunch of women that were attracted to me, including different races like Chinese women and, um, you know, stuff like that. Where they would pursue me, and they were after me in a way, like chasing me, basically. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but usually I like to be the one that initiates. I don't really want women chasing after me. So I, yeah. I, 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 I'm the other way where I, I would rather tradition. I'd be, I'm more traditional, I guess you could say. So, but I do enjoy intelligent women, not just to date, but surrounding. You me. have like them here in the women. harem. There's all kinds here. And I, I like, mm -hmm. yes. And I have, they have different skills. They have each as their own personality. Like Charlie's angels. He had his angels. <laughs> Charlie had his angels. I have my harem. So. This is just going to stir them. You think they're listening right now? I think Team Evil probably is listening. Some of them are listening for sure. When 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 I said on Bex's show... It's crazy show, how flow state gets like 90 and you get how many? It's it's, crazy. it's wild. It is wild. It's YouTube though. Part of it's YouTube restricting my yeah. channel. It has to be. Because there's probably people subscribed to my channel that never get notifications and might have just thought my channel disappeared. Mm -hmm. They never got any notifications for so many months, but um, it was funny on Bex's show, though, where Kai was trying to paint me as this woman hater. And I said, I don't hate women. I love women. I have a whole harem. And they started laughing. Like, <laughs> it was as though that was the most awful thing in the world for me to say. Like, oh, you see that? He's saying he's sexist. He's saying that he loves women because he has a whole harem. But you know, what, what's wrong with that? Uh, there were. Men have always had uh, powerful, intelligent, you know, leaders of men have always had harems throughout history. And it's women <laughs> that, that do choose to. This to is a cool them. digital. Why are you hating and being jealous? Yeah. I mean, he just Kai was just like, ah, you know, so, oh, he doesn't even. It's a little laughing as though, oh, Stephen doesn't even realize how sexist and misogynist that is to say that he loves women because he has a whole harem. That's that's their warped view. But. I mean, we're just I, all having fun here. We're not. We're not. Yeah, like, exactly. But I mean, uh, what do you think? I would care what somebody that doesn't even can't even decide what's in between their pants is <laughs> going to judge me in terms of what I do in my life and and what I like or don't like. I mean, it's like I'm not going to be judged by freaks. So I mean, I I'm not a person that I don't bow down to these agendas that are pushed in society, and they can make threats like like mushroom and others. But they can't cancel me because I'm independently wealthy. You know, I, I don't have to work the rest of my life. I could do this. I, I could shut my YouTube down or I could continue to make videos or do other projects or work on artwork. But I have enough to last me the rest of my life. I'll be fine. They can't cancel me from a nine to five job, which is what that side or that group loves to do. The rainbow people love to cancel people, get them fired and try to ruin their lives. That's the way they fight against people that disagree with them. They're really yeah. tyrannical that way. They want to cancel people and they, they have this cancel culture and that they I'm cancel proof. They can't touch me. And that's why they get real upset too when I say, you know, can't touch this and they can't touch me and the MC hands. Emotionally this, they're you know. they're the ones it's you know, but they're putting it on you. They yeah, good emotionally. Well, they would. They're they're the ones that would love to destroy my whole life if they could. Not just Kai, but that whole group. But they cry if somebody like me says, "You better be careful. You could easily get a letter in the mail from an attorney, and I can more than afford an attorney to yeah in California to file a civil suit easily. You know, I can retain an attorney in a day." 
even remotely without even going there. I can sign the paperwork, a PDF file electronically online. They can send it to me. And, uh, you know, I could have an attorney in California without even leaving my living room. Do they not realize how this works? So anyway, I, I let that person know, like, you kind of make threats, but you should really back off mushroom because you could be losing something and then they say oh when he would destroy my livelihood well they if they had a position of to be able to put me in jail or take my job or do the things that their rainbow group has done to people kai would do that in a heartbeat if they could i know it's a tyrant it's a it's a cowardly little tyrant that would love to silence people that have a different view they can't handle somebody having their own viewpoint they just can't take it because it hurts their feelings. And they're the type that would destroy lives. If somebody like Kai had political power, they would rewrite the laws and make it completely illegal to even laugh at them or laugh at something that we find funny. They would literally become literally, literally, literally become <laughs> the laugh police. You know? You know? Like remember when it when remember when she went on the literally rant? <laughs> it was just it's crazy. <laughs> We're going to have so many, this is just going to stir up more, I feel, Kai's probably just secret, I just feel like it's just going to call, Kai's just triggered right now, I can just picture it. I hope so, you know? I mean, it doesn't bother me if they're triggered. How many people are watching it right now? Uh, 22 people, but if they go oh. right off the deep end, it doesn't bother me, because they're a grown adult, they're responsible for their own behavior, just like I am, just like Callie is. I'm speaking to the, everyone watching, yeah. just like Wendy is, just like John. Everybody here, we're all adults here. We know we're responsible for our own behavior. Like, I would never blame other people if I got so depressed or hurt by something and harmed myself. I'm not going to. I'm just saying that would be on me. And they mm -hmm. don't react that way. They want to blame us for their behavior. they emotional. Like, they want me to, like, feel bad for them like i don't have time there's very little time and energy we have here and i don't have time for i've given up a lot on myself too there's very so for me to it's burdening when you do that and it's very selfish behavior yeah they would suck our you know? time dry yeah they could and our attention and our care just if you're a good everything. person they will take advantage of it when we you yourself are struggling but they don't care about you it's all about them, you know. Yep. I mean, remember when we were on there on Bex's show, when I kept trying to say, let's change the topic. Why does it always go back to trans? All they wanted to do was talk about trans. It's like they Yeah, I don't want to talk about gay they, shit. Let's talk about hot men for a second. <laughs> talk about what? Hot men. Hot like, that's men. what I'm saying. <laughs> Jane, like, why always about the gay shit? Yeah, Why, everyone just wants to talk about gay shit. We've heard enough of you guys. Like, That's we've heard you. We want to talk heard about. you well. For, and then, you know. and then Kai's disgusted if they hear that a man has hair on their chest. That's too much for yeah. Kai. You know, so strange to me. Strange. I just think, um, and I did call out Bex a lot, and I was not mean about it in my response video. And Bex, I think, did watch part of that. At least it was a premiere. Um, Grant's modern life says I'm here the hot man that's a weird who thing is that? I don't know who that is but that's a weird thing for somebody that's supposed supposed to be straight or supposedly straight that's strange uh, I don't know who that is weird when was the channel made that's a weird Grant's modern life that's like a Chad name or something. <laughs> July 26, 2023. So it's a, almost a brand new, uh, almost a brand new YouTube account. That's a weird name. It's a weird name. It's a weird face. What's the face look like? I... Straight as a board. Well, why don't you come on here and join us live and talk to us, Grant? Talk to us, Grant. Come on on here as a guest. We're get we're we, and we're Wendy, good, if like you host. Come on, would you like to talk? To yeah, anyone who would. Challenge? I would love to talk. I like talking to different people. You know. I have ha, Wendy nice to get everyone's um, viewpoint. I'm not trying to say I hey, I know everything. I'm tr I'm I'm just trying to freaking figure things out. It's just it's pretty wild. 
I don't want to speak for Wendy, but she did say that I think that she finds uh, men with chest hair to be sexy. So I don't want to speak for Wendy, but I think she said that at one point. And uh, even that chick that's been bashing me on Demon Slayer. Oh, you're making breakfast? Uh, Wendy said she's making breakfast right now. Sounds Maybe. nice. Does sound good. I wonder what she's having for breakfast. Eggs and sausage and baked beans. Eggs and sausage and baked beans. It sounds good. Um, Simple fried egg. She says yes. Hairy, hairy chest. Wait, hairy chest hair on a man. Mm. So Wendy really does like the hairy chest on, on men. Thanks, though. And Grant says, I'm laying down right now. I'll come up some other time. Thanks, though. Oh, there's always excuses with these people. With new <laughs> accounts. You know, there's always these laying down. I'll come up some no, other time. non calanche. How do you say that? Like, <laughs> another time. It another time. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a masculine man laying down. To, I'm another time. Person, but, Another time, I'm too scared. Would you to like some up. cheese with your wine now? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like That's some grape posh. poupon? <laughs> posh, he needs, he needs the grape poupon. He's in his bed <laughs> with his chauffeur. He needs a grape poupon. Another time. He'll get another ticket. Listen, listen, Grant. I'm the fucking king, dude. You're just a peasant. So either you come up here or you're gone. That's it. I'm That's laying down too, Grant. <laughs> Even if you're laying down, you don't have to have a camera. I don't care if you're laying down. You don't have to sit up to talk to me. You don't have yeah. to. You don't have to stand up on stilts at a freak show as a clown or something. You can you can talk laying down, Shirley. Can't you? <laughs> Is that too much? Is that going to wear you out? Like, why do you say random shit like I'm a man and then you won't come on the pan? That's why I don't understand about these people, and then they just. That's the first comment I've ever seen from them. So it's really random when they chime in like that out of nowhere. They like never they've been listening, but then you say something like masculine and they're like, I'm straight. It's okay, let's, why you say something where we don't know you? We've never like out of we, the blue. Yeah, we weren't talking about Grant. I never even saw the yeah. name before. But then why don't like you just come up, up and then just say if you are like, nobody knows you in the chat and now it's going to like, we're watching. It's just... You're a stranger here, and you're saying I think random it is stuff. It's an attention uh, ploy, like a power play to get attention. He wanted to draw attention. Now he's got all the attention on him, but he doesn't want to come on here. I'm the what? The random. The randomest. Uh, <laughs> you, you're the most randomest man. Why is your name Grant? Is that your like? Uh, is probably your real name. Grant's modern life. He looks like a guy that never smiles. <laughs> that's what he looks. That's what he looks like to me. That's the. Is he a gingy? He he looks kind of like a gingy, or he's part gingy. I'm gonna put a link in the. In the live stream, to this character. Does he make videos? Uh, he doesn't seem to have any, at least on this channel, but I suspect that he has more than one channel because he's, this is 2023. I don't think he just found YouTube last July. <laughs> he just I found it. He just I discovered I don't YouTube last July. No. Yeah. I mean, come on. So he's probably someone else hiding. Why doesn't he come on? on he here? looks You're like he lives in America. I'm sure he has voice. one. That's why you don't want to come on here. He lives in America, but he found YouTube last July. <laughs> Wendy said he looks like Little D. He kind of does look a little bit like Little D if he grew a beard. He just has a little, a little bit of a, a little thirteen-year-old's mustache. I don't know if this guy's a grown adult. He only writes one, like very little words, different. Like, oh my god, what the hell? He has the skills writing just one word to seduce women on Tinder, he probably thinks. No, oh, I'm so a man. Master. I'm different. He's I'm so straight. <laughs> <laughs> He's so different. You're so different, Grant. I think you might go through one 
disposable okay, razor. You didn't want me to base it off that little picture and your little fro. I don't even know you. Like, how do you say that about yourself? Come on some random channel and just start saying shit like that. <laughs> yeah, he, th he thinks that's so masculine. He thinks mm -hmm. that's so masculine to chime in randomly that he's a hot, sexy guy. <laughs> he, look, he looks like he would go through one disposable razor in a lifetime. I mean, you can't even grow facial hair, Grant. I mean, what do you mean you're sexy? Do you have three chest hairs to rub together? I mean, <laughs> think about it, dude. Like, a, I, I don't Stragglers. know if you've gone through puberty yet. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you sure you're old enough to be on this channel? This is for adults only, Grant. This isn't for little little boys here. Okay. So if you don't have any balls to come on here, then we really don't want you on here, Grant. You're laying down. Maybe your parents will hear you talking at this time and you'll wake them up. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why you can't come on. You don't want to talk on here. and Be talking, you might wake somebody up. You might live with mommy and daddy. Let's get real here, dude. We're not stupid over here. You're laying down? Inga said that he's watched your movie since then. How do we know? I don't think he's watched since anything. Since July 2023. Does he have videos of you? No, he doesn't have any videos on that channel showing up. I don't know why Inga said that then. Maybe, Maybe he came with another username. Yeah, he's probably been here under another name. Probably his backup account or fake account or something. It's very wild. How people keep sock accounts and it's just, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. You don't know who's who sometimes. Well, I don't think... Uh, YouTube was just found by him last July, so I kind of think he has other accounts. Who knows how many, but... And all these names, even, you know, like, with these people. Weird-ass yeah. names, you know. Yeah. To me, that's like a... Joe, like a Joe Brown, you know, like that kind of, like, the name of Grants. It's like for YouTube, that's such a generic name, like... Not even creative, you know. He's a generic just like, guy. Oh, let me just wait. Let me just make special. up like a so it's definitely a sock account. But yeah, Grant's modern so life. Like. I think so too. That's his big attempt at being creative in his life is Grant's modern life. He probably patted himself on the back when he made that account saying, Nobody will ever suspect this one. He thought he's so proud of himself over that. Yeah. <laughs> Grant can't come on, everyone, because his parents are still awake. Mommy and Daddy might be woken up if he does a live stream and talks. And they might be angry and say, Grant, go to bed. Go to sleep. What are you doing up at this time, Grant? Oh, Inga was joking. Oh, yeah, that meant a joke. Okay, get it, Inga. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them say they've watched all of my videos or most of my this videos. Is, yeah. And then I'll be like, hey, what's your favorite video of mine? And they can't name anything. They just can't say anything because they, they're caught lying. And I think Grant's probably another liar. Grant, you're so masculine and so sexy, dude. Come on. Come on the show. Out of everything that we talked about, you chimed in at that point. What a fucking... Now, now you just can't even say anything. It's just like speechless. He's too tough now. He's just too tough to say anything. Now that he's been caught, he's too tough to say anything. Come on, Grant. We don't listen, Grant. We don't care if your voice sounds like your Elmo from Sesame Street that's just inhaled helium. If your balls haven't dropped yet, if you haven't gone through puberty, we don't care. Just come on here and talk. You can be a munchkin, a little incel. We don't care if you're five foot two and have a little voice. It's okay. You can come on here. Tell us how sexy you are, how you're a hot man and masculine. 
You don't have to be shy and be quiet. I think as he's hearing me talk, his, his dick is probably turtled up and he's in a corner right now crying or something, <laughs> sobbing to himself. Come on, Grant. Don't be such a wimp. See, this is the problem with your generation. They get called out on shit and they just shut up. They just get silent. You know, they run away. What a wimp. What a wimp. <laughs> Grant, come on. Click on the link. Come on. Come on the show. Otherwise, you're gone. That's it. I don't I don't accept. Uh, oh, I'm laying down. Like, what a, what a lame ass excuse that is. I'm laying down right now. Well, so what? Who gives we a all shit? live laying down. I'm about to go to bed. So I'm laying down right now too, talking into a microphone. Big deal. You can't talk because you're laying down. All right, Grant. I think you're going to be gone because you're just too much of a wimp. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. There you go. He's gone. Goodbye, Grant. He's booted. <laughs> yeah, I just I just banned him. Hit him from the channel. Banned from the chat. He's gone. He didn't have the guts to come on here after boasting himself up. What a loser. That's one of the ultimate loser things to do. It's a loser move. They should call him No Game Grant. That's what you should change. You should make a new channel on YouTube. Call yourself No Game Grant. You talk yourself up. You got no game. You're just a wimp. This one's for you, Grant. And take a freaking shower. You look dirty. You look like <laughs> stink. <laughs> you look it's crazy. the first one tonight. It is the first one tonight. He looks stinky. This one goes out to you, Grant. <laughs> La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Ya no puede caminar porque no tiene, porque le falta. Marihuana que fumar, la cucaracha, la cucaracha. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. I wish Marcella was here. She would be yeah, rejoicing. Caminar porque no tiene, porque le falta. Marihuana que fumar. So this one's for Grant, and we are thinking of you, Marcella. We miss you. You love when I play this for, for these cockroaches. Uh, I don't know if you heard, Callie, but Marcella is with uh, her daughter, so she's going to have... Um, oh, okay. She's going to have some fun and happy, nice. happy days, so that's good, good for, her. for her. Yeah, that's what she's doing, but... Um, Yes, she uh, is here. So, she's you know, she's always here to support. Yes, I do love Marcella. I love, I love Callie. I love Marcella. I love Wendy. I love Louise. I love Carmen and everyone that is part of. Uh, and I love Seth as well. He's another moderator here. I love my harem. I love my moderators, and I love Bobby. 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 Manny. Yes, he's not a moderator, but I mean, he's part yeah. of the channel. He's somebody that's 
Meth. Very supportive. And Inga as well. I mean, there's, Inga, there's meth, a whole yeah. bunch here that, you know, are loyal audience, loyal subscribers, um, loyal to the channel, you could say, that are very appreciated. And uh, I would hate for any of them to just vanish or especially, of course, to go over to Team Evil. I would that would be crushing if anybody did that. But I don't think that's I don't think that's going to happen with the names that I just mentioned. I can't foresee that happening. But um, Marcella does love when I play this for the cockroaches. <laughs> I think she really enjoys it when uh, when this song comes on. And I love playing it, too, to be honest. I really do. And I'm going to say this, uh, Grant, you only get half the song because you're just such a half-assed loser. You don't even... He can still it. listen. He just can't chat, put chat right. Yeah, he couldn't come on. And he, he just seems like just a, a half cockroach. He's a half cockroach, so he only gets half the song. You don't even get the whole song on your way out, Grant. He's just trying to brag on the chat. Like, come on. Dude. He bragged and he couldn't back it up. I mean, uh, what what's that? That's the lamest excuse. Oh, I, some other time I'm laying down. Not right now. You're laying down. Well, so am I laying down right now. But I can still talk. So I don't buy it. I think he couldn't talk because he thought, oh, mommy and daddy will wake up in the bedroom next door. They're asleep. Or maybe mommy and daddy are banging in the bedroom next door to them. And he can hear them. I don't know what the case is. But I mean... Grant, I don't think that you live on your own. I don't think you're an adult. I think you're a young punk. I think that's a sock account or one of your backup accounts. And uh, I think you probably do with, live with your parents. I really do. So I think uh, you're one of these people that makes excuses why you can't come on a live stream. Because you don't want to wake up mommy and daddy. That's what I think it is. You're up late. You I like that you analyze because if one of those panel ones, any of these trolls go in and they say that they just ignore it, but at least you put them accountable, you know, why yeah. come in chat like that, bash it and then just not. And, and why not make them accountable? Cause I'm not afraid to lose people at all. I've made that clear with the very day one of my channel. If I have to get rid of these people, I'll get rid of them. I don't want that around somebody that just says that tries to draw attention to themselves and then they can't back it up if you're going to have if you're going to be brash and bold and have brass balls or pretend to and pretend to have bravado you gotta back it up grant you can't be lame like that and, and spew out some nonsense pretend that you're different pretend that you're this hot man or masculine or whatever and then just back away and cower like a little cockroach you can't do that or you're going to get called out it's the way it works here and when you're banned, you can still click that link to join the live, live stream as a guest. And you're too cowardly. You just showed that. So you just exposed yourself as just a little coward. He's got broccoli hair energy, everyone. He's got little D energy. <laughs> he's got little D energy. His, his testicles haven't dropped yet. I don't think he's out of puberty. So it's not the channel for you. This is for adults only. It's for grown men, not little boys, Grant. I agree, Inga. He didn't make any effort. He's just a pussy. He's a wimp. I don't want that around my channel. I don't like that. I don't like the younger generation that's so wimpy that way. I mean, if you're going to have an attitude. Very sensitive. Yeah. I mean, And know, very like blob, you know. Yeah, he's got no personality. I mean, if if you were masculine, you would have and you would have taken the invitation and said, "Sure, I'll be on just a second, and you'd hop on. It, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Edwin when Ed when I told Edwin, "Come on here right now and talk to me. I have a few things to ask you and discuss with you." He said, "Just one minute, and I'll be on." Twenty twenty five minutes, half hour went by, and I was like, "Fuck this," and I banned him because he wouldn't come on here, and he'd already been bullying trying to bully Manny he'd been trying to um and Manny can take care of himself Manny didn't put up with it Manny isn't just a pushover just like Manny said oh he probably thought I'm a pushover and I'm not and I agree Manny isn't a pushover um he underestimated Manny Edwin 
But Edwin uh, would not come on here. He just kid. He ran away. He said, I'll be on in a minute. And he just took off running with his tail between his legs. And I don't respect yeah, that. That's not respect. Reasons. Being respectful and just, you know, like you should have grown ups here, you know? Yeah, exactly. Don't try to bully somebody in the chat. And then when you're called out and saying, hey, I want to talk to you about something, they just take off running. That's not being a grown man. That's not grown man behavior. That's cowardly and, and immature and stupid. That's what that is. So anyway, I, I just don't, uh, I don't respect people like that. And it's good to be like that because other panels don't care and they just leave just because it's a count. You know, that's why they get 95 um, people watching because they just want that numbers, you know. Yeah. Well, his channel, he'll time out people for 24 hours. I ban people. I think I probably have 450 people's or accounts banned. I don't know how many different people that is, but it's accounts around 450 or so. Maybe close to 500 by now. That's what I'm saying. Demons, they make all these videos about you, but you don't. You just take them out. So it's not like you want them even for the views. You just don't want to deal with them, you know? Because that no. drama with them or just having them on the panel can maybe even give you more views because they bring their roaches with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they'll come on here, though, because they're too afraid. The link is always up. Nobody has to just be... The link is up right now in the chat room saying join as a guest. And if the little demon slayer, the little boy, is watching, all they'd have to do is click that and hop on here and start talking like an adult. But I don't think they are an adult. I don't think they are a man. And I'm not saying they're a woman. I just think that they're just a little soy boy with probably an embarrassing voice, which is why they have to use the robot voice, the AI voices for the videos, and hide their face, hide their voice, disguise their voice, and not use their name, even first name. They're afraid. That's what that shows me. That's not grown man behavior. That's fearful little coward behavior. So imagine that in life. Some people would say, well, they can do that in the, well, you couldn't, you couldn't at a workplace hide your name, your face and um, your voice and everything the way they do and say shit. So they wouldn't talk that way in real life. I think this is the only place that they can be that way and have any sort of um, illusion of power, we'll say, over anyone is on the internet. I don't think, I think in life they feel very impotent, very weak very ignored probably probably an incel would be demon slayer and that whole group just like pp perpetual pervert is his channels full of incels that watch him most of the young men there are incels they all talking about you on discord and stuff they're like trying to i mean that's what they did with bex they were cornering her you know yeah so. well they can all talk about me but they will never be me yeah. They'll never be like me, and they'll never have as many women attracted to them as, as I always do throughout my whole life. So I could sound however it wants, but they can eat their fucking hearts out with envy because I know these creatures, they can't even show their faces. I can imagine them as some pimply, pizza-faced, little soy boy incels that, have no, that women have no interest in, for one thing, and no guys in real life respect because they're the type that have to hide themselves even on the internet. I can't imagine having to live that way. Like, how sad is that? Imagine that person in real life if they behave like that online. Yeah. Imagine how wimpy they are in real life if they have to hide online. The fact that the, every day they wish they could say things to people in real life and they can't do it at all. They can only act up on the internet when they're anonymous because they're completely afraid of real men in real life and over the internet. He's afraid that I'll find him over the internet, find out where he is. He's afraid of that. I know yeah. he, he emails me once in a while. I know he's afraid of that. I know he's afraid. I can tell he's afraid. So imagine living in fear every day. Imagine a little, boy, a little thing like that is passing away one day. 
the fear that they will have of death and fear that they will have of being sealed in here. Just the thought that, oh, Stephen might be able to seal me in here. Just that thought running through their mind as they're leaving their body. I mean, that's hilarious to me. I love it for the what they've caused. Wait and see what happens. Wait and see. Because yeah. I know they're weak here. And I, and I know how much powerful I am here and how, mu how I'm way more powerful outside of here, out of this body, than I am here. I know that all of these demons in YouTube can gang up and work together and they can't take me on. It's not even a contest. It's not even fair. It's I'm way a, more dominant than they are. Content and stuff is just boring. It just doesn't, you know. Sorry, I could barely hear that. What, what did no, I said that they, they'll keep making content because they're just jealous. And yeah, yeah, they wouldn't even have any content if it wasn't for you. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. They have PR, no idea. It's okay, let them be, you know. They just have no ideas, nothing of their own, nothing original. Can you imagine having to leech off this, somebody? They were so happy when you lost, they thought you lost your channel. So, All if you type in, in this search <laughs> engine, they I think I read in the comments, Demon Slayers, like now, if you search in the search engine, I show up. Not sanity machine, but my videos. Like I think he he thought that if yours was completely gone, he would get yeah. more views just because people are like, "Where's sanity machine?" They're wondering, and then they'll click on demon slayers. You know, he needs that attention. He's craving some attention because he gets so he gets more clicks through you. He's still. <laughs> Only through me. He, I mean, that's this whole channel is about me. He has nothing else. So I'm the star. He's just he hides in the shadow like a little cockroach. Yeah, he's a little cockroach. But they were celebrating thinking I was gone. It was so hilarious because they must have choked when they realized I'm not gone. I'm right here. I'm back. They never got rid of me. They can't get rid of me. I'm a king. They're just peasants. They're lowly little poor pissant peasants. <laughs> and with a phone call, I can pay somebody to call YouTube and say, hey, this is uh, this is uh, the assistant for King Stephen. Put his channel back up right now. And YouTube is like, right away, sir. And my channel's back up. It's that simple, you cockroaches. You can't get rid of me. They thought they won. They had these videos <laughs> celebrating. Like PP saying, celebrate and... You know, the sanding machine is gone. They had these videos right away celebrating. They didn't even Kyrie. wait. They were just so, like, watching, like, hawks. Just immediately they got alerted. Huh? They got fooled. I'm not gone. They jumped the gun. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. And my crown is as shiny as ever. And I still have my millions of dollars. I'm still a king. I'm independently wealthy. They can say I'm a trust fund ba baby or whatever they want. They're just envious. They're envious because they have nothing that I have. I mean, Bex real. even had a, just for, you know, didn't Bex have her own life? When you're gone, she was like, had so many people. Yep, about me. Mm -hmm. A live stream that was about me. Um, where was I and what happened to my channel or something? I can't remember the title. Yeah. Something about that. So this is on my community page on YouTube. When they talk about views, check out my channel's views that I just hit that milestone. Over 1 million views. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you, Callie. Thank you. So well when they they, Go ahead. Well deserved. Thank you very much. Um, when they think they've won, check out those numbers for the evil that are lurking right now, the demons. Over a million views so far. Look at how many people I've reached that you've not been able to stop me from reaching. You evil little demons that lurk and make videos. I'm winning. You're losing. You're losing. <laughs> and I love it. Like you, you can never get to me mentally or emotionally. And you can't cancel me in life or my money or my job. You can't do it. You can't make me homeless. They claim that I've made people homeless. I don't know if you've seen those videos, but they're... They're claiming that I have the power to make all of them homeless, that I've been making them homeless. 
They claim that I made Derek. Yeah, grown ass kids putting it all on you just from a you grown men that live in uh, another country. You know, it's all my fault, Callie. I made these grown men homeless. <laughs> I mean, what what else have I done? Is the next hurricane? Is that at my fault? My goodness. Pretty crazy. It's nuts, isn't it? Can you imagine somebody blaming you with a straight face making a video saying, oh, Callie made this woman pregnant? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to blame me for that now. If one of the if one one of the women on Team Evil, one of the hoes, gets pregnant, if they're going to say, that's Stephen's fault. No, he didn't have sex with her, but he still caused her to be pregnant. He didn't go to this other country to have sex with her, but she's pregnant. It's his fault. I mean, yeah. my goodness. They blame me for losing their jobs. Yeah, Charles I know. made a video saying that I that oh he thought it was Steve. He said I think it was Steve, and this was many months ago when he lost a job, and he thinks it's me that caused him to lose his fucking job. I didn't even know where he worked. I mean, anyway, it's hilarious to me. It's crazy. I have all the power in the world. I'm just going to let them think this. I can make them homeless. I can make them or break them. I can make them homeless. I can I can cause their divorces. I can make them pregnant. I I could probably make them miscarriage if I wanted <laughs> to. I mean, I could I have the power to do anything. I can make them lose their job, be late for work, uh, you name it. It's all on. It's all you. It's all me. I control the whole realm. Didn't didn't everybody listening right now realize this? I'm I control everyone. They're just my puppets on strings. I'm. I'm moving my fingers and they're just dancing no around. No self-response or accountability or anything. It couldn't be on them. Could it? These mm. men that are homeless, living in their trucks, that have to be my fault. I mean, if they don't go to a job, it's my fault, right? I mean, I'm trying to understand their he life. He talks like he, he's like, if he meets you in real life, he's, he's like, he's like not kidding. He's going to like, like just do like some damage on you that's the way he talks is like he's like i usually don't hate anyone but i i we like the way he talks about you is like it's kind yeah, of he's psychotic he, he he's obsessed with me he he thinks that he's gonna he, do he even made me. like i think a punching like he punched his fist like his own <laughs> yeah it's, it's kinda... nuts it's nuts <laughs> he it's... wouldn't be able to do jack shit to me Listen, rebellious meat puppet, you are a peasant. You're a pissant. You're a little homeless bum. You're a stinky pauper. You wouldn't get past my security. I'm an independently wealthy, multi-millionaire king. I'm royalty, dummy. I'm royalty, you dumbass. You have nothing. I did make uh, Inga's hair ginger. That's my fault. I made her hair ginger. I have a security force. That guy has nothing. All he can do is comb his fucking stupid, ugly beard in his truck. The homeless bum on video. He can't come near me. That guy. He's jealous. And I offered him a care package, by the way, in case anybody's forgotten. I said that I would give him a care package with deodorant, toothpaste, not to eat, but to brush his teeth and toothbrushes and uh, washcloths and some bars of soap and uh, all that essentials for a homeless person and even a bottle of Prada cologne, fine cologne, Prada. It's not cheap stuff. Trust me. Trust me. It's good and it's expensive and he can't afford it. He can't afford even to put gas in his truck. I mean, he can't afford anything. He can't afford anything. He can't afford to, he can't afford anything. Okay. He's yeah. got nothing. So is he out again? I haven't kept up with it, but is he out from the hotel? Yeah, he's back in the truck making videos from his truck. So asking for more money? Saying, yeah, he's asking for more money, try, um, trying to say he, does, he doesn't think he's going to make it. All this Again? Stuff, he started you know. that? That's Yeah, just, <laughs> all over again. <laughs> back to, oh, no. you know, he's thinking of ending it. I don't, he doesn't know how Because when I he, last uh, watched him, he was in the hotel. I feel like I haven't really... I found a video of him saying that five years ago. Same thing? The same thing that he's, he doesn't know how long he's going to make it. Some uh, woman like took all and, his money and then. Like he just keeps doing this. It's a pattern with him. And he just keeps begging for shekels to get bailed out by strangers on the internet to pay him. I don't know how many guys have paid him or women, whether it's women, men, both. But 
he and then yeah he blames this woman for the fifteen thousand that he had saved up that's all gone well what did he do hand her the cash like where did all the money go he doesn't say how he how she took his money like he does he just doesn't he blames everybody for his circumstances he he doesn't mm -hmm. blame himself for his situation no self accountability Seems none none yeah. zero he blames his brother his half brother that has apparently he keeps saying 20 million dollars uh, if he has that money maybe he's the hockey player with the same last name as keith um that i found on a sports team um i've i've looked into keith i've looked into who he is where he has lived including you know i won't say but i i know all the places he's been i know all about you keith your family you know i know about your dad where he lives um where you're from where you grew up everything i've looked you up dude uh, you you make threats against me i'm gonna look you up i'm gonna i'm gonna look you up and have my security team keep an eye on you that's what's gonna happen you have to because of threats made to you right so yes i have to because the threats made and i don't want to be somebody coming after he me might come at your after, doorstep for example. coming after my wealth either he's just yeah. a pissant crazy bum He's or just do bum. something crazy, you know. Very volatile. Yeah. Yeah, he is. I also, by the way, um, just to refresh everyone's memory here, thank you, Wendy, for, for the congratulations. I want to say this. I offered him $50, U.S. dollars, not Canadian pennies or loonies or toonies or Monopoly money or whatever, or Canadian tire fake money that we have in this country. Uh, I might even be buying a house in the States at some point. I, I can afford multiple properties, Keith. But listen to this. I offered him $50 US just to come on here for one hour on my live What did he say? He didn't respond. No response. I tagged him. I offered it to him. I've told people that. If I needed I money, I would have taken it, you know. Yeah, why wouldn't he? If he's a grown man, what's the. Well, and if he's not afraid of me. Why wouldn't he come on here and just talk for one hour? Why is that hard work? Why is that too scary for him? There were people telling him this on his channel, saying the Sandy Machine wants and you just to come, come up and straighten up things. The man to man, if he says he's such Clear a strong man, yeah, I wouldn't start yelling and cursing and insulting him if he came on. I would, even though he's been a complete threatening nutcase, asshole beyond an asshole. The emails that he sent me over the years, he's completely nuts, but. uh and violent but i would just clear the air and say listen i don't have a fucking i don't care about your life you're nothing to me why can't you just move on what's your obsession with me last one hour as a guest i mean i would actually be rewarding him in ways that i haven't rewarded good decent people that don't want money to come on here just to talk to me but i would be having pity on him because he is a homeless bum and he lives out of his truck apparently unless he's lying which he could be but yes thank you wendy it's been four hours 34 minutes that this has gone on which is i'm great. getting a bit tired but it's a good conversation so far yeah it's it's a good conversation so you said you would take the money if you were in his situation so would i yeah it's food in your belly if you need that's food that's some or it's gas money if you we all to try i mean somewhere. all it's struggling not a lot of people like king stephen but everyone's i mean money is Especially right now, it, there's ways to try to, you know. I'm get. offering to help somebody that's yeah. been a complete prick to me. Who else does that? They let on that I'm. And he could just say thank you, you know, for even offering and giving, just having some kind of like, um, just a real talk, you know. Yeah, Someone. they won't do it though. He won't do it. Neither will the other ones, by the way. I invited all of these people that call me an enemy on here. I didn't offer all of them. They say money. you kick them out, but it's. I think they, they start behaving and saying things for you to do them. They just do not have just a grown up conversation, you know. No, they don't. They'll make sounds or they'll like do some kind of just weird. They'll yell or scream or yeah. they'll put up porn. Robotic or voice or just say some stupid shit. Just that, like this that grand one chick put up porn on the screen. Yeah. On her, she put her webcam stuff. on and was porn. I had to ban kick her off quickly. Was that when was that? I think oh, I that was that. I think while you were gone. That was okay. um I don't know how many. So days she came ago. on yours and on she a, yeah, literally on a live turned on 
That's crazy. And she turned her camera on and it was porn on the screen. Her face, That's then it went to crazy. porn. So she wanted to get porn on my live stream. Yeah. To affect my live stream. So they do stupid shit. They yeah. do really immature, rude cockroach behavior. I'll just call it cockroach degenerate uh, teen evil behavior. Flow State got kicked off for good reason because he kept interrupting and yelling. I don't tolerate that. I don't yeah. let somebody take over my show. And I've said this too. If I was on a stage, if I was lecturing, let's say, at a lecture hall and someone from a group or an activist or BLM or whatever, feminist or trans activist rushed up onto the stage and tried to grab the mic, I wouldn't give up the podium or the mic. Yeah. I would hang onto the microphone and push them off the stage, even into the crowd. Even if the stage was six feet off the ground, raised up, I would shove them off the stage and I would hang onto the microphone and keep the show going. I wouldn't let them take over ever. Yeah. Ever. So I'm not letting them take over my show on online here. They're not let they're not going to come on here and act like an asshole and ruin it for everybody and just take over the show and yell and scream and carry on and throw tantrums and do all this acting up. I don't tolerate that. Yeah, I'm glad you do it. It's just you know, I feel like it just filters out. Hey Bobby. Bobby just came in and said, hello, everyone. Hey. I don't want my show to turn into what they have. I don't want it to be trash. So I take out the trash. But if somebody comes on here and behaves like, a, like an adult, then we can have a conversation. I've had conversations with people that I don't really like, that, have, that, I've been invi that I've invited on here. You know, Jinji Joshi was one. I invited him on. He wouldn't answer the questions. And he tried to make it a show about him right from the start. He had his webcam on. I had to tell him to turn his webcam off. He started playing music on a keyboard. I could see his camera was showing a keyboard. He started playing music. I didn't know if it was going to be copyrighted music, but I said, cut the music. He said he wanted to play his intro music. He wanted to get attention like a narcissist to make it about him being a guest. And I didn't allow it. But I didn't start yelling. I didn't start cursing. I didn't get triggered. I didn't start... Yeah, it's just have a normal conversation, not talking said, over know. each other or angrily at each other. Or it's just... I can do that with anybody. I can be calm with anyone. Yeah, even people that I have a hist, we'll call it a history with, um, but they won't do it. You notice the pattern, Charles, the the you know the little guy with the bugged out eyes, we P thirty three. He's been invited on here. He said for the longest time, oh, I want to, I want to talk to you man to man. You're invited. I've had a live stream up for months since last November. He's never shown up live as a guest. He talks about me. Little D, Derek, the green wizard, he's never come on here. He doesn't have the guts. It's another one. There's a whole list of them. Demon Slayer, Creepy Keith, Keith the yeah. Homeless Bum. They, they never come here. They've been invited. I invited that uh, Barbie Sasquatch or Trash Squatch. Trash Luna is another one. Shadow and Light Trash Luna. She's been invited on here. She ever show up? Nope. Just talking nope. behind your back. That's not good, you know. That's all they can do. So if th that shows me, it shows me, it should show everybody something about them because they don't have the guts to come on here. They can talk behind my back. They can comment on other channels that I don't even frequent for the most part in comments and in live streams. But they can't come on here like an adult and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. so look how many. Oh, obviously, yes, Wendy, for sure. At hundreds and hundreds of hours. Just one of my live streams. The first live stream was, what was it, 95 and a half hours. I had a, also a live stream that was 144 hours. I've had many 12-hour plus live streams. It's hundreds of hours of live streams. They've had all these months. So when people say that they have the guts or Team Evil has guts and that they call me, I, I am willing to talk to any of them. I also invited on um, Eric Dubay and he and that Brett Bender character. He's been invited on. Um, there's a Brett Bender. It, it's countless people that have been Quantum invited Quantum of on Conscience, me. yeah. Quantum of Conscience, Matt, uh, Mushroom Coyote has been invited on here multiple times, including on Bex's channel and then tagged. Uh, their channel in my con in my community posts multiple times been invited on invited right now if you're listening right now mushroom 
you could come on right now or some other time. Uh, I don't know why you don't want to come on and talk about the actual issues uh, rather than just, you know, what you are. You should talk about what your issues are and get beyond it. Like a grown-up, but I don't think you... Like a man. You, you want to be a like, man. Like a man. Yeah, like, like a man. man. Like a man. It would be a good exercise Stop being a bitch. to be a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting Who tired, else? Stephen. Uh, mushroom Kai... What did you say? Sorry. I said I'm getting a bit tired. I might oh. be fading. Well, you can go to sleep anytime you want, but it, you know, it's been... If you want to go to sleep, it's been... No, uh, I didn't want to interrupt you even talking about this. Oh, okay. So sorry. It's just, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk with you, though, Callie. I do have, Yeah, I'll try to I see if I can come this weekend. I'll try to find time. I've just been doing a lot of stuff, and I have to wake up early again tomorrow. Oh. So. Okay. But I thank you. Ask, yeah, no, go you're ahead. You're welcome. You're, you're, you have a standing invitation to come on the <laughs> show to talk anytime you want. Whatever you want, but... um. I didn't. I don't know if you're aware of this, but I invited Eric Dubay on here mm -hmm. as a guest. People invited him. I wrote on his channel. Yeah, I know um, all these people, and they just will not come. And offered money. I offered him money. Yeah. Because I know he wants money. He wants the shekels. I guess he's making a living now off donations on mm -hmm. his YouTube and Patreon. I offered to pay him fifty U.S. dollars, and Mark Devlin, the guy that was his guest, they've been using a lot of my material. I just like them to come on here and discuss things. Nothing. I offer you money. I put a lot of money offers out there. It might not be a million dollars an hour, but it's fifty U.S. dollars an hour. So I think that's fair. Yeah. Come on. Why don't they? I don't get money from my channel. It's not like oh, my channel covers it, so I can pay for guests. No, it's out of my own pocket. Big deal. All the software that I use on my channel, my laptop. I don't beg for shackles like that. Mark Passio. Saying, oh, I need a new laptop. I need a laptop for this room or a laptop to do this. A new Apple, whatever, MacBook or whatever it is, or whatever, MacBook Pro, whatever it was. $6,000. Yeah, they always have, we need a laptop. It's weird. Sorry? I said they all need a laptop, all of them, I've noticed. Yeah, Angry Gingy Money. said the same thing on video. He needs a laptop to, I, I have a laptop. I'm on one right now, but I paid for it myself. Why don't they do that? Why don't they buy their own equipment? My laptop here paid for by me. This microphone and the boom stand, this is by me. Nobody had to buy this. The speakers for my laptop is by me. The cameras that I have, I don't, I, I have my uh, camera on the laptop, the webcam covered in tape, but I have a zoom ca uh, lens camera separate that I can use for videos as well. Uh, I don't ask for money for camera, laptop, software microphones uh zoom cameras cell phones uh, i don't ask for people for money at all not at all I, i'm not asking for a dime and then they get jealous and envious these creatures on team evil and they say well it must be nice he's a trust fund baby that's why he's not asking for donations he doesn't ask for super chats he disables it in his live streams there's no dollar sign in the live chat to click on if people notice there's no button there with a dollar sign to click and give super chats. I don't want people's money. I'm not needy. I don't need people's money. I make my own money. I invest my own money. And I have money to live off of. And I'm doing fine. Completely fine. So these liars that say he collects this. No, not at all. I have savings. I don't have to work the rest of my life. That might really bother them and get under their skin. Great. I hope it does. Hope it does. Uh, fantastic. I hope that everything that I am and do in this life gets under the skin of demons. I love that. I love it. I mean, I, I'm somebody that loves to do that. I love to tease them and laugh at them and get heat with them and get under their skin and make them triggered and furious and irate and snapping and everything. They show how weak they are when they're pointing their finger and yelling at the screen, yelling about the sanity machine and angry. I live rent free in their heads. They will never be me. They will never come close. They could view me as an evil villain. I love it. I mean, it's, I just love it. I love having heat with these idiots. And they, they treat me like I'm the super villain. And meanwhile, I don't want people's money because I'm not needy. I encourage people with extra savings or money they don't need for food for themselves or their bills to give to the needy. And if you were going to, if you say, Stephen, I appreciate your channel. 
thank you very much. Give that extra money that you, let's say you wanted to give to me. I don't need it. Give it to help somebody at a food bank. Um, animals help animals. Wool, uh, wolves, cats, dogs, strays, animals that need food, and medical attention, or people at food banks or clothing or toys for children is another good one. There's toy drives for children. Buy a toy if, if you don't have children or even if you do help poor children have toys. There's all kinds of things people can do, but I will never ask people for money. And the team evil demons hate that. They real that really bothers them because they're always having their hands out asking for money. Yeah, they're just jealous. Haters. They are. And they wish me harm all the time. They wish I was sick. They wish I was dead. They wish my channel was gone. They wish I was suffering. They wish I was poor. They say they wish I was homeless, all this stuff. All the things that are happening to them, they wish onto me. It backfires on them. It's like a boomerang. It's like an Aussie down under, down under, that's throwing a stupid boomerang. And it flies out 50 feet, and it spins around, and it comes right back at them really quickly, and it hits them right in the forehead. That's what their little spells and evil ill wishes happen to them. They cast it and it hurts them. It doesn't hurt me. I am protected. I am a magical spiritual being and I'm well aware that I am different and I'm eternal. I've never thought that I was created out of dust or mud or that I was formed by some creature God in this realm or that I just came into existence here or that I'm from this place. Never. As a toddler, I told my parents I'm not from here. I knew I wasn't from here all along. I've had that awareness that I'm I'm not from here. So I am different in that respect. And all I've done is try to help people for free, which is what they hate me for. And they also hate me for the fact that my channel always has women, not just to my harem, but in my chat. And you notice on these Shady Bunch channels, it's, it's a sausage fest over there. They almost have exclusively all little incel guys watching those channels and chatting. And then the women that do watch or on panels, they get treated like shit. That's what I notice. They treat women very poorly on those panel channels. I was not over on Flow State very long, but that Linz or Lindsay character and others, they're always treated like garbage. Most women are in the panel channel verse or whatever they call it. And that's what I notice. And I don't treat women like that here that are guests on my show. If I know them or even if I don't know them personally, I try to at least treat them politely with, uh, you know, respect and manners. But, oh, no, Callie disappeared. She must have got disconnected. Maybe her phone battery might have run out. Maybe she'll be back, or maybe she fell asleep. I'm not sure, but in any case, it was my pleasure to have Callie on here. Always. Always a pleasure to have Callie on here. It's one of my favorite guests that I've had on during this whole time that I've had my channel and ran these live streams since, what is it, uh, last year? I think November might have been when these live streams began. Her phone maybe ran out. She was getting tired. So if you went to sleep, good night to Callie. And it was wonderful having you on here. Beautiful, beautiful to have you on once again. And it was great to see you and chat with you like this again. It's always so much fun for me. And I, I just, not just fun. It's very, it's relaxing. It's, it's relaxed and it's comfortable. So it's fun, but it's also comfortable, very comfortable. It's like it's like chatting with somebody that I can just be myself and open and relax with and kind of like a friend that you've known for your whole life since you're children or something. That's the way it kind of feels to me. And it might sound weird to people that might be list maybe listening to this right now, but that's the way it feels to me. It feels very comfortable. And I like that. I like being in a space like that.
their followers always uh inga said their followers will write things in their comments like you can't talk to that steven that steven he doesn't tolerate disagreement etc i always tell them steven actually invites people to talk to him here yes i do i tag them i tag these channels that have attacked me and made threats and all this stuff say come on and clear the air they don't do it they're afraid They'd like to have me as an enemy, as a boogeyman, basically, to point to and say, you know, I'm stressed because of Steven. I'm stressed because of the sanity machine. It's all the sanity machine's fault. And they get more attention. They get more views. They get more money that way. And people fall for it. And what I'm doing is exposing them, saying, stop falling for it. Not the people that are regulars here. You already know, and you don't fall for it. But the odd people that tune in and listen that are not regulars here, don't fall for that stuff. It's tactics by Team Evil. They are manipulators. That's what they are. Okay? They've been invited on here to clear the air one after another. Perpetual pervert, uh, lion sword, little D, uh, green wizard, same guy, uh, creepy Keithy, all of them. Charles, you name it. it go the list goes on. You've seen them tagged on my community post. I've shown it in live streams. And I, I've tagged them. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Elegance and strength. It's a lovely energy combo. We really are. We, we really. We, sorry. We really work well together. And it's not like work. It's just. Uh, it's, a, it's the energy connection, as you said. The energy combo. So. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I wish there was more of that in this realm, to be honest. It really seems like that's becoming more and more rare here. The masculine with the feminine the energy exchange, the calmness, the the great conversation that way, people that live far apart, that there's a connection. And uh, it's sad that, that in this society, at least in Canada, United States, that's really been devastated by design, of course, in this realm. But I wish there was more of that. It's... Uh, There's young men that, how can I put this? There's young men in this realm that have never experienced that. Even one conversation, much less having girlfriends, dating, having a girlfriend, relationship, all that kind of stuff. They've never had that. And when I think about that, it's very sad. And I'm not saying it in a mocking way towards them. I'm saying it in a, in a sincere way, in a caring way fatherly or older brother type of way okay it's not good it's not good for them individually it's not good for society it's not good for women it's not good for men it's really fucked up it's really messed up there are millions of men now that will never have a relationship probably never have a girlfriend or a long-term relationship let's say Long-term meaning at least over a year dating same person. Developing a relationship for years with a woman. They'll never have that. And that's becoming more and more and more common. And also women that they will have one night stands but never have a boyfriend. Some women are reaching, they're not ugly. They're reaching their 30s and they've never had a boyfriend. They've only had one night stands. And men that, you know, had sex with them and dumped them. They never made themselves, quote, girlfriend material or had any relationship, a real relationship, a real loving, trusting, faithful, loyal relationship where they have trust and comfort and have each other's backs and all the things that you go through in a relationship It's it's not something that I just found out today or tonight. 
But th- when I think about it, it's mind blowing. When I think of the number that will never have that, the way things are going, and the way things are going in the West is um, fifty percent of women. I think by twenty. Oh, what was the date? Twenty thirty or twenty forty? Over fifty percent will be single women with no children, and never had a real relationship, never married, and reaching forty. Like it's it's going to be half or more of the population here, childless and and without a man. And this is they're getting what they wanted. What women yelled at uh, men for years. They wanted to be strong, independent women. They said, we don't need men, don't need a man. And now they're getting it and they're more miserable than ever. Most Canadian women are pretty miserable, except the ones with the husband they've been married to. Older women usually have husbands because the, the young marriages don't last too many years and they're done. So, And there's very, very few new marriages here amongst white Canadians. Amongst immigrants, there's marriages. People that just got off a boat or a plane and got here, Okay that were not born in Canada and didn't have their parents born here. Anyway, that's what's going on in this country. Most white Canadian women are not marriage material at all, and men know it. I mean, it's just obvious. Even the dummies, the dumb men, the lower IQ, not just lower IQ, but men that just don't even have any sense. It's not all about IQ. It's common sense matters too. It isn't just about IQ. Okay, but that's just an easy way of phrasing things that becomes a habit, including for me, the low IQ thing. But it's beyond that. And also, I don't quote hate, end quote, people with a low IQ. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, not at all. I don't know what Down syndrome people have in terms of average IQ, but I was friends with a kid who was Down syndrome. In first grade, when I moved to a new school, I went to kindergarten at one school, went to first grade at another school. So I was the new kid in that class. And that was one that I made friends with right away, that kid. I won't mention his name. But I've never been that way. I'm not somebody that just, I'm not what Team Evil tries to get people to make me out to be. I'll put it that way. Not at all. But anyway. What I'm saying is only the foolish men in this country, maybe that's a better way of putting it, marry Canadian women for the most part because most of them are not very trustworthy. They revel in destroying men, taking their money, taking the home, children, all that stuff, making them pay for risking their life to marry them. They pay the price because it's a risk for a man. It's not a risk for a woman. So the men risk to marry them And then they pay for it, you know, which is something women should never be able to do in a society because that wrecks the society. If women have that power, not all women, but many tend to use it to destroy the family, destroy the husband, destroy the family, ruin the children. And that's so common now here. So common. That is true, Inga. Too many women don't respect men. A lot of women will say, why should we care about men? I mean, it's just incredible what they come up with. Can you imagine men saying that? I've never said that in my life. Like, quote, why should... I'm saying it just this way to give an example, but why should it care about women? They they say that just flippantly. Like, that's just nonchalant. Like, oh, why should we care about men? It's It's remarkable. Or I don't need a man. Why would I need a man? I can get a job and make my own money. Women have this idea that getting a job and making their own money is everything in society. It's just for you, though. Anybody can work a job. That's no big achievement. That's just being an adult. Men have always had to do that. It's no big privilege. It's no big achievement. You don't run society and you don't say that you need nobody in society because you have a job. There's even realize what happens when your plumbing breaks? Then you're going to say you don't need a man? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's stupidity. You, a lot of Western women these days make themselves look dumb by what they say. And it's a huge turnoff for men, not just sexually, but a turnoff like, oh, I wouldn't want to date her. She says, I don't need a man. I don't need men. Stay away. Red flags waving the face. 
not just for me. I'm not single. I'm talking about for men half my age. Half my age. Why did women ever believe all the stuff that they were told about men? I just, it's mind-blowing to me how malleable the female mind could be. I could never be that way. That moldable and malleable and just, you know, just like clay or putty in the hands of billionaires just saying, we want to turn them into this. And Rockefeller and Jacob Rothschild and those ones when they were still alive for decades and just molded them and said, yeah, we can, we can do whatever we want with them. They'll believe it. We could make them hate and fear and despise the beings on earth that care about them the most and want to protect them. We can turn them against them. And they will trust us as these evil billionaires and turn against the men in person that show them care and love and protection and and want to be good to them. And it's 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 weird. It's it's mind blowing, but it's worked for decades of feminism. Again, not on every woman, but it doesn't have to work on every woman to be a success for evil. And it was a success for them. It was a huge social engineering victory for Team Evil. Enormous. I would say the biggest in my lifetime has been, uh, the, on their side, the, the win for them has been feminism. It's been the biggest destructive force that they created. Way more destructive than any war. May, way more destructive than any attack, like what happened on a certain day in a certain big city in in uh, the early 2000s, we'll say. Way more impact than that. Way more. That's been their biggest victory. And the impact, it's still its still going through society. It's not over yet. Decades they've had of complete victory with that agenda of feminism. It's almost a total victory. It's almost been enough to stick a fork in all of the Western civilization and say, it's done, it's a wrap, it's over. They're cooked. They can't make it at this point. Okay, that's how devastating it's been. You were given a map of uh, navigating Paris with a map of Rome. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, it bothers me too when this idea is put out there that, and and I hear men repeating it as well now. They've been programmed to say that men are very simple. I would say men are easy to please. I wouldn't call us simple. I think simple is a is a poorly phrased way that comes across as demeaning and as an insult. How simple are men? They've created the most complex machines built on earth. So how simple are they? I don't think men are simple. Show me a man with a with it that's a brilliant artist and you say he's simple. How's he simple? Is he simple because he can draw like you can't draw and paint like you can't draw, paint and imagine creations? that the average person can't, then how are they simple? How are they simple when they can write complex poetry and when they can solve complex mathematical problems, when they can write novels and beautiful songs and symphonies like Mozart? How is that man simple? I don't like that when they say men are simple, women are complex. And I know they'll say, oh, it's emotionally though. They're, they're complex, just like, that just like it's drilled into heads that women mature sooner and men don't mature till much, much, much later. What they don't, they don't mean what they should be saying is men only start earning an income or a stable, bigger income in their 30s later on. It's not physical, it, and women physically mature earlier in puberty. They reach puberty earlier than boys. Physically, girls mature into women sooner on average, then boys mature into men. But in terms of psychologically, emotionally, and all other ways, 
I don't buy it at all for a second. And I never did, even growing up. It, it didn't add up with what I was seeing, that girls were, quote, more mature than boys. They were just looking at older men at comparing the boys as an unfair comparison. If boys did that to 13-year-old girls, the 13-year-old girls would not stack up against 25 or 30-year-old women, maturity-wise, overall. So I really don't buy the whole girls mature quicker and boys are slower to mature. I think physically, yes, but in the other ways, no, no. And I also think that once boys go through that, go through puberty and get the boost of testosterone and everything that comes through with it, the IQ also jumps up. It isn't just growth spurts and strength and physically maturing the body with body hair and all that stuff. It's also intellectually, there is a jump from a boy to a man that happens. And a lot of that has to do with testosterone. Testosterone isn't just the sex drive of the man. It also has to do with the health of a man and the rational thinking of a man. All these things get affected if a man has low T. So you want to have high testosterone. It helps you as a man in so many ways. It makes you healthy and strong, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally. You want to have a strong psyche, not just a strong body. You want to be strong in here and a warrior in here and not just with your forearms and your fists and your biceps and your, you know, your quads, your legs, your shins, not just your ability to kick and punch an elbow and knee and even headbutt, right? You want, you want to have strength inside. And it isn't just a, more, a warrior's mindset. You want to be strong. It's not just a mindset. You want to be strong inside. You don't want a cluttered up, weak psyche that's rotten. They push that, though. It is a myth. They push that, that boys don't mature. Boys are less mature. Boys only get mature around 25 or 30. They keep pushing this. Well, what they really mean is boys can't earn a lot of money at age 13, 15, 16. Even with a decent, full, almost full-time job, or a job that pays, let's say, a lot above minimum wage. And I happen to have be one of those guys at that age. When I was 15, 16, 17, I had good jobs or decent jobs part-time where I had a lot of hours and I earned quite a bit over minimum wage because I was doing man's work, physical jobs in warehouses and lifting things, okay? Physical work. So anyway, um, I don't buy the myth of maturity in that sense. Body maturity, reaching puberty and developing. Yes, girls are earlier. They're quicker than most boys or some boys. Some girls are late bloomers. There's exceptions, but that doesn't change the rule. It's very rare that a girl's only going through puberty or ending it at 16 or 17. Pretty rare. She's just starting it at 16 or 17. It's pretty rare. Okay, that's a real late bloomer. That's a late bloomer even for a boy. But anyways, uh, beyond puberty, the maturity, I don't think there is that much difference. At thir 12, 13, 14, 15, I think girls can be just as immature. And I think what society is doing these days is trying to use girls or women as the yardstick and saying if, if these boys don't behave like girls or women, that they're immature. They want the boys to be like girls. They want boys to behave like girls. They want boys to act like girls, to think like girls, to sit in class around the circle like girls do, to sit down and behave and be proper, well-behaved like girls have a tendency to be able to do, to conform 
Um, they don't. They want to beat the rebelliousness out of boys. Rebelliousness does not mean immaturity. It means the boys are being boys. Because boys are not girls. And girls are not boys. And this has been lost in the West. Okay? With most people. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, I had female friends, not just girlfriends, but female friends, I'll say. Girls who were friends growing up since before kindergarten. Because where I lived was a very small place. There was a little girl that I became best friends with as a little kid. I became best friends with this little girl down the street and we were just inseparable skating on the winter on the rink in my backyard and playing in the summertime swing set and sandbox and out on the grass and you name it you name it we loved each other so i have always gotten along with girls not just in a We'll say a romantic way later on, but in a way of of uh, closeness. And also, my little sister was like Velcro to me. She would follow me around everywhere. She was just like trying to be attached to me, going everywhere that I went, wanting to do everything I did, you know. Follow me around, and my best friend, the girl, won't mention her name, but for a reason, just because of the demons, not because of the people listening. I wish it wasn't that way, but I know what happens. So, I loved my first best friend. She used to give me kisses on the cheek and on my forehead sometimes. And I think she might have even tried to kiss me on the lips as a little kid, a little girl, and said, I'm going to marry you when, when we grow up. She said she wanted to marry me and that she said she would love me forever and all this stuff. But yeah, she had a big crush on me. She wasn't just a friend, I think. She had a crush on me as a little girl. And when she moved away, and then one time she called years later. I hadn't seen her for years. And she called my house. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. She called my house. This was in the days where it wasn't cell phones pick up the phone you don't know who's calling and i i, I don't know if i answered it but or if somebody called me to the phone you have a phone call said you have a phone call steven and i picked up the phone and it was her and it was all these girls kind of giggling in the background laughing it sounded like just like a sleepover party of girls giggling or something and she was talking to me and uh, i think years later after she moved she still had a crush on me but I didn't know what it meant. I was I was kind of clueless as a little boy. And I was like, why are you all giggling? Like, I, I didn't understand what was going on. And anyway, I didn't know all the signs, the little clues that, that girls do when I was that age. But I mean, I wasn't very old. So cut me some slack, people. I wasn't, I wasn't very old. I, I, but uh, ladies love El Diablo and the, the girls... The girls did even, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice now. The girls did even back then. Not all of them, but some of them did. And I got invited to birthday parties, and girls' birthday parties and stuff like that. I remember there was a Ukrainian girl in kindergarten that invited me to her birthday party. And her parents couldn't believe it. They... um said to my mom all excited because they were proud people and they were immigrants to canada her parents and they had bought a house and you know invited these kids over for their daughter's birthday party she was an only child and i remember i still remember them saying to my mom oh and steven is such a, a little guy or a cute little guy but we couldn't believe it he's got the biggest appetite he had three big hamburgers like, he eats like an adult. They couldn't believe it that I could eat like an adult as this four-and-a-half, five-year-old kindergarten kid, and I could eat what a grown adult would eat. 
and I could, I could eat. By the time I was in kindergarten or first grade, I was eating like my dad or more at times. I always had a big appetite. I ate like a Viking is what I'm saying, people. I could, and they couldn't believe it. They said he must have a hollow leg. And my grandma used to say that as well. She'd say, where do you put it all? Do you have a hollow leg? Where do you, where do you put all that food? Because sometimes I would have like two plates of stew and things like that. And then a big slice of cake. My grandma came over one time for my birthday and she baked a cake for my birthday. And I'll still remember it. It's delicious. And uh, it was a lemon cake. And it was just fluffy and lemony. And I mean, I'm talking, I'm going back decades and I can still remember it was delicious. So anyway, uh, oh, I used to ask for more. I'd always ask if I could please have seconds. And if my sisters didn't like something, I would eat their food or, you know, I would try to sneak it. If my sister would be leaving her plate, I'd be like, you know, can I have that? Or I'd say to my sister, don't say anything. And I would eat it for her because she would just leave it and get in trouble. I was one of those kids. Um, I was friends in school with a kid that was a year older than me. And sometimes he would give me an extra sandwich. He would have multiple sandwiches, like a ham and cheese sandwich or something. And I just always had an appetite, like bigger than... A bigger, like a, an appetite that surprised people, bigger than my size. Because I was not the biggest kid, you know. But once I started really growing, I was a late bloomer. I started really growing in high school. And I was still growing after high school. I was one of those kids that really late bloomer, okay? For height and for filling out and all that stuff, okay? So anyway. I always loved to eat. And I would eat right out of the garden as a kid. Green beans. And we would grow peas. Peas in the pod. Open them up and have raw peas and carrots. I'd be eating carrots fresh out of the garden. And there's pictures of me eating these carrots that we had picked out of the garden. So I grew up a country boy. I didn't grow up in the city. We had a backyard garden, a big sized garden. How can I put it in perspective? I'm trying to think now. That garden must have been over 50 feet. It was the length of a house in our backyard. We had a big backyard garden. Grew all kinds of stuff in there. But I remember one year we grew so many green beans, green beans, and I think yellow beans and peas that we were trying to sell them as kids, baskets like full of them because we had grown like a big surplus. And I don't know if my mom was in, wasn't into canning or whatever, but we just had a big surplus. Anyway, we had a lot. So I grew up on that stuff. And in those days, you used to be able to stop at farms, buy fresh meat, fresh eggs from farmers. They've changed so much in this country, made so many things illegal here. The tyrants have gotten their way, and people have supported all these fucking laws and these politicians. I've never voted in my life. Never. People want millions and millions more laws, and it used to be so much better where you could stop somewhere. You know, there used to be places we'd be driving to our cottage. My parents would stop somewhere and there would be a cooler, like, like a fridge, an old fridge, not even plugged in, but with ice in it or something at the end of a farmer's lane by the road. And they knew the spot and it would say a sign, a pay this much or this much for whatever. And it would be the honor system. You open up the fridge, you leave the money in a thing, you put the money into a thing that they had there like a box for the money and you take out what you paid for and leave, whether it was meat or some vegetables, they wouldn't have a person sitting there all day. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. And you'd stop. And, and people in those days were honest enough that you could pay and take the food and be on your way to your cottage or wherever. Like this would be out in the middle of nowhere, driving between towns. 
on a road where a farmer would be selling something like eggs refrigerated just with ice in there or something okay in an old ice box or old fridge i'm not kidding you people this is this is the way things were and there were also stands on the sides of the road selling corn on the cob you know there was a a, a kind that my mom really liked peaches and cream that's what it was known as here and it was corn and uh there'd be big tomatoes that they grew great big fresh tomatoes ripe tomatoes and they'd be selling they'd be selling green beans they'd be selling all sorts of stuff like that there were places like butcher shops you could stop at in way, way out in the country and there'd be bakeries that you like little independent places you could stop at and you could buy uh date squares or uh cookies or uh little treats little pastries little uh cakes or all kinds of things cinnamon fries that were kind of like cinnamon buns and all these different things or a pie or something a fruit pie or whatever all these little places and it's all been it's it's all gone basically it's almost all gone everything has changed so much in this country that the walmarts have taken over and the governments the way they run things have, have ruined a lot of small businesses and and uh farmers and they can't just sell what they want they can't just sell things that way for cash on their own uh it's it's everything like that has gotten worse so when people think that everything's getting better i don't know what they're looking at i don't know what they're looking at you know but anyway i always had a hearty appetite there were places that you could stop and you could get head cheese all right and people probably don't even know what head cheese i probably sound old now but i didn't know what it was when my parents told me what it was in fact i ate it before i knew what it was before they told me what it was i didn't know what it was okay i didn't know what it was and some of you are probably like what do you mean Hi, Manny. Good to see you. Some of you are probably like, what do you mean, Stephen? Head cheese. Yeah, head cheese. You never heard of head cheese? Head cheese. They would make this at butcher shops. Okay. And you're saying you're looking at that going, what? What is that? You're probably looking at that saying, what is that? It looks sort of like this picture a little bit. Not exactly, but similar. What I remember at the I'm talking about at a place when I was a kid when they sold head cheese. So I'm talking about a long time ago, people, not just yesterday. Long time ago. Head cheese. Hoof dock, dockas, takas in Dutch. I don't know how to pronounce that. I can't speak Dutch. Or brawn is a cold cut meat jelly that originated in Europe. It is European. It is my heritage. It's European. <laughs> it's European. And it is made the flesh from the head of a calf or a pig, less commonly a sheep or cow. Okay eaten cold or at room temperature or in a sandwich i used to eat slices of that handed to me right in the butcher shop okay they sliced it thin for sandwiches didn't know what it was made of wow you didn't know it was made of that wendy you know what i miss that stuff if i could get that today somewhere if i could find it sold somewhere i would buy some of it and have it with cheese and just even just eating in a slice oh we ate it too I, at least i did my sisters didn't uh, gotta be honest it was just me it was just me i don't know if my mom ate it either but i ate it i was one of those kids that you could say 
Stephen, are you hungry? And I would say yes, or my mom would say dinner or supper, and I would come running into the kitchen. I was one of those kids that was hungry. I burned a lot of energy the way that I would play, and I would be outdoors running, riding bikes, doing all kinds of stuff, building forts, playing road hockey, you name it, doing all kinds of things. Despite its name, the dish is not a cheese and contains no dairy products. This is what I didn't understand as a kid. I thought, how can it be called head cheese and not contain cheese? Because I like cheese even as a kid. But anyway. I don't know if the kind that I had had brain, eyes, or ears, but... Um, A version with pickled vinegar is known as Seuss. I've heard of Seuss. I didn't know it was that. I've never had that. I've never had the pickled kind of vinegar. I've had pickled eggs, but never pickled head cheese. And I'll tell you, as a kid, I liked it. But I liked any kind of cold cuts, any kind of meat. Cheese was more expensive than red meat. Wow. That's interesting, Wendy. I bet this stuff was healthy for children. I bet it was really healthy. If you could get children, they, nobody had to force me to eat this stuff. Okay. So that might sound weird to people, but they didn't have to force me to eat this. So they have it in all these countries, Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus. Czech Republic, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland. Interesting. Sheep's head. Wow. Ireland, brawn, brawn, considered a rare delicacy, made from a pig's head. Italy, I didn't know that they ate this in Italy. Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Netherlands, even the Dutchies eat it. Dutchies, Belgium, Netherlands and Belgium, head cheese. Wow. Poland. They have head cheese. Portugal. Romania. Russia. I didn't know the Russians ate it. The Russians eat it. Wow. Serbia. Slovakia. Slovenia. Spain. Sweden. It's all over. Switzerland. Ukraine. I didn't know the Ukrainians eat this. United Kingdom in England and Wales. Interesting. Pork cheese in Scotland's known as potted hide. Wow. Africa. South Africa known as salt in Afrikaans and brawn in South African English. It is often flavored with curry. This is interesting stuff to me. Maybe it's boring to some people, but it isn't to me. Asia. I didn't realize it was... A, I never realized it was in this many places. Never knew. Damn. Latin America, Caribbean, Caribbean. Sometimes they call it Car Caribbean or Caribbean. Or Caribbean. Some people call it Caribbean. North America. Alberta. You never tried sheep's head. No, I've not, sheep is really not a big thing in Canada, to be honest. I would go to Iceland to have it, though. Absolutely. 
I mean, I've had head cheese. I've had cow's tongue. That's the 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 uh, Mexicanos, Mexicanos, the uh, senoritas, the Latinas in uh, America will feed you lingua, lingua. It's cow's tongue. So they can you can cook that even in a slow cooker, the cow's tongue. So I think they might be some. Well, not the only one. Some other cultures will eat cow's tongue but I, i've had everything pretty much so sheep's head i would i would eat that no problem no problem no problemo oh wow wendy once a month when the cheddar ran out you waited oh i love i love cheese i love cheese I would send you a basket of cheese, cheese basket. Do they have those there? The cheese baskets sometimes with with uh, jams or jellies and, and different things in them, and they have different cheeses. One of my parents used to get these gifts around Christmas, and a lot of times they'd be, they would be given certain things like cheese baskets and... and uh, Ones with cheese and pate, liverwurst, which I enjoyed on crackers and some things like that when I was a kid, way back in those days. What? I didn't know that you worked in a supermarket in Iceland, Inga. You were taken aback a bit when you saw a sheep set. I bet you were. <laughs> I bet you were. Oh, cheese is plentiful in the UK. Well, I would have sent it to you in, in, in when you were in South Africa, Wendy, if I would have been able to send you a cheese basket. I don't know if you love cheese as much as I do, but I love cheese. I don't know why. I just always have. Some people don't like cheese that much. I like cheese as a kid on snacks and things like that, too. On sandwiches, but also like as snacks. Manny said, Love butter cheese on steak. I don't think I've ever had steak that way. Butter cheese. So for the demons on Team Evil that claim that, oh, five hours, 33 minutes, I just saw the 33 go by. For the demons that claim that I don't talk about anything good or I talk about some things that are good in this realm. I like cheese. Cheese is delicious to me. I like meat. I like cold cuts. I like steaks. I like beef. I like, uh, I would say prime rib. I like even more than steak. There's something about a prime rib roast, rare, rare, hot, but rare and juicy. Oh, it's so delicious. Oh my goodness. It's mouthgasm. So prime rib. Prime rib is just, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. And then after that, it's a combination of steaks. It's, it isn't just ribeyes. I love T-bones. T-bones used to be so plentiful to find when I grew up. I used to eat T-bone steak all the time. Now you can hardly find a T-bone steak. It's so so weird the way things are, but. Oh, the magpies just found the peanuts that you put in the tree for the squirrels. Oh, Wendy, that's lovely. The magpies, I love magpies. Birds, people, we're not talking about pies now. Ribs with nacho cheese and fries. Oh, I love ribs. Ribs, oh my gosh.
beef ribs or pork ribs, baby back ribs, pork or beef ribs. I love them both. I love them both. I love, oh my goodness. I don't know how somebody could be a vegan. T-bone steaks. I, I just love T-bones. You know, Wendy, I had, um, when I was in up north in Canada, when I, I still remember these moose steaks, and I've told this before, but the moose steaks were the size of T-bones, big T-bones. I ate three moose steaks for dinner. Three steaks and potatoes and seafood with them. I mean, I had a big appetite. I was not the biggest guy at that time. This was when I was younger, but oh my goodness. So good. The steaks, I could pack away the food. It just was so good. Had just a beautiful flavor. A little bit gamey, but I ate three big T-bones. And I think the seafood was mussels. Oh, so good. Somebody had been hunting and got a moose. And the steaks were just to die for. I don't want to sound like I'm having mouthgasms here and, and, and trigger YouTube's AI to say that I'm pornographic. But I mean, I, I could almost moan thinking about those, those moose steaks. They were delicious. Ah. No, I haven't had breakfast yet at all, to be honest. Uh, I have not had breakfast. You know what? I think my number one thing to eat is meat. Meat. And then maybe, I don't know if I'd put, what well, what after, I'd put meat, then probably cheese. I would say cheese would come in before eggs or seafood. And I do really like seafood too. Really love seafood. But uh, meat is definitely tops for me. Meat. I am a meat and potatoes guy. I'm a, I'm a Northern European Northern European stock. I don't even know if they use that term anymore, do they? Do they only use that on the genetic tests? Do people even say Northern European anymore? I don't even know if that's, is that an archaic term, like outdated these days? Things have changed so much. It's like waking up in this world sometimes. I don't know where the hell I am anymore, the way that people speak, and, and they don't recognize, if you get what I'm saying. Oh, you grew up on moose steaks and big birds. My goodness. Lucky you, Uni. Moose is so good. Moose is so good. Moose is so freaking good. I wish everybody could try it. You have to. If you get a chance, order that somewhere. If you see it ever. If you're in a country that really doesn't have moose, you know, wild moose, or it's hard to come by, if you see it somewhere, or if you travel somewhere, try it. Do yourself a favor. If you like steak, T-bones, I thought it tasted had more flavor than a good T-bone. Maybe I was just super hungry that time where I was, but oh my God, it was so good. Grilled moose steaks, my goodness. Uh, I've never had zebra, ostrich. What's kudu? I, I would try all of that though, for sure. Try venison. I have had venison. I would say moose is the best that I've ever had. Maybe the one that I ate was blessed, but God damn, it tasted good. You know, right now, I think our conversation is probably causing some vegan demon, demon vegan lurkers to have heart attacks. Their, their blood is boiling. Oh, it's a big antelope. Okay. Kudu. Interesting. Oh, that sounds good, too. Wow, I wonder what zebra tastes like. Zebra.
Yeah, I wondered even if Germanic was still a term. I mean, they've gotten rid of everything. They've changed everything to confuse people. At least over here. Almost if if I said over in Canada or United States, uh Northern European, they'd be they'd be like, What? Where? Where? They wouldn't know where that is. You know? Thank you, Uni. Uni just validated what I'm saying. She Uni is backing me up on this one. It's really good. It tastes much better than any meat I've ever eaten. I was really surprised when I had moose because it's far north. Oh, gosh. Wow. It will give you mouth it will give you mouthgasms and it will knock your socks off at the same time. You'll look down and you'll be like, I'm barefoot. What happened? My socks flew off. So good. You can eat crocodile too. Vegans are getting very angry right now, Manny. They're boiling. Their blood is boiling. They're getting so angry. Anyway, European, Northern European stock is our, we are supposed to be hardy people, not weaklings, not lefties, not crybabies, not little cupcakes, not, uh, we're not supposed to be behaving like some do on YouTube on these other channels. They're acting like little crybaby cupcakes, like, oh, he's bad because he laughed at so-and-so, or he, he did, like, this is not, that's not Northern European Viking or Viking behavior of these people. And there's someone in particular from Finland that should be ashamed of herself, siding with these little wimps. These wimps that can't handle a little bit of teasing. What are they going to do? What are they going to do when a major battle starts? You know, I'm trying to prepare people for war here. Oh, yes, Wendy, I totally, totally agree with you there. The lamb chops, oh my goodness. Those are one of my favorites out of meat. Lamb chops, New Zealand, oh my goodness. Absolutely delicious. 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 I love lamb. I, I was, I don't know if it was just my mom or parents that if they didn't like it, but they didn't really buy that much growing up. Lamb. But I get it often, as often as I, not all the time, but as often as I can. Yes, the soy flakes. Yes, they will be. They will be. Uh... They're crying right now. They're crying just listening to this. They're crying. They're crying their eyes out, these little snowflakes. Special little snowflake vegans. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo, he's talking about eating meat and moose. And, and they're talking about New Zealand lamb chops and how delicious. Boo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> they're talking about eating what they like to eat on their plates. These losers. I call them the food police. Food police. They can't handle what's on someone else's plate. Why don't you there was an expression growing up when I was growing up. Keep your eyes on your own plate. Don't worry about what someone else is eating. It was called keep your eyes on your own plate. I was taught this as a kid, mainly through hearing my sisters told that because they'd keep looking at my plate, at what I was eating or how much I was eating, or if I was already done my first serving and going on a sec, working on seconds while they were still slowly, slowly eating their first serving, okay? I was a hungry kid, not just hungry for food. I was hungry for knowledge. I was hungry, hungry for truth and freedom. I was hungry. I was hungry for things. I was hungry to learn. I was curious about this realm, and I do do that on purpose, but anyways, I was hungry. These vegans right now are boo-hooing. They're crying their eyes out. They're talking about eating animals again. <laughs> They're talking about eating zebras and, and ostrich and, and lamb and moose <laughs> and head cheese of pigs. <laughs> These fucking idiots are crying right now. These little snowflakes, cupcakes are crying. Toughen up, cupcake. We're talking about eating. 
We're talking about something that is actually natural in this realm that you have to do. So why are you crying about when people are pissed off at what we're eating? They should worry about what they're eating. Go outside and pick your dandelions and start eating those and grass and lettuce and, and whatever you can get. Leaves, you know. Tons and tons uh, during harvesting of these fields. Absolutely, Inga. Ground hogs and um, prairie dogs and all kinds. Do you know how many birds die just in, in these fucking windmills? Do you know how many birds those fucking windmills that these green people want to put up all the time? Do you know how many birds those kill? You fucking losers that think they're green and they're saving the environment. You're full of shit. You green green people. You greenies, you vegans, you greenies, you green peace, you know. I'm shaking my head. And it uses so much oil and energy to make those big giant windmills. And then they also malfunction and burst to pieces. And lightning can hit them. And if the wind goes too much off, they can break. I mean, they're, they, they are not environmentally sound. Anyway, just like these lithium-driven fucking vehicles that Elon Musk makes. All this stupid shit fools these people. They're just fools on everything. They get fooled on veganism. You can't survive off of that forever. These stupid vegans. They end up getting sick. When vegans come over to the sanity machine, this is what happens. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> So do I like when those explode, those windmills and fly apart because the wind is too high? Yeah, I do. I don't like those things. I don't like those giant windmill towers. I think it was okay maybe in the old days when the Dutch had these old windmills and it was necessity to have these on their farms. Okay, that was different. That was back then before it was pushed as this environmentalism bullshit things where they have these windmill farms that you drive by, and it's all these all these fucking huge windmills. Anyway, this this realm is bullshit. Nothing is sustainable here, and it all gets recycled and goes into the ground anyways. I mean, it's all rigged. This whole reality is, is a fraud. But don't get me started. I'm getting myself started here in reality, but... Yes, uh, they, that's perfectly said, Inga, perfectly said, well said. Vegans want to feel superior by keeping animals off their plates, but they don't want to deal with all the animals that get killed for their diet. Absolutely. And they also don't want to deal with all the animal products that go into, let's say, a car. There's tons of animal products that go into the vehicles that they buy and drive. Okay? A lot. They'd be surprised. Well, what's fertilizing the plants that they grow that they grow? Animal shit. Animal shit is all over the fields that grow their vegan plants. That's reality. Or human shit. Which is going to contain animal products into waste. They are consuming animals. They can lie, but they are consuming animals. They're just not honest about it. They're not honest about it. They are consuming animals.
Uh, yes, I do agree when Wendy says selective vision. And it isn't just vegans. A lot of, quote, truthers do that. They're very selective with their vision. They have a selective memory, too. They don't like to remember what these creatures did to start these feuds with me or get exposed. They don't like to remember, oh, this person threatened Stephen. Now Stephen's going after them. They just want to blame me for defending myself in retaliation. That's what it is. There's selective memory. A lot of these creeps on Team Evil. They are wimps. They don't want to face reality. I agree. <clears throat> I agree, and I don't respect it. I don't respect that. Not just from vegans. I don't respect people in general that are that way. I prefer honesty. People that can just be honest. Yes, you are not made for that, Uni. You are a Vite Queen. You, you can't live off of just plants. Very few people can. Very, very few. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Very few people can. Can. Yeah, out of mind, out of sight, Inga. The if I don't see dead animals, then there are no dead animals. Yeah, it's the same. Pe it's the same attitude a lot of people have with war. They don't see anyone dying, so there's no war in another country. Or um, if they don't see flames in the oh, it's not a hell realm. I don't see people being burned alive everywhere. They just they're so limited. I think that's a big part of this place. It's a lot of people are so limited. They're so goddamn limited. Someone that said they had not uh, five hours, 53 minutes. Some Thanks for the reminder, Wendy. Somebody said that they had not watched my channel a long time and they tuned into a live stream and they heard me singing to close off my live stream. Was it last night or yesterday morning, like 24 hours ago, singing Wish You Were Here? They heard me serenading and they had never heard me sing. I guess they have not been around or... You know, there's people that are weird. They stop watching. And there's people that are weird, man. There's people that are weird. But uh, you would think if they love my channel, they would watch no matter what. But it isn't that way. People aren't that way. So, so you think you can tell heaven from hell. Blue skies from pain. Can you tell a green field from a cold steel rail? A smile from a veil? Do you think you can tell? Did they get you to trade your heroes for ghosts? Hot ashes for trees? Hot air for a cool breeze cold comfort for change did you exchange a walk-on part in the war for a negro in a cage how i wish 
How I wish you were here. We're just two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl year after year, running over the same old ground. What have we found? The same old fears. Wish you were here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So there I did it again. I serenaded again. The same song as yesterday. Yesterday. All our troubles seem so far away. I'm sorry, people. I'm just in a mood. I'm in a singing mood. I'm in a singing mood. I'm in a mood of talking for almost six hours and then staying up all night and singing to you a cappella. A cappella when I'm not really a singer and uh, just going for it. Being fearless and saying, you know what? I'm going to sing to my audience because they deserve a song. So I'm going to sing to them. I'm going to sing my heart out. And I'm going to sing until it smacks the smirk right off the faces of team evil lurkers. The losers that just stick around to nitpick and make their videos and say what I'm doing and fixate on me. Now that you eat meat, eggs, raw dairy. Oh, I wish I could get raw dairy here. You, you can't. It's illegal here. It's illegal in this country. They can literally be the food police. Literally, literally, literally in this country. Due to these tyrants. Motherfucking tyrants. How I wish, how I wish you were here. We're just two lost souls. Swimming in a fishbowl year after year. Running over the same old ground. What have we found? No, I don't think so at all. Not anything uh, raw. Not raw milk. I'm not totally sure about raw dairy, but you know what happens when you allow fuckheads to control things? They make everything illegal. You know, they would make freedom illegal in this realm there's fuckheads in this realm, Inga, that would make it illegal for your spirit to leave here if they could. That's how con controlling they are. There's control freaks in this realm. I'm telling you. Have you seen the new uh, hate speech laws in Scotland? The new hate speech is targeting white people in Scotland. Are you familiar with this? What's going on in Scotland? A lot of shit going on because these these little petty fucking little tyrants, these little these scrawny necked little tyrants want to control everyone else. They're control freaks. That's what they are. That's what they are. They are tyrants, They're petty little control freaks. And the, de the demons of the New World Order love using these little tools out there that control your food, control your free speech, control everything. So here we go. I don't know what this is. GB News, Great Britain News, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully it isn't copyright. I don't know, but I'm going to I'm going to play this people. Well, look, let's talk hate monsters. I could be describing anyone really, couldn't I? But I'm not. I'm describing a specific advert. Listen and watch. You might know this thing here. It's the hate monster. You'll be there feeding off the emotions. Getting bigger and bigger. Till he's weighing you down. He'll make you want to have a go at somebody. A neighbour, somebody on the street, on a night out. Security guy on the door, somebody in the chirpy, 
your taxi driver. He'll make you want to vent your anger just because folk look or act different for you. The hate monster wants you to feel what you need to show. You're better than them. Then, before you know it, you've committed a hate crime. Doesn't make you feel better though, does it? Maybe for a minute, but then you just feel worse, don't you? Because the hate just hangs about like a bad smell. But it doesn't need to be like this. You're better than that. You know it. You've got all this energy, so do something positive with it. The hate monster doesn't like that. In fact, he hates it. Go on. Be good to yourself. Don't feed the hate monster. Obviously, I'm desperately trying my best now uh, not to do my fantastic accent impression. I don't think you can do that in this day and age. If I did, I'd probably find myself in trouble uh, because these are new laws which commence. Uh, they take effect from the 1st of April in Scotland. Um, it's the hate crime law, to be precise. And there's a lot of criticism. I mean, that advert on its own, by the way, says Scotland, please, please, Scotland. Uh, they were on their website that it was men aged 18 to 30 from socially excluded communities. Men aged 18 to 30. Okay. Targeting. Targeting. It's with ideas about white male entitlement. Ideas about white male, quote, entitlement. What entitlement? We are being persecuted. If, if we were the other people, we'd be crying our eyes out, but we don't cry over it. We don't cry over it. We don't yell and say we're oppressed and, and cry about it. But they have laws against us designed targeting us. That are particularly likely to be perpetrators of hate crime. I can tell you now, many people uh, have reacted in not a pleasant way to that. But these targeting new hate young men. Looks like she's got some ink there. Right there, right on her wrist. I mean, oh my goodness. Crime laws. Even the so people many in the people news have ink. This is incredible, though. Now, are saying that it's just. But at it's least all she gone doesn't seem like a lefty. I don't think she's a leftist. Too far. The police have said that they're going to respond. Um, they're going to look at all, every single one of these that's reported which has created a backlash in itself uh, because the police for low-level crimes are not really doing as much as they ought to be perhaps in Scotland. They're going to lock up everybody that they can. The police are going to go after everybody, but they don't lock up the violent thugs, the murderers, the ones that, that are doing horrible things that I can't speak about here, but you know what I mean, to children. Why can't you lock them up? Fuck's sakes. Scotland, but where are you on all of this, Stan? Well, um, uh, the the biggest hate crimes at the moment, of course, the most obvious ones are the outbreak. What about the grooming gangs in the UK that are not white? Why don't you go after them? You're going after white men that say a couple things on the fucking internet? You call it a hate crime? What the fuck is going on? The break of anti-Semitism we're seeing in the country. And that hasn't mentioned at all, because the left have decided that they want to focus the whole hate crime agenda on the white working classes and on their views. And the police Scotland are quite explicit about that. If you're poor, if you're white, if you're male, they're coming for you for a hate crime. Um, and, and, and all it means very often is you're expressing your, your, your views that are quite normal in your community and that many people would share. Uh, I, I'm deeply worried about the whole notion of hate crime. Mm. Um, it's, what it's, is a, quote, hate crime? How can you define that? And why are they targeting young white men? Okay. And I want to ask everybody in the chat room, do you see other channels on YouTube covering this? It's a new idea. It, it obviously involves censorship. And there are occasions, I grant, when censorship might be appropriate in a very extreme cases. Censorship might be appropriate, but there's a very delicate balance to get there, uh, to get right there. And it's been pushed all the wrong way. And people are now being uh, shut up and visited by the police and threatened by the police uh, because of things that they've said. Uh, and, and who knows, you know, next it'll be things that you've thought or written down on, and so on. And private communications in families, they'll be coming for those as well. And this is a very, very clear left-wing agenda to make war on ordinary people. That's what they're trying to do. And no mention, of course, of hate crime from the left, the anti-Semitism we're seeing, any of that sort. That's all being wiped out of it. 
the threat they're trying to say is always going to come from the right. And by the right, they mean poor, the poor, the working class, the male, the white. They can't cancel me. I don't do this for money. They can't take money out of my pocket. They can't do anything to me. And I will keep speaking the truth. This is what is happening in Scotland right now. Okay? They have a hate monster, ridiculous campaign talking down to adults like they're children with this hate monster fucking campaign and laws against young white men. Disgusting. Kevin? Uh, I, I, I mean, this story is about something that's been done in Scotland. I, I don't think that the ad itself is a particularly effective piece of communication. The ad was yeah, a six, yeah, yeah, it was a six week uh, online ad that ran in, in spring 2023 and is not as such linked to the legislation. Um, I don't think it's very effective. I think a lot of the, the, the people who would be committing hate crimes are not going to look at that ad and go, oh, I'm going to change and turn into a nicer person. So I don't think it's effective. And then, you know, Daniel's characterizing there. Uh, he's talking about the left, this, that. I mean, uh, you know, I just don't agree with a lot of that. There's a lot of people on the left in the Labour Party who are deeply concerned about uh, increases in anti-Semitism, have been very on the record about it. So to carry, I, I don't know who Daniel thinks has got a war on the white working class. Oh, but, so, really let, hang on, Daniel, just to say, and then I'll, I'll shut up. I don't know who you think has got a, a war on the white working class, but I can tell you someone who came from that background, it's not the Labour Party, so I don't know who, who has. Well, it's the leadership of the SNP, isn't it, who are doing this? They just said yourself, it's in Scotland, it's the Scottish government, it's led by the SNP. I yeah. made no reference to the Labour Party. Yeah, but I think you said the left. The I... left, yeah, yeah, the left. These people are extreme leftists. The SNP government, in Scot SNP Green Coalition in Scotland, mm. is an example of an extreme left-wing government. Even in Wales, Mark Drakeford, a recognised Corbynista, has been running a government um, for some years, he's standing down now, running a government for some years, which is well to the left of where Keir Starmer would be, which is why he's not actually welcome in Keir Starmer's um, councils and, uh, 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 and leadership office. I find this, um, uh, what's going on in Scotland, these new laws, particularly uh, concerning because, for me, nobody really has got a right not to be offended. I mean, I, I wouldn't deliberately go out and try and upset someone yeah, or hurt yeah. somebody yeah. or whatever, but life, that is life. You are allowed to dislike somebody. Yeah. You are allowed to dislike something. I mean, heaven forbid, if that's your gravity, you're even allowed to hate something. It's not a criminal offence. And this whole notion that actually if you or if someone perceives that you have acted in a way that's hurtful or, or, or whatever, hateful, you could then be criminalised. They've popped up all of these kind of uh, reporting places now. So one of them that's in the news lot is a sex shop where people can go in. You can anonymously log this uh, hate crime now. Mm. This can all be logged and all the rest of it. It could just be someone with a grievance against you. Some of this stuff, by the way, you could even be saying in your own home. Yeah, but, but I mean, isn't it always the case that people with grievances against you could always try and twist the law and, and abuse, abuse it to try and get at a person? But, I mean, isn't, isn't the background to a lot of the legislation around hate, hate crimes about just trying to make people feel safer? Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that like a good thing to, to seek, you know, to try and minimise violence against women, racism, you know, homophobic crime. Isn't that a good of thing? Of course, and I want people, like I particularly yeah. don't like, um, I don't like awful bullying. I don't like nasty bullying. Absolutely. And I like, you know, I've got a little boy and I see the way children interact with each other yeah. and I see if a child is being unkind to each other. Yeah. I, I don't like any of that. But at the same time, life isn't always a bed of roses. I know. People are allowed to have uh, negative feelings towards things and others or whatever without necessarily ending up with a criminal record mm. because of it. And there you go. You shouldn't get a criminal record for speaking. For speaking words. For speaking words. And you know what else? Comedy isn't criminal. If I laugh at someone, it might hurt your feelings. But it's not a crime to have a sense of humor and to laugh. Comedy is not criminal. And even if they did say it's a crime, I would, I would not respect that as a crime. Because I am for 
being able to express myself freely, freely, okay? And they want to stop people. Everything is. Swearing is part of, yeah, swearing is part of it, but everything is. Everything is. They're allowed to call me all kinds of things, but they want to restrict language. Certain groups will say. Certain groups and certain demographics. So anyway, this is what goes on. They try to control the masses through controlling language. The ability to express yourself freely without having to worry about being arrested for your fucking words. So they get people worried so that they can't even express themselves. Yes, uh, they want to censor and, and cancel. They want to censor us. They want to muzzle us. They want to cancel us. They want to pull all this shit because they are the cowards. They are the tyrants. They are the tyrants. These lefties and these uh, LGVD groups they are the tyrants. You notice who the target always is. Just like it is in Scotland. Young white men. And straight. They could also put that in there. Because that's the reality. You know, they're not going after ones that aren't straight. So let's get real here. It's young, straight, white men that are the target in Scotland and across the West. Okay? So some dummies have said to me, well, what do you care? You're not young anymore. No, I'm not under 30. I'm not under 35. What do I care? I don't want that to happen to them. I want them to have a place to live, the young men that are 35 and under. I want them to have freedom. I don't just want freedom for myself. I don't just want a home for myself or a place that feels like home. I want it for them too, for the Scottish men, for the English, the Irish, the German men, the French, the Finns, the Swedes, the Icelanders, Icelandic people. I want it for them as well, okay? It's weird, isn't it? But it is the truth. That's what I want. People act like it's weird these days. Well, what do you care? You're older. You're not under 35. What do you care if they restrict their speech? You're not living in Scotland. I don't have to be in, living in Scotland to care about it. Fuck, some people, I, I, that's what really bothers me. I'm not saying anyone here, present company is doing that, but I've experienced that before.
Hey, sorry about that dead air. I just picked up my breakfast. I have breakfast now. I have an El Diablo egg McMuffin. It's an El Diablo with Canadian bacon on it. Egg and Canadian bacon and some hash browns. And I have a coffee. And I'm fueling up on these eggs and bacon to keep this going. I worked up an appetite, staying up all night. So McDonald's, you can sponsor me for this. Pay me extra. Pay me well. Pay me now. Give me the big bucks that Team Evil wishes they could get. Give me the big money that Team Evil can't get running their stupid YouTube channels. Give me the big bucks. I'm holding up a Mick Cafe coffee right now with cream in it. Two creams in this one. No sugar, two cream. I used to drink cream and sugar. I got away from eating a lot of sugar years ago. Except for the odd dessert. Slice of pie, piece of cake, something like that. But I don't need sugar and coffee. And you know what? The cool thing is eventually, it won't even take that long. If you're a coffee drinker, you quit putting the sugar in it. You get your taste buds back and it'll taste sweet just with cream in it. Your body adjusts. That's the weird thing or the cool thing, whichever way you want to look at it. Your taste buds adjust and everything tastes sweeter once you kind of drop sugar, having so much sugar. I still have bread. I'm having McMuffins, these egg McMuffins. They're, they're carbs, they're sugar. But I don't have high sugar. I went keto for a while, a while ago. And uh, tried that out. I'm one of those people that, that is willing to try different things. So I've never done full carnivore, but see, I, I think I would miss too many things on that. Yes, full fat milk. So this is cream. These are two creams. So that's enough sugar. It's enough sweetness. I don't need one or two sugars in this coffee. Canada people are used to drinking what's called a double-double. It's two sugars, two creams, and coffee. Very popular in Canada. You always hear of it growing up. As a kid, you'll hear adults ordering double-double. You know, Tim Horton's double-double, McDonald's coffee, double-double, wherever they get a coffee, a double-double. But anyway, I don't need all that sugar. So now I treat like sugar is like it's a treat for me. It's not all day. Anyway. That's what I do. I'm not telling anyone, anyone else to do that, but that's what I do. If somebody else says to me, hey, I'm on a keto diet or somebody says, hey, I'm full carnivore. Great. More power to you. I would never tell somebody what to eat, what not to eat, how to eat, you know. Uh, maple syrup. I will still have maple syrup on pancakes, but I don't have pancakes or French toast that often. But I do love maple syrup. And I have since I'm a kid, so I am a, a true northerner. A true Canuck. I do like maple syrup. And as a kid, we had, we had a field trip to a place where they made maple syrup and make maple sugar cookies out of maple syrup. 
And the little maple sugar cookies were um, shaped like a maple leaf. And uh, I had some, we had some big maple trees on our property growing up. Including some red maple trees with red leaves, not quite ginger, more of a burgundy color, not a, not a red, like a gingy red, but a, the red maple is a beautiful tree. And the red maple in fall, the leaves would turn like usually, uh, they would turn, well, they would kind of turn super red. And then the regular maple tree we had would turn like a golden, not just yellow, but really golden colored, really beautiful. And I still remember our trees where I grew up. Still remember the trees. Oh, Wendy, you have a Canuck friend? It sent you some maple syrup, really. Oh, wow. I didn't know that you do other Canadians. Interesting. Oh, the maple cookies. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I loved those when I was a kid. I remember having those at the place where they made the maple syrup. And they showed us how they make it, how they boil the sap. And we were in the whole place. We had a tour of the place. And then we went in this other building where we made some apple cider on a big wooden press. We pressed the apples by hand, by cranking this handle. So we made our own apple cider. And um, also we made our own pork sausage. We made our meal, basically. Or a lot of it. We made a big part of what we ate as a classroom at this field trip we had. It was awesome as a little kid. I might have been in like third grade, maybe something like that. I thought it was so cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. You know, kids like that hand hands-on stuff a lot of times. I don't know if they do that anymore with children. Where they're involved in doing something. You have a Tim Hortons in England. Oh, what? Really? They've expanded that far. Oh, that's crazy.
Tim Horton was a hockey player, Canadian hockey player. He started a donut shop, coffee shop and donut shop. It's corporate owned now. I think another country owns it. I don't think it's Canadian anymore, but um, I don't think it has been for years. But his family really screwed themselves when they sold it. They sold the rights to the name. And they're not rich, and they should be multi, multi millionaires. They should probably have 50 or 100 million dollars, but they really screwed themselves. It's always best to hire somebody to negotiate contracts with you if you're just an average person. Spend a little bit of money, it'll go a long way. What's that old expression? Trying to save pennies and you spend pounds, something like that. Spend the money to hire someone if you have a big deal like that to help you out with a contract. To do negotiations and to know what something's worth so that you don't screw yourself. His family screwed themselves completely. Pound wise, penny foolish. Thanks, Chris. I'm not sure who you are, but thank you for that. So, yeah, they were foolish in that respect because they really screwed themselves. And you can't even really say that they, the, the corporation screwed them. They pretty much screwed themselves. Still sad, but I mean, that's what happened. I remember watching a documentary on them and it was showing them in it and none of them looked very happy to have inherited so many restaurants with the Tim Horton's name and whatever money they did get, I think they blew through it very quickly and it wasn't that much. They were foolish. Oh, do you two know each other? I don't know who Chris is, to be honest. Chris might be thinking of Wendy's hamburgers. Said, hi, Wendy's. Chris thought he was at the drive-thru, the Wendy's drive-thru. I think Chris was like, uh, hi, Wendy. Can I get a Dave's double with bacon? Rebecca. You know me through Rebecca? I don't know who Rebecca is. But here it is. Here's Chris saying, Hi, Wendy's. My order ready? Oh, Bex. I never call her Rebecca. You mean Bex? Oh, um, you know Bex?
Bex is not going to be happy. I'm having McDonald's right now. Bex is going to be upset. So is Franny. Franny's going to be upset. I'm having a coffee with caffeine. Franny's got to mark that down on his list. He keeps track of how many drinks with caffeine I have. That's his job. I don't pay him for it, but. Bex doesn't have the deal with McDonald's that I do. I get lots of money from sponsorship. Yeah, Franny, get on that. You better double check that checklist. One medium coffee with two creams. Write that one down. With caffeine, not decaf, Brandy. I'm having caffeine for once. Write it down, Franny. Don't forget. That's your job. That's your job now, Franny. That's up to you. You've got to get it straight. It's up to you. And I'm having this El Diablo, two of them actually, one with Canadian bacon and the other one with bacon, egg, El Diablo, egg McMuffin. Have you ever had those, Chris? Do you know, do you like the El Who's Van? Oh, okay. No prob no problemo. You tend to avoid fast food. Twenty-one stone Debbie Wood is morbidly obese and hasn't worked in four years. <laughs> she lives in a two-bedroomed council house and along with her husband gets £1,500 a month in benefits. You can't turn around and say to somebody, oh, because you're obese, it's your fault. It wasn't my fault the way it came on. Really? It's not your fault? Then whose fault is it? Who forced you to eat? You weren't born 300 pounds. Seriously, why do we let them get away with these kinds of arguments? If someone smokes three packs of cigarettes a day, we can say, hey man, you're destroying your health, and everyone cheers. But if someone eats 10 cheeseburgers for breakfast and you point out that it's maybe sort of a little unhealthy to do that, well then you're a terrible person who needs to be canceled. Never mind that these people are so troubled in terms of their health that they can't even stand for a few minutes. The council have specially modified Debbie's home to accommodate her needs. My occupational therapist had the council put in a wet room for me. I've had this specially adapted because uh, I can't stand for too long. This is actually the longest I've stood for a while. She can barely even stand. I'm so tired of this crap. At some point, we're all going to have to say that the people who promote health at every size are bad people. You cannot be healthy at 300 pounds. These people are a whore for enabling obese people by lying to them and saying that they are healthy. Because the reality is that obese people have all kinds of health problems, and the ones promoting health at every size are preventing obese people from fixing themselves by telling them that they are healthy. Speaking of all the health problems that come with morbid obesity, let's talk about some of them. But first, if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps keep me independent, and it helps fund the channel. Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget to support me on Alt Tech. 
Links to my Odyssey channel and my Minds page can be found in the description as well. All right, so these clips come from a documentary called 87 Stone. For those of you who don't know, one stone is 14 pounds. The documentary features three people, Debbie, who is 43 and 295 pounds, Barry, who is 35 and 435 pounds, and Les, who is 45 and 490 pounds. I'll talk briefly about Les and Barry, but their stories aren't as interesting and there's not as much to learn from, so I'm mostly going to talk about Debbie. That being said, let's see what else Debbie has to go through. I have OCD. I have Othello syndrome. I have fibromyalgia. I have arthritis. I have facial palsy and I have scoliosis. Some of those are psychological disorders. Arthritis, fibromyalgia, and facial palsy can all be related to obesity. That stuff, plus the fact that she can barely do basic things like standing up. Debbie's not the only one who has health problems from her weight. Let's hear from Les. In South Wales, 35 stone Les is also on disability benefit. Today, he's organizing his medication for the week. These tramadol painkillers, this is gabapentin because of the diabetes. Omeprazole, I take about 17 times. Wait a second, I think I recognize that guy. Does anyone know the guy on the screen? I think this guy has been reporting my channel. I think this is, is that the Demon Slayer? I think that's him. That's him. He claims he's not an incel, but I think this is the Demon Slayer. That's why he has all that time to make videos about me. I think this is him. Found him, everyone. This is the Demon Slayer. This is the Demon Slayer. He won't, he won't show his face, but that's him. That's ham. That's ham. Tablet today. Uh, if the pain is bad, I can take more of the painkillers. We have two things here related to obesity, which are diabetes and chronic pain. Also, later in the documentary, Les gets gout in one of his legs. He takes about 17 tablets a day of medication. I'm not sure if that's 17 tablets total or if he was just talking about the painkillers. Either way, that's a lot of medication. Something that is not mentioned in this scene is that Les also has to use skin creams to keep himself from blistering or getting infections. Infections can be deadly, and they are something that all obese people of his size have to worry about. I imagine that Debbie has to worry about this as well. Also, much like Debbie, Les is in denial. You are what you are. You know, if you're meant to be fat, you'll be fat. If you're not, you're not. I don't want to be this size. I've never wanted to be this size. Right. You have no control. Wait a second. Show his size again. This is for the ladies. Okay. Wow. Also, much He's like Debbie, single, Les is in denial. You are this guy's single. This is de this is the Demon Slayer on YouTube. This is the Demon Slayer. He's single. He hasn't seen his willy in 30 years. This is the Demon Slayer on YouTube, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Demon Slayer. What did you eat? What did you eat? What the hell did you eat? Well, you are. You know, if you're meant to be fat, you're fat. If you're not, you're not. I don't want to be this size. I've never wanted to be this size. Right. You have no control over the situation. People just eat what they eat, and God decides who will be toned and muscular and who will be obese. Don't judge me unless you've walked a mile in my shoes. Les can't walk a mile in his own shoes because just hauling his 35 stone body around at home can be a struggle. Outside of the slight jabs that this documentary gives its subjects, I almost can't entirely blame them for saying things like this because for more than a decade, people in the media have been telling everyone that being overweight is not a problem. You cannot judge a person's health based on how they look. You cannot judge a person's health based on how much they weigh. Yes, you can. Stop lying to people. That was Cassie Ho, who runs a YouTube channel called Blogilates that has over 5 million subscribers. This channel is known for great things like promoting toning through low-intensity, high-rep exercises, which is a myth. That's not how you get toned. Toning is achieved primarily through diet and loss of body fat, not through doing lots of low-intensity arm waves. If you don't already have the muscle to look toned when your body fat is low, then you get it by doing high-intensity resistance training along with eating surplus calories. But thank you, Cassie, for wasting tons of people's time by sending them down the wrong path. Let's see what she knows about dieting. Here's a tweet from last year. It says, It's been 365 days since I made the decision to get in the best shape of my life. 
looking at this a little closer, on day one on the left, we see Cassie looking pretty good. On day 365 on the right, we see someone who is very malnourished and very underweight. Having an extremely low body fat is not healthy, especially for women. I'm surprised her dietitian let her get that thin. If Cassie thinks that being this thin is healthy, then I don't think she's qualified to talk about health as it relates to weight, which really is no different from any of the other people who promote health at every size. Getting back to the documentary, let's talk about addiction. If you are obese, especially if you are morbidly obese, then you are an addict. You are addicted to overeating. Rule number one of dealing with addicts. Addicts always lie. 21 Stone Debbie Wood and her husband receive $1,500 a month in benefits. I do get organic stuff, so I do pay out a bit uh, extra. This is a lie that obese people commonly tell. Addicts are always working to make their situation look better than it is. And the way tons of obese people do that is to say, I eat healthy all the time. Look, I'm eating a salad. Debbie states that she buys organic, and during the entire documentary, she tries to make it look like she's eating healthier than she actually is. Debbie, please. I was in the fitness industry. I'm not an idiot. I know how much someone of your size actually eats. First off, tons of things that are organic are also unhealthy. I've seen organic cookies, organic cakes, and organic ice cream. Buying expensive food with fewer pesticides and no antibiotics doesn't magically make it fewer calories. Second, I have said before that mentally unhealthy people don't know what's appropriate behavior, so when they pretend they are happy or they have good relationships, they always make mistakes. It's the same with people who are physically unhealthy. We see that Debbie here has a nice salad full of nutrient-deficient iceberg lettuce. And what is that? A Pepsi. What's the point in spending double the price for organic food if you're just going to drink Pepsi? Then we can see that she has dumped a bunch of butter and mayonnaise all over her salad. Those toppings have a ton of calories in them. The butter, the dressing, and the soda have to be at least five to 600 calories, plus the lunch meat on the side. So in this case, we have a seven to 800 calorie meal. Here's a second example of a meal that actually looks correctly portioned, though you can see her dumping mayo all over her fries. Now, if she was only eating three meals a day, this would likely be a good portion for a 43-year-old woman, maybe slightly more than what she needs. But Debbie eats five to six times a day, and she barely exercises, so this is way too much food. Remember, she's on TV and is probably trying to look good for the cameras. This is what she thinks is healthy, and it's still too much. If you want to know how much people of her size actually eat, then watch My 600 Pound Life. My favorite thing about that show is its brutal honesty about obesity. This next part is where things get a little grotesque. In Britain, there seems to be a ton of state-provided care for people who are on disability. In Debbie's case, it's insane what she's given. First of all, Debbie and her husband get 1,500 pounds a month. That may not sound like much, but this is including the taxpayers paying for most of their major expenses, rent being a part of it. 21 Stone Debbie and her husband Steve get £1,500 a month in benefits. They pay £60 a week in rent. I did a Google search on the area that she lives in, and she pays about 30 to 50% of what she should be paying for a two-bedroom house. Thanks, taxpayers. In addition to this, Debbie's husband, 32-year-old Steve, gets paid 700 of that 1,500 pounds to take care of her. Although husband Steve is university educated and is fit enough to work, the state have paid him to be her full-time carer for the past year. Steve has a college degree and apparently is fully capable of working a decent job. Honestly, I don't believe that for a second. I think he got some useless degree and can't find work. The list goes on. Debbie also has a housekeeper who cleans her house three times a week. I find it very hard to do certain things because of my weight. One of the things 21 Stone Debbie finds hard is household chores. Luckily, though, the council have provided her a cleaner who comes round three times a week. Wait, so Steve gets paid to take care of her full time and they have a housekeeper as well? Why can't he clean the house? It's only two bedrooms and they don't have things like kids constantly making messes, so it should be easy. I'm surprised the housekeeper even needs multiple visits a week to keep the house clean. This is ridiculous. But we aren't done. Debbie also gets a new kitchen entirely for free all on the taxpayer's dime. And of course, she has tons of complaints about her free kitchen. 
She's also just had a brand new kitchen installed by the council, but she doesn't seem happy. The plastering is absolutely abysmal. Do you feel how rough that is? Out of 100, I would give it 60. So cracking that cupboard at the top lot. That, I think you'll find, is paint. Yeah. Oh, God, stop. It was free. Stop complaining about a little scratch and a rough drywall job. If you want good contracting work, then pay for it yourself. Uh, taking this next clip into account, you can see why Debbie is so entitled while spending other people's money. I've paid into my system. I'm entitled to get the stuff that we get. That's not the first time I've heard that excuse for abusing the welfare system. I don't believe for a second that Debbie paid in as much as she's getting out. Before she went on disability, she was a housekeeper and a psychic. There is no way she made any significant money as a psychic. Only the top con artists in that field actually make money, and that requires a kind of work ethic that I have not seen from Debbie. I'm just going to say that she was a housekeeper. I don't know what the salary of a housekeeper in the UK is, but it certainly does not pay enough for her, just on the percentage tax, to pull in 800 pounds a month, get half of your rent paid for, a free maid, several free remodels, and 700 pounds for her husband to take care of her. Be honest with yourself. You are not a net taxpayer in this case. And on that note, a big reason why I don't like welfare is because it forces taxpayers to enable people like Debbie. The truth about addiction is that if you let it play out long enough, addicts by their own doing pretty much always lose the ability to support themselves. So the only thing allowing their addiction to be maintained is other people's support. <laughs> if they lost that support, they would either be forced to change or suffer the consequences of their disease. If you actually want addicts to get better, then you have to be harsh in your thinking. Stop progressing their illness by enabling them. Since welfare or benefits pay removes all the consequences of Debbie's poor eating habits, she has no reason to change. The whole idea of this documentary was to talk about people who were too overweight to work while maybe implying that they were trying to get back to a job. But the government has made it so comfortable for Debbie and her husband that they have zero reason to get off their asses and go work. If it wasn't for welfare, she wouldn't be able to afford the excessive amounts of food that she eats. Also, as their disease progresses, what addicts very often end up doing is they will just start abusing other people around them. Debbie certainly does that to her husband, Steve. And maintaining Debbie's extremely high standards isn't easy. Watch the eggs. Why are you putting them there? You know the door's going to swing back. And I'm going to stand here and hold the door because I'm in pain. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to hold the door. I don't want to do it. In all honesty, this scene doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's not great. I certainly wouldn't want to be spoken to that way, but it's not hyper abusive. The documentary kept insisting that Debbie was abusive, but didn't really do that great of a job displaying it. So I did some digging and found this Daily Mail article. It says that she checks her husband's phone and email and forbids him from looking at pictures and adverts featuring other women. That is quite intrusive. And she actually gets mad at him during the documentary for looking at a picture of a woman in a newspaper advertisement. Debbie and Steve also did an interview where it was revealed that she doesn't let him watch what he wants to watch on TV. The, the, the fact that you, you're not allowed to watch what you want on the TV struck me as quite interesting. Well, that again, you see, I tend to watch sport like football. I'm a huge F1 fan, I'm a huge motorsport fan. I never used to watch much else anyway, to be honest with you. This guy is like a beaten animal. Yeah, well, my wife only lets me watch sports on TV, so I guess everything else sucks and my desires don't matter. She also said that if there's a woman on TV, he has to change the channel. <laughs> were you stopped from watching women on the television? I mean, you were even stopped from watching Anne Robinson. <laughs> it is true, even commercials sometimes, you, you, you're told to switch over because it could be a woman shaving their legs in a commercial and it's a very yeah. pretty woman and you're not happy about that. But of course, in true abuser fashion, it's not a problem at all if she wants to look at other guys. Difference when between... we came in this morning and you were sitting over there, uh -huh. we're going to do our promo. You said, hi, Philip, looking lovely today. And I said, well, be careful. Otherwise, he's going to feel jealous. Why can you do it? And he can't. I'll tell you what, Philip, you look gorgeous. Wow. That save after Debbie got stumped came from a man who was very afraid of pissing her off. And we still aren't done with Debbie's abusive behavior. When she is feeling self-conscious, Debbie makes Steve take a lie detector test to prove his commitment to her. This one was a response to something that happened on a walk they took, which was Debbie's first time leaving the house in eight months. We were talking about Mel B in the shop. I, what I want to know is, 
did you find her picture attractive? No. So you did find Melby attractive then? Right. Unconvinced he's telling the truth about his feelings for Mel B, Debbie makes Stephen retake the test. Good God, Steve. You cannot be this much of a loser. At this point, you would be much better off alone. Not only is she super controlling from what she was willing to admit, but she's actually limiting Steve's growth. Steve says that he could not possibly get a job because he doesn't want Debbie worrying about who he might talk to at work or what women he might see. Me getting a job in the future is something I've thought about, but with her mental condition me getting a job would she be wondering what i'm up to 24 7. of course she doesn't want you working a job because you might talk to people at work who will point out that she's abusive a key strategy abusers use is to isolate you from other people who would criticize your situation or help you if you're in trouble that's why steve can't work and that's why he has to be around her all the time outside of when he gets her food so now, for Steve, there is no upward mobility in his life. This is a problem because he is in his 30s, which is the part of your life where you need to work your ass off building your value and making investments so that you have something to live off when you get older. If this continues, Steve is going to have nothing in old age. This documentary came out a few years ago. Hopefully he left her. The woman already had two failed marriages before him. That should have been a red flag. But here's the really messed up part. Steve is out there doing actual work by going to the store three times a day, making her food, helping her bathe, and likely doing the dishes and the laundry. Together, they get 1,500 pounds a month. He gets 700 of it, and she gets 800 of it. She sits around all day, does no work, and the one who actually is doing work gets paid less, all while making sure she still has a good image. You know, we must be scum because we're on benefits. We don't keep a clean home, and we smoke and drink our money away. Yeah. I don't know about smoking and drinking, but you certainly aren't making good use of your time. While watching this documentary, I noticed a lot of Xbox going on in the background. I spent the whole time thinking, I bet they are essentially playing video games all day. Well, it turns out I was right. Being unemployed gives Debbie and her husband and carer Steve plenty of time to indulge in their favorite hobby, gaming. In terms of how many hours a day we spend playing games or whatever, I think it's probably more than half the day. More than half the day? Like every day? You spend more than half of every day playing video games? I can see maybe doing that once in a while or maybe on the weekend, but every day? Let's say you sleep for eight hours and are awake for 18. That's eight hours a day or more of playing video games. Do you have any idea how much time you're wasting? Look at this one. Deb has been on disability for four years. If she just spent one hour a day, maybe two hours a day building the skill, in four years' time, she could be well into a decent job. But instead, she's done nothing with that time. I think people vastly underestimate how much you can learn just by dedicating small bits of your day to self-improvement. Ten pages of a book every day can change your life if you read the right books. These days, you don't even have to read them. You can just listen to books while you're driving, making meals, or doing housework. Mix that in with a few minutes of building skills every day, maybe with memorization tools like Brainscape, and in four years, you'll become a different person. And what's 10 pages, like 20 minutes of reading? Certainly, they both could take 20 minutes out of their busy Xbox schedule to better their situation. Well, maybe that's asking too much. Debbie already feels overworked. I'm probably going to have a bit of a nap at the moment because I'm really tired. This has been a long day for me. I'm feeling a bit drained and then I'll probably go do some gaming and maybe have a sip of cider if I may feel up to it. Wow, I had no idea that sitting around all day playing Xbox was so difficult. Also notice that this is very typical with addicts. Typically addicts have multiple addictions. In her case, it would be video games and overeating. But I now don't feel as bad for Steve. He also is a video game addict and is complicit in this because he is just sitting around wasting time like Debbie is. These people should not be getting any support from taxpayers at all because all it's doing is making them worse. The only good thing I saw Debbie do was buy a treadmill that she uses for 10 minutes every other day. That's a great start, but as far as being able to get back to her flourishing career as a psychic, I don't see any plans of that. A Daily Mail article said that she was trying to make it as a model, but that is not a job. 
Modeling is not a job unless you are actually making a good amount of money. Until that happens, you need a side hustle. She currently has no side hustle, and she doesn't appear to be making a real effort to lose the weight, so it looks like she's not actually trying to get back to work. This all goes back to the extreme denial that obesity is a problem. You can find examples of this everywhere. Here's one from that blog Alotti's video that I clipped earlier. The participants were supposed to match up with someone who they thought was a similar weight. This is what one of them said after they were paired up and they were going over BMI. I mean, I personally don't consider myself like obese. I mean, I know I'm not healthy. You don't consider yourself obese? Your body fat is 44%. That's morbid obesity. At least she said she wasn't healthy. That's a start, but she is still in denial of how severe her problem is. I'm not saying this to make fun of her. I'm saying this in the hopes that her addiction doesn't cut her life short in her 40s. Someone has to help her break past her denial by saying that she has a problem. And that's not hate speech. It's showing that you care. If you are too afraid to help someone because you're worried about offending them, then you don't actually care about them. Here's the crappy thing, though. Moving past denial is just the first step to getting past an addiction. Even if you want... I hope... Uh, sorry, I have to break in here. Do I have myself muted or... No, I don't. I hope, uh, I hope nobody's offended. I hope nobody's offended by my, uh, <laughs> I hope nobody's offended by my live stream. I hope nobody's offended. I'm not trying to offend people here with the truth, but this is what's going on in uh, Great Britain. And this is what's going on in various places that might not get home cleaning done for free three times a week. But I mean, this is what's going on. I mean, this is just incredible. Uh, the truth offends people. And that's what happens in this realm. Truth is offensive. And the lies are just comfortable to people. Most people love the lies. They love the fake system. Like, we can't say fatty because that's that's body shaming. We have to call her, uh, what, would, what would we call her? Uh, generously proportioned and... Uh, unavailable for work or, or what, what what would be the politically correct way of what how would we even put it when it came to to her you know would we call her somebody displaced from the sea that's trying to make their way on the land i don't i don't know what to say i mean it's just like a sea monster to get better it's still very difficult to make a change this is something that the two other guys in the documentary had a problem with Les wants to get back to work, and despite the denial that I showed earlier, by the end of the documentary, he does appear to somewhat recognize that his weight is a problem. But he can't get back to work because he doesn't know how to control his diet. I know the operation isn't the answer to everything, but uh, with my mobility and how I'm getting worse, Dr. Abubi thinks it's one of the best things they could do for me at the moment. If I get that, my life could turn around and hopefully I get back into work and then stop being a massive drain on NHS resources. I remember my grandmother, um, a parent that I really knew out of the four, to be honest, um, especially in her later years, I was, I was uh, closer with her. She was very small. She was short. She had shrunken, of course, with age. She was almost 100 years old. But she was also tiny. She was not frail. She was still pretty strong for you know, somebody that's almost 100 years old. She was never frail or weak, but she was very thin and, and had shrunken to just this petite woman, right, that was almost 100 years old. And um, I remember her saying, in the, like, probably in her last four or five years of her life, watching television, I was there visiting, and she was saying that she never wanted to get, like, these huge people that she could see on TV and I remember laughing, saying, Grandma, you would have you could eat the, for whatever you want for the rest of your life. You would never get to that size in a thousand years. These, these monsters on TV. I'm like, my grandmother had a fear of becoming like these behemoths. And she was this tiny little, little woman. It's, just, it's so funny to think about now. I mean, I was just like reassuring her, like, Grandma, that's impossible. You'd never... You'd, it would be you'd never get to that size, no matter what you ate, because she f couldn't figure out how they got this big. You know, she was looking at these huge creatures. <laughs> she said, "I hope." She said it with a straight face. I hope I never get like that. Look at the size of their legs. She wasn't trying to be mean. 
she was just being honest about it. It was just these huge monsters. And there's this tiny older woman. I was like, you don't, you'll never have to worry about that, Grandma. Bullshit. Barry, who I pretty much haven't shown at all, was like the golden child of this documentary. He wanted to find a job and get back to work far more than the other two did. If there is anyone who deserves a little extra help, it's him. In London, 31 Stone Barry can't afford his own treadmill. He receives £73 job seekers allowance a week, but it's something he wants to change. I'm so desperate to get back to work. Um, the sooner I get back working, the better. Unfortunately, Wait a second. can you show that guy's legs again? Like what what was that? What were we looking at there? I want to I want to know what that was. That's what I'm interested in. He can't afford his I want to see what this is. Treadmill. What? Are those are his legs on backwards? Are those the knees? Where, where are the knees there? And what's this in the like? What is this in the in this section? How do they gain so much weight here? I don't. He received his shoes look like they're so small because his his ginormous legs. Seven. Look at the size of those calves. They're as big as the thighs, and it's just. Three pounds. Jesus Christ! Look at this, and look at the titties. Look at the. Look at the moobs, the man boobs. He's got some titties. Is seekers. he wearing a sports bra? It's allowance Fucking a hell. week, but it's something. And so you he know wants. what people say? You're mean. You're wrong, Stephen. Don't shame these people. Well, this is a result. They got to this through no shaming, having no shame. It isn't shame that that created this obesity epidemic. It's no shaming that created this. Okay. So for the demons, they'd have to spin it around in their head because, you know, shaming them would be caring about them. You patting them on the back and saying, oh, it's OK, you're great, you're perfect just the way you are. You're enabling them to be fucking obese. We live in a shameless society these days. Bring back shaming. So when they say he body shames people, he fat shames people. I mean, this is what's needed. This is needed. It's life and death for these fatties. It's to change. I'm so desperate to get back to work. Um, and look at—he's got like a regular-sized arm, and all of his weight, he's like a giant pear. Okay, I, I hate to, I don't want to harp on it, but I mean, he's like a fucking pear. He's got like a regular-sized arm. It's not like the guy's big and built and strong and has great big muscular forearms and aren't not at all. That's like an average man's arm. That's like a, I don't know what an average man's weight might be, 160, 170 pounds if they were trim maybe. I don't know, but he's huge across his belly. He's like a giant fucking pear. You know, I would look, if I was in his state, I would look in the mirror and I'd have to have a bucket beside me to throw up into. I would. You know, I get back working, the better. Unfortunately, Barry finds out that even if you do want to make changes, it is still incredibly difficult to follow through and many things will hold you back. After an interview and assessment, Barry is told he's not got the job due to failing the maths test. I'm choked. I really wanted a job like this. Hopefully by losing weight, um, get myself back into work. See, I, I thought this was kind of just in America and Canada and places, but apparently there's big fatties in Great Britain too. I mean, look at this. What in the world is going on here? Not every fat person is someone who's going to sit down and do no work all day. He failed his weight test, and you can't really blame the employers. Obesity is a self-inflicted problem, and that problem is going to cost whoever employs you. I don't know if in Britain the employers have to pay more into the medical system if a worker is obese, but they are certainly going to have to pay the cost of you getting sick or injured more often. They're also going to have to deal with someone who is less physically in shape and might not if be able to they're going to give them scooters to ride around, they should have to obey the rules, but also um, have wide load across the back. And it should be shameful. It should be something that people don't just celebrate the way that's going on. We're, we're a society that's celebrating everything that's fucking wrong. And that's what's happening. Work as hard or have as much energy as someone who is thin. In America, it gets really bad because the law requires businesses with a certain number of employees to pay health care costs if they are full-time labor. So, of course, weight is a problem. The sad thing for Barry is that it's going to take him at least two years to lose that weight, 
And until he does, he probably is going to have a very difficult time finding work. But I think that a part of the reason that people have trouble overcoming addiction is because they don't understand why it's so hard to change. So what they end up doing is not making a change at all, or they quit cold turkey and fail because it's too difficult, or they trade one addiction for another, like a chronic smoker who quits and starts gaining a bunch of weight from overeating. I think something that describes why an addiction is so hard to get over is the story, The Lord of the Rings. Stories are always set around metaphors, and the metaphors used in The Lord of the Rings are designed to get you to understand addiction. If you watch closely, the true villain in that story is not the evil tyrant Sauron. The true villain is the ring. I actually didn't notice that last part when I first watched the movies. A friend had to point that out. Much like a drug, the ring has people constantly fixated on it. They are addicted to the power it could give them. That is shameful, Wendy. That is shameful what's going on. It, we're we're in a i don't even know what to call this place we're, we're in a sewer matrix a hell realm but it's just fucked up at every level that you look at everything that's going on here and then they people have the audacity to say things are getting better i don't know what they're looking at what reality are they looking at but sadly all it does is destroy the lives of the people who use it and each time it's used the consequences get worse tolkien and peter jackson get this metaphor right even down to the smallest details. When you hold the ring, it whispers to you like voices in your head that tell an addict to use. Come on, man. It's your birthday. It's a special occasion, so of course you can drink. Addicts will play all kinds of mental games with themselves and think of all sorts of excuses to use. One more thing. When Bilbo meets Frodo before his death, he gets nostalgic about the ring like a recovering alcoholic does with drinking. Remember all the good times you had when you drank? What if you just had one beer for old times' sake? Listen to one of Bilbo's last lines in the movies. It has the same sentiment. Frodo... <sighs> Any chance of seeing that old ring of mine again? Sorry, Uncle. I'm afraid I lost it. Did you? Should I have held it one last time? If you know about addiction, you know it won't just be one last time. Your use of the drug will reactivate the disease and you'll spiral out of control again. If you are an addict, once you get off the drug, you can never have it again. In the case of overeating, yes, you have to eat, but you never again allow yourself to have ridiculous portion sizes or you will reactivate your disease. These are all things that addicts go through when they try to get clean. And the reason it's so difficult to remove yourself from an addiction is because your own mind will constantly attack you for not using. In Tolkien's story, the greatest enemy is not the evil overlord. The greatest enemy is your own mind. Addiction being a facet of that. And after your mind your own mind but some of do all of these big fatties have a mind I, I just wonder i'm sorry people i can't help it i can't help calling them big fatties i just <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know i just it's the funny term big fatty calling them fatty i don't know it's um what do you think everyone what do you think that's do you think that's inappropriate or do you think that's okay to call these look look at these fatties i'm gonna show you on the screen some great big fatties great big fatties cow patties big fatties big big waddling fatties cow patties Look at these things. I almost called them beasts. I almost said, look at these beasts. I didn't quite say that, though. YouTube. Um, God damn, though. What what in the world has happened? And why are people getting so much bigger? I'll call them people. I won't call them beasts. Why are they, why are they getting so enormous like this? Well, they're allowed to call them a fat woman in the independent mag, uh, newspaper here. The Independent out of Great Britain says over here right here right here if you think the autopsy of a fat woman on tv will solve 
the issue, I guess. What in the world is going on here? What's happening in this realm? What, what is going on? <laughs> What's going on? Where are we? Where are we? You're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah, they can call skinny people skinny. So what would we have to call them? Uh, I don't know what to say anymore. I'm trying to I'm trying to get through to people though. Whether you're fat, thin, or whatever, we've got a problem in this realm. You know? You might even say a big problem, a great big problem. We've got huge problems here, people. Huge problems. My goodness. What in the world is going on? Gold digger. Gold digger. There's a chocolate digger, fat camp, ABC News. So they're allowed to use these terms. So I should be allowed to say all this on YouTube as well. Right? Unashamed about being fat. I mean, women these days, they just, they... Look at this. What in the world is going on in this realm? Jesus Christ. Ice cream. They don't look like they ate at Baskin Robbins. They look like they ate a Baskin Robbins the whole place. I mean, what, what has gone on here? What's going on around here? I know some demons are going to be upset because there's some big fatties on Team Evil. So there's some great big fatties that are going to be upset. They're going to be crying because they got legs like this. They got all these cellulite jiggling around like this. My goodness. My goodness. They're showing those fat rolls jiggling. Just a there's a whole lot of jiggling going on. There's a whole lot of jiggling going on. <laughs> there's a whole lot of jiggling going on. They think I'm evil just for laughing. Did you know that, people? They think I am evil just for laughing. If you can believe it. Oh, are you going to take me home tonight? Oh, down beside that red fire light. Are you going to let it all hang out? Sorry, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> let me try that again. Are you going to let it all hang out? Fat bottom girls, you make the rocking world go round. <laughs> Get on your bikes and ride. <laughs> Oh, won't you take me home tonight? Oh, down beside your red fire light. Oh, you give it all you got. Fat bottom girls, you make the rocking world go round. Anyway, I'm sorry, people. Anyway, those big fatties, get on your bikes and ride. That's what Freddie Mercury sang, in case you wondered. Freddie Mercury saying, get on your bikes and <laughs> get your fat asses on your bikes and ride. That's what Freddie Mercury was saying. He was saying, get those fat asses on your bikes and ride. <laughs> Get those, get on the, get on those bikes, get those fat asses on your bikes and ride. I can't help it, everyone. I, I've got to say what I, what I see and what I think. And um, 
No, it's it's Fat Bottom Girls. Um, it's a different song, but it's it's by Queen called Fat Bottom Girls. The bicycle bicycle song's different. This one just has the one line about the bike saying, "Get on your bikes and ride." <laughs> it, uh, I'll, I'll I'll post the uh, some of the lyrics in the chat room here. I'm not trying to defend everybody in this realm, but um, no, that didn't work out too well, unfortunately. Uh, let's see here. I'll post a link here. So it's weird that Freddie Mercury was singing about fat bottom girls. I don't think he liked any girls, to be honest. Uh, they try to claim that he was bi, I guess, at some points, but I think I kind of think he wasn't. I kind of think he was just he was just uh how could I put this stuff delicately? I don't I don't know if there is a way to call it delicate, delicately the way that I want to say it, but. I think he liked to smoke some sausages, if you see what I mean. I don't, I don't think that Freddie liked women, to be honest. Uh, so he wrote this Fat Bottom Girls song, or he sang it. Did he write it or no? No, he didn't even write it. Songwriters, Ellie Gren Greenwich, Jeff Berry, and Matt. And Brian May, so he wasn't even credited as a songwriter. They just had Freddie sing that. So he sang it. He didn't write it, but. Anyway, a lot of these lyric sites don't even have the correct all the correct lyrics, unfortunately. But yeah, the fat bottom girls back then, I mean, they weren't quite what they are these days. That was a long time ago. What they thought was a fat bottom girl bottom fat bottom girl in those days would be a skinny one these days. I mean they don't even know what they're talking about. Freddie played the skin flute. Yes, he played the skin flute. That was his instrument. And all those years later, they, they, they made a movie about his life. It's very weird. It's very weird when you think about it. I don't think they would have made a movie about his life if he didn't like playing the skin flute. I think that was a big part of it. Like that's a big part of why there was a movie made about him, life. <sighs> yeah. 
Oh, you be back later. Oh, oh, is it B Brazilian butt lift? Are you talking about the BBLs? I got confused there. You still here, Wendy? Or you? Do you mean the the Brazilian butt lift? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, they're really injecting that fat into the asses these days. They're injecting it. Fat bottom girls these days is uh there's probably there's probably some with a three hundred pound ass. It's just the, the ass cheeks are that weigh that much. I wonder what the heaviest ass would be in this realm. I don't know what it would be. Do they have that in the Guinness Guinness Book of World Records? Do they have the the heaviest ass? I don't know. But I mean, it's just, uh, it's out of control these days. It's just out of control. Let's see what we have here. Where's the heaviest ass? Woman with the world's largest butt loves her shape. She loves that huge ass. Look at that ass. Look at this. She's the record holder for the world's largest ass. My goodness. Here she is here. So these ones would be tiny compared to hers, these ones here. And that one's definitely got a BBL. That's not natural. That's not the second biggest butt. Come on. It's not even close. Look at this. Look at this. Men are scared, really. Why would men be scared? Look at the lips. Maybe they're scared of whatever you injected into those lips on your face. My goodness. That's a horror show. What is that? What is that? How's going on here? I have to cover this, people. I have to. It makes normal. It makes, I mean, it's just a uh, ginormous uh They've got, they've got, they got voted the fattest asses in high school. These are nothing compared to these. So these chicks over here, nothing at all compared to these asses here. Look at this. fattest ass in the valley so this is the goal these days for women to have the fattest ass this is the goal i guess i'm, I'm trying to figure this stuff out I'm trying to figure this out
182 centimeters around her ass. She's getting close to two meters around there. God damn. The hell's that? The hell is what the hell's going on in this fucking place? This realm is fucked up. What is what the hell? Look at this. Biggest bum. World's biggest bum. Wow. Swedish model? She's a model for what? What does she model? Fattest ass mug. I guess this is a big thing these days. Women are trying to get the fattest asses that they can. God damn, I thought that was Aunt Jemima for a second. I didn't know what was on the screen. Oh. Oh, I got, uh, sorry, I got to turn this off. I'm cringing now. It's too much. Fuck, what the hell? What did I just see? I hope that doesn't stay in my memory. Oh, gosh. I don't think they can use the bathroom property properly, Inga said. Yeah, they probably can't. I don't think they can. They probably can't use it. I mean, what what do they do? The hell? What is going on in this place? So this is the goal of modern women to have the biggest, fattest ass that they possibly can. And that's that's their big achievement these days, or I'm trying to understand what what is the point of this? What are they trying to do? I'm probably pissing a few people off by saying this stuff. I hope so. I mean, it doesn't bother me at all. So be it. This is a messed up place. So I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna head to sleep soon. Head to sleep, head to bed, and go to sleep is what I meant to say. I'm starting to get real sleepy, real. Oh god, really sleepy. No more. Even as soon as I say it, I'm getting sleepy. But I should. Oh, I should probably get to sleep. I don't want to stretch too much. It might be viewed as pornographic by YouTube if I make any sounds of stretching stretching my body or my arms if I make any moaning sound or any sound apparently YouTube thinks that my voice is pornographic and I had to battle them in an appeal on a fucking live stream over my voice not kidding you people they think my voice my stretching sounds that's enough for them to try to say that my video is pornography, for fuck's sake. That's how fucked up things are in this realm, if you can believe it. It's really messed up, this place. Everything is treated that way. I can't even make a video of God having Godgasms without them saying, hey, this is pornography, without any images on the screen. No nudity at all. And just my voice. I can't remember if I got a warning or a strike for that one, but a God video. God is a voyeur. And God was having a good time, but it was just all voice. Just voice. Just moaning. Even my eyes, you could have sound like 
Oh, gosh. My yawns are going to probably set off the, the YouTube AI alarm saying, warning, warning. It's gotten so bad. I don't know how people can not see it these days. Do you know how many times I have to fight YouTube to keep videos up and my channel going? Because they call everything pornographic and against community guidelines. I mean, it's just a, it's a constant fucking battle. And I don't think they have to battle on these other channels the way that I do. So anyway, that's what's going on. But I did see something. This is good news for everyone. That YouTube is implementing a policy where if they report too much, they can lose their channel for over-reporting somebody. So some of these assholes that keep over-reporting, if they keep doing that, they could lose their channel for over-reporting mine because they report everything. And YouTube is getting sick of having to look at everything when they just report every single video that I make, every live stream. So anyway, that is good news that they might lose their channels just for because they keep fucking over-reporting. So yeah, they're abusing it. They're abusing it. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for liking this live stream. Thanks for loving this live stream is what I meant to say. Thanks for loving, not just liking. Ladies love El Diablo, and El Diablo appreciates everybody that was here tonight. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in to El Diablo Radio International. This is the cream of the crop channel on YouTube. This is the cream of the crop. This is the cream of the crop channel on YouTube. Choose freedom and disrupt the system. In case you're interested, there are some new videos that I have shared. Thank you very much, Wendy and Inga, for the sweet dreams and uni. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I enjoyed this live stream, and I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, Callie was on earlier as a guest. Hope everyone has a great day. John, Wendy, Inga, uni. Anybody else that's watching? whether you're in the chat or you're somebody that's shy and, and just listening. Thanks for being here. John O'Keefe as well. Thank you. Good night to you all. Good morning or good afternoon. You're welcome, Kiwi. Thank you for watching. Mad love to you all, to all of the good spirits here. Mad love to you. Hope you have a beautiful day. Do something good for yourself today, even if it's just something, something simple. Oh, you just woke up, Seth. I haven't gone to bed yet, but uh, hi there, Seth. Do something small for yourself for you today. Enjoy yourself today is what I mean. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy. 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 Take care, everyone, and I will see you again soon. And I posted I posted some funny videos that were on El Diablo channel, Crimes of Beauty, months ago when they got removed. So they're up on the sanity machine now. Lucifer and Forever Con Man in his van. And they also disrupted a live stream last night. Good night, everyone. Mad love, and I will see you again soon. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.